Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, and this is the official trailer for a video series that I'm pretty proud of that I've been working on for a little over a week now at least. Uh, it's going to be a trick-taking card game that we're going to make with Game Maker Studio 2.3.7. I'm going to be calling the game Columbus, and maybe you'll figure out why, and it has really nothing to do with the soccer theme that, I gave the, that I've given uh, the game or anything to do with the town in Ohio as well but uh, but that's for another time and so let's take a look at what you're going to be doing in my four and a half hour video series for making this trick-taking card game so in part one I will be showing you guys how to make a splash screen like this where you have a fade in and fade out effect in part two, we will be going through setting up a basic main menu. And in part three, we will make this intricate main menu where you can set up multiple players and you could set up, you could either use the keyboard or you can use the controller for the, uh, for the players of the game. You can actually use controllers for all four players if you have four controllers available to you. And so uh, that's parts two and three. So part four will be getting the graphics going because we have a lot of little graphics to set up here. Uh, part five, I will be showing you the rules of this card game. And some of you already have played. If you played a, a, a trick-taking card game, you, you know the majority of what we're going to be trying here. But if you haven't, that's fine because I'm kind of new to these kind of card games as well. And so let me, hold on, let me give me a second here. You'll, it's going to go black for you guys for a couple seconds here while I go full screen. There we go. So that's oops, the second I touch anything at all. There we go. Okay, is it back? Okay, it's back. So uh, every time I move something. Okay, hold on. Sorry about that. <laughs> there we go. So parts four and five are just getting some graphics, some basic graphics set up, and game uh, level. Or part five is showing you how to how to play the actual game. Uh, part six, we will actually show you how to deal the cards out. Uh, part seven is how I'll show you can actually see the ca the hands of the you know, the players have, and actually have a default here where I can show everybody at the same time. Uh, let's see, part eight where you can we're going to deal the goal cards because the point of the game is to get the card these specific cards into the players' hands by winning tricks. Uh, playing uh, level or level nine, I keep saying level. Part nine is playing a round of the game where I go okay seven. I'm going to play the red seven. And I can play the green two here, but I have to play one of these cards. I'll play the red nine, and then I'll play the red eight, and then the winner of this is player four, and so forth. And oh no, I blew it! <laughs> I lost the game. Um, but that's part of it too. That's the losing condition. That's part twelve. Uh, part eleven is the winning condition. Uh, when when everybody gets a gold card, you win the game. Uh, let's see what else is there. Play, uh, 9 and 10 are playing the f a full round of the game because it does take quite a bit, a little over an hour of our time. And then with all of that said, with all of that put together, maybe you can hear the sound effects in the background. Uh, maybe you can't. I don't know how loud it is actually until I go to watch the video myself. But uh, part 13, we will add very basic music and sound effects to our game and do some final touch-ups. And at the end of it, I've tested this game out quite a bit, but I still don't know how perfect it is. So as we go through things, it would be great to hear from you guys about uh, the inspiration maybe, hopefully, that I've given you guys to make your own card games. And then for those of you tagging along on this, telling me what kind of bugs you see or what kind of bugs pop up when you guys are working through and making your own versions of this game. So that's the excitement that I hope to bring with you guys for the next four and a half hours over the next couple the next couple months of time here making this card game and I hope to see you guys there have a great day and we'll see you in the next video hello everyone I am Bradley Sward and this video today is going to be the first part of a, a little different series than I'm used to making and uh, it's winter break here, we just, winter break just started for me, and I had a little time to kind of set aside and do something a little different. I don't get a chance to make, make video games very often, and I figure many of you have been asking me to make some, some cool new stuff. So I'm going to be making a, a trick-taking card game. I'm going to be using Game Maker Studio 2.3.7. I'm only going to be calling this thing Columbus, and maybe you'll figure out what I'm, what I'm making uh, as the series goes by, but I'm not going to be naming the actual game that I'm making. And um, and it, it's basically just a, a basic card game. And again, I don't know where this is going to lead. I don't know how many parts this is going to be. Uh, and this isn't necessarily a full tutorial. This is just kind of a, 
half train of thought, half tutorial in a way. I don't, and just of just making the game and just kind of going through the process of what needs to go down to make something like this happen. So I'm starting from absolute scratch here in Game Maker 2, and like nothing in here. I have a couple graphic files that I've been looking, you know, that I pulled down that I'm going to use for splash screens, and uh, this since is just for just this is just to get the kind of menu going in a way, and so. So I have those graphics, and I'll show you them. Uh, one of them is available on the internet, and the other one is not. And so outside of that, you can use whatever you want if you're following along, or whatever if you're just watching, whatever you're doing. And so I'm just going to get to it. My game is going to be running in 1080p. I'm going to do things in full screen. Uh, there's going to be controllers that you can use. You can use the keyboard, or you can use you know gameplay controllers. And yes, I am old school here. I'm still running off of Xbox 360 controllers. Because we bought a ton of them, both for me at home and at the at the school that I work at, college that I work at, and basically, you know, we never, I don't think we bought anything new, or at least we don't have too many of them, and, uh, and it's been a while, but still, works for everything. So here is everything I'm going to get going here, so let's take a look. I'm going to set up, uh, let me just pull in my sprites that I'm going to be using, so my sprite, and I'm going to call this my uh, splash screen. Right, or background sprite. Okay, and I'm going to import that here. I'm going to call it a splash screen, and it's absolutely humongous. And I'm going to bring it down to 1080p, and that is my cat, my sunshine cat. And I'm going to go and edit this image when Game Maker lets me. There have been some performance issues in the last versions, but that has nothing to do with this ginormous image. That uh, that just got taken here. Oh, I don't even need. Oh, I didn't need to go in there. I needed to go into here to edit this down. And let me see, 1080. I, oh, that that goes right down to 1920 by 1080. So that's perfect. Let's see what happens. Hey, look at that. You barely notice the difference, right? They're like that's what it's going to look like in real time. And now this thing is is 1080p. And I'm going to pull in my other image too. And that is going to be the uh, background, the main game background. So I'm missing main menu background in background sprite. And I think this one's already in 1080p. Oops, I need to import it first. And there's it. And there it is in 1080p. I'll probably have to I'll probably have to work on making this a little darker so you can, so there's contrast between this and the uh, and the menu as it pops up. But uh, those are my two images for right now. And so I'm going to set up a room. It already has a room, but I'm going to, this is my splash screen. Room. And inside of this splash screen, room is going to be one object. I'm going to set a, how do I, where's my group? How do I set a group? Where are you? Create group. And there is splash screen. So there's my splash screen group. And I'm going to create an object inside of that. And that is my splash screen object. That. And yes, you could probably watch this at one and a, one and a quarter, one and a half, whatever. But you know, I appreciate it if you watched it at normal speed and just let it run over and over and over again. Just watch it all the time. I would really appreciate that. Um, so let's see. There's my splash screen image, splash screen object using my splash screen image. And I'm just going to have this thing. I'm just going to create a, a quick little quick little state pattern. And you'll see. I'm going to. I'm just going to you know set this thing up. I guess I'll use. I'll start using best practices. Because why the heck not? So let's see. I have state is going to be uh, fade in. I'm going to have three states. So I fade in equals zero. Uh, hold is equal to phase one here, and fade out is going to be back to stage two. So, and we start in the fade in state. So what I'm going to do here in a step event is just go something like this, and and say if and forgive me, I have been writing so much Python code lately. I, <laughs> I am, let's see, if state equals fade in. So much Python code that everything else has lost all meaning. Uh, but what, I, what I'm doing here is basically here, I'm, I'm just setting up in the create event. I'm going to say I'm fading in, and I'm going to say my image uh, alpha is equal to zero. And I'm going to make sure in my room as well, and that's not in my room, that I use... Black, it looks like I already have that. Let me make sure 
black yep black is my background color for the background so yep that's perfect for what i'm what i'm going to be accomplishing here so let's see so if i'm in this state i am going to and I, and again if i really were doing this i could make like i could i could i could put add all sorts of bells and whistles to this thing but this is the basic bare bones minimum here so i'm going to say fade in and i'm going to say image alpha plus equals 0 0.01 if image alpha is greater than or equal to one then image alpha is equal to one and state is equal to uh what is it what i call it hold or something like that i guess just hold okay so let's see what that looks like hopefully it'll play over here on your end so you see it happening in real time maybe not First up at the first build is going to be the longest build because at least for now there let's boop. oh I need to put the object in the room that would be helpful right that just doesn't doesn't matter well I guess I should put it at zero zero just to be just to be consistent and oh I need to make my room 1080p 1920 by 1080 that way my cat can enjoy full screen there I go and now there we go let's try this out. Oops, and abort. And I got a I got a crash here. Fade in. Fade in. Hold. Oh, I wasn't expecting this thing to crash on me. Fade in. What did I do wrong? Already, right off the bat. Doesn't know what fade in is. This object. How could it not? This object uh, not set before reading. Oh, st Oh, I have state. I named state correct, right? State is equal to... F oh, pff. Yeah. Of course, it doesn't know what fade in is, right? Because I didn't define it yet. Oh, silly me. Anyway, again, Python. So much Python. Okay, now it does work. You can't really see the fade in because I'm not going to be able to drag it over quick enough for you to see it. Oh, most likely... There it is. It looks dark, and there it is. It comes up, and there it is. Now it's in full. And again, this is just a just. You could put any splash screen you want, but I, that's just what I chose, just to kind of get this thing going. And so now, when this is all said, said and you know ready to go, I'm gonna have something called another thing here called countdown. And my game should be running at 60 frames per second. Let me make sure. Windows. Is it Windows or just general here? Just general game options. Uh, I, yeah, the game is running at 60 frames per second, so 60 times 5 is 300. And where did my stuff go? So my countdown timer is going to be 300. And so what I'm going to be doing here is now say else if my state equals hold. I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to take minus minus countdown. And then if countdown is less than or equal to 0, then I'm going to say state is equal to fade out. It's just going to hold itself for five seconds. That's the, that's the dream here. Let me just fill in the, the other gap here. Finish this thing out and say, okay. And then the final thing is else if it's a fade out state, I'm just going to subtract off instead of add. I'm going to say, okay, alpha image, as long you know, if it's less than or equal to zero, then I guess this doesn't matter. And then I'm just going to say instance destroy. And I'm going to set up another room here. I'm going to create the second room. Create my room. I'll call it main menu room. And so what I can do with my splash screen object then is say instance. I, I guess I don't have to worry about the instance destroy. I can just say room go to. And then I can say uh, main menu room. Oops, else if, see, see I'm saying I'm writing too much code like that. Okay, so if this, if that, minus, minus, this. okay, so let's see what that does. And then with the main menu room, let me just change, just for now, just so we can see that it's working, I'm going to change the background color to blue. Whoa, okay, how about something a little, something dark, but no, it's purple, fine, whatever. Just to have something different, I don't want to hurt anybody's eyes. Okay, so let's try this again. So here it is, everything's coming in. One, two, 
three, four, five, and then there's the fade out, and then boom. And now we're into the main menu. So that, that covers splash screen. And of course, you could, again, what I'm saying here is I'm, I'm not going to worry about it, but if you want to change things, you can could, you could, you could add little things for changing the image alphas, changing the countdown timers, things like that. Well, I guess the countdown's already over here. Uh, I guess you could just say something like that, where you just say, what's the, what is the frame-by-frame -frame difference that I'm going to make into the image alpha? And I could just, I could just replace my magic number with that value. And so now it's a little better off. And so, yeah, all three of those things are now kind of listed here. Uh, the image alpha you don't want to, you don't want to touch. But th these are the settings you can, well, not that. These are the settings you can change. See, Python. There we go. Okay, so that covers getting the splash screen going. So now the uh, the next part of this is going to be getting the main menu, and then j just for the sake of this, let me do. I have the t did I do 1080p yet? No, let me just get that going. 1920 by 1080. And so now here, because it is a background image, I can, let me put this back to the black that it was, and then I can use our sprite for. I can use this for our background image here for our 1080p. Now that I have a little time to go back and do that. So let's try that out one more time. And oh yep, yeah, before I even do any of that, I'm gonna create one more room. And I'm just gonna call this the gameplay room. Alright, and I'm gonna make this 1080p. I don't know why. I thought I said it so 1080p was the, the default. But okay, so let's just try this one last time so I have all the all the skeleton and all the outlines here ready to go. Come on, got this. There's my cat. He's coming up. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. There he goes. Brings up the main menu. There it is. And we could we, we could do a, the same kind of thing where we bring up, we can make the graphic come up. Because, but right now, everybody's happy. Everybody's good. So that is part one. Let's move on. Okay, so I'm now that I'm there, first thing I'm going to do is just basically kind of do exactly what we were, I was just doing a minute ago. With the, I mean, I'm gonna create a fade in for that thing. I need to create a, to create a, a group for this guy. So this is my main menu grouping, and then I'm going to just go ahead and create an object, and I am going to call it object. Right. I'm gonna call it main menu fade in. So main menu fade in. It doesn't need any graphic. Uh, and all it's going to do here in the create event is kind of do what we've already been talking about here. We've already done it. And I'm going to say my image il image in uh, image alpha delta is equal to 0 0.01. And my uh, image, yeah, I guess it's going to start just, just so we're clear on it. My image alpha is going to start at 1. It's going to work its way down. Okay, it's not going to be persistent or anything like that. It is visible, and I just want to make sure I put it the, the, where where it is in the room. So zero zero, just to be clear on that. Just so no matter where I put it in the room. Uh, so I'm going to have this thing in my main menu room. I'm going to just drag it in, and I oops, I need to do the instances here instead. And I always put my controllers near the upper left hand corner, the ones that are just kind of like invisible, just kind of controller codes. So my men, main menu fade in is here. There's my X, there's my Y, and there's my image alpha. And all I'm going to do here on a draw event is go ahead and just say, since I'm already drawing, I'll just say draw self. And that's with my image with my image alpha and all that, right? So then and then then I draw it and I say image alpha minus equals uh, image alpha delta. And just like before, if image alpha is less than or equal to zero, then I'm just going to have it destroy itself this time. Instance destroy. This is just one of those little, you know, just to make it look halfway decent here. So now we should, now we should see the game in all its glory here coming in, and then I can get ready to get get going with the main or the actual main menu. Go. 
and then five seconds. There we go. Come back, and now, and now it breaks. <laughs> trying to draw non-existing strike. Oh yeah, yeah. Okay, because it is trying to, it is trying to do that. And I don't know what I was thinking while when I was just doing this a minute ago. And I don't want to go back. And just to show you that I'm not perfect. And it has been a while. And what I was intending to do here is to draw a rectangle. And instead of just, there's no image to draw. So I guess, you know, for, so I don't have to worry about that per se. But I can say, let's see, uh, draw or set, no, draw set, draw set alpha, image alpha, draw something and then put it back. Oops, I didn't mean to do that in between. I didn't mean to do this here. No, and then what I did intend to do here is to say I want to draw a rectangle. Oh, I also want to make sure I draw set color, and I'm going to say C black. And now I'm going to say draw a rectangle. Put me in here. There we go. I don't have to worry about the fancy one, but I can say X Y, and I can say room width, room height. Oops. Room height. I get the whole room and nothing but the room. And I want an outline? No, I want it to fill in with it. I want it to fill in with a black at that image alpha, and then put it back and then do the work that it has to do. But now I think I got something, and I think I'm going to call this video 20 minute video here. I think we're good to go for part one, if this works. There's my cat. Uh, cat, go away. Goes, and then boom, there it is. There's the fade in. And so now there's my main, and, and now my main menu, and that'll be part two. It'll be setting up the main menu because I imagine I'm going to put the, I'm going to put the title of the game up here. And then what I'm going to do is this, the game I'm making is going to be, is going to basically force a three or four player mode. And you could play each, you could play solo and where you, you have perfect information and you know all the cards in the game. And technically, if you play this, everyone's going to almost, everyone's going to basically see all the cards. Um, I'm just going to have everything on screen. Let me get, this is, but this is, you know, since this is just to show you how things work. But of course, there's nothing stopping you from making this multiplayer, doing whatever you want with it. Okay, so now that we have this ability to go, I'm going to say four players set up, and then you you could say, oh, use the keyboard for player one, or you can use a controller for player two, and so forth and so on, and uh, and for four players. But you need three players to be ready to go, locked in and ready to go. So that uh, to play the game, so you need at least three players, and you need uh, uh, up to four. That's what the, you technically the game I'm going off of can play up to five. But since Game Maker, uh, unless things have changed in the recent past here, uh, or in the yeah, it ha uh, only allows four controllers to be set up into the game. So there's no reason to worry about a fifth player or anything like that. So that's how I'm going to go here. So this video is done for the part one here. We got uh, we got the basics. Showed you how to do a uh, splash screen and now next step main menu and then we'll be able to push into the gameplay so as always if you have any questions concerns and in this case if I misspoke then you know just please let me know about it uh, again this is just this isn't necessarily a full tutorial but it's like a half tutorial half a half train of thought kind of uh, video series here just to kind of show uh, at least what I'm going through men you know in in my mind when I'm trying to set up different things uh, different parts of code, especially here in gaming. So thanks for thanks for watching this video, and uh, hope to see you in part two. Have a good one, everybody. Take care. Hello, everyone. I am Bradley Sward, and this video today is going to take a look at this card game that I'm working on, and I'm calling it Columbus with dot 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 on either side. It's a trick-taking game. We'll get to that. This is still not the part to even discuss the game. We're just kind of working on the main menu and just the splash screen and that sort of stuff. So that's what this video today is all about. Part two is just getting the main menu going. And then in future videos, we'll make the actual game. So in part one, we worked on the splash screen and getting everything going so that with that splash screen would come up and that we'd have a fade in, fade out effect. I guess I could show it real fast. No reason not to. You can fast forward through this if you feel the need but just as a refresher for those of you who are coming off this differently there's my cat and he's coming into focus and it's five seconds you get to see him for five whole seconds and then you come out and then here this is here is the new 
here is this and here's the main menu and I'm going to put like a the name of the, the game up here and and then I'm going to put a button down here for quitting and then I'm going to have different stuff going on for uh, setting up the players of the game. So the thing that that, uh, that you do need to know about this is that this is a three to four player game and I like you have to have three player three quote unquote players but it is going to be a cooperative game which means if you you could play three players as yourself uh, so you don't have to worry necessarily about having three completely different people sitting there or two well, two people plus you sitting there playing the game. And so it's optional or optional four, but required three. So I'll set all that up in here right now in this part. And uh, let's just kind of get to it. So uh, so again, here is what we've got going for us. So the button itself shouldn't be too bad. I just have to create the sprite. And again, this is like a half tutorial, half just uh, just train of thought kind of thing. So I'm not necessarily, and, I, and I'm definitely not here to make everything look as perfect as possible. This is just to kind of get the bare bones minimum going for what I would require for this, this game that I'm making. And then of course, I could always tweak the other stuff later and add all the bells and whistles that I want. So I'm going to go ahead here and uh, create a sprite. All right, here we go. And I never, I can never remember or never figure out just offhand what is a good, what is a good measure for something like this. Um, 400 is, let's see, 150 is going to be too big. Let's see, what does that look like in real, in real time here? Oop, it won't let me make this bigger. This is what it looks like in, eh, 150 is probably too much. Here, let me bring this down to like 400 by 100. Yeah, that's fine. A and again, this is not the end all be all, but this is the end all be all for as far as I'm gonna go. So this is gonna be the quit game button. Uh, sprite. Okay. And I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna edit that. And then real quick here, I'm just gonna change this up. I don't know what colors to use, but I'm just gonna, just to make sure I have contrast, because I know that is a bright, that is a very bright uh, graphic that I have going for me. And I have not modified it in any way just yet. I'm just going to go ahead and use black and white for black and white for the uh, for the contrast here. Just add this. Let me just add a second layer to this. Oops, one here. Maybe even a third. Why the heck not? Or ooh, that would be kind of let's see, even a third here. It's, or four, look at that. Look how doesn't that look great? Maybe it does, maybe it doesn't, whatever. That's that's neither here nor there. Okay, so then there is my button for the this is gonna be my button, and I'm gonna go ahead here and change the origin to middle center. And so and you'll see that you'll see why in a second here. And then what I'm gonna do here just to have two buttons that I can mouse over. You know, mouse over is my famous little thing here. I mean, that's that's such a special effect, right? I'm gonna edit, uh, edit the image and I'm gonna copy this. Let's see, can I just invert? Yeah, well, just I'll just invert here. Oops, I need the fill tool, fill tool, and then black here. I can fill in black, black, and then I can fill in white. So I have two images here, right? So there we go. So then I've got. I've got my this and I got my that and I'm ready to go. Okay, so I'm, I'm going to use the off condition for the zero frame and then the on condition for the one frame. And then I'm going to go ahead and put this thing into the game. And so in my objects here in my, oops, that's not my splash screen, get rid of that. In my main menu, create, and I'm going to create an object and I'm going to call it the, uh, what am I going to call it? I am going to call it the quit game button. I'm going to use that sprite. Alrighty. And I'm going to in create here. I got to make sure that this thing doesn't flicker and give everybody headaches or worse. So I got to say image speed equals zero. I don't have to worry about image index because it already is zero. And so, and just to kind of keep things easy here, I'm going to use the mouse. I'm just going to use the events. Sometimes I just use one, like a step event, and I write all the code in there. But for something as easy as this, there's no reason not to have a mouse. Uh, a mouse enter and a mouse leave. So when the mouse enters, my image index is, as I was saying, is going to be one. And when I mouse leave, I'm going to have an image index of zero. So there you go. So you can take. Let's take a look at that. 
Oh, and, and then, yeah, we'll, we'll look at this cat. We'll never look at this cat again, I promise you that. At least as it comes to just getting this going, nobody needs to waste five seconds or eight seconds of their lives looking at the splash screen when we're focusing right now, especially on the main menu. We don't have to run the whole game every time, so I'm going to fix this up in a second once this is done. And so, oh, did I even put the object? After all that, I didn't even put the object in the room. Okay, sorry about that. It is the new year, so <laughs> new year, give me a break on that, right? Okay, so I'll go in here. And I'll say, I want my main menu room, bring that up to the top. There we go, main menu. And I definitely need to get into my main menu room here and, and throw that thing in. And I'm going to change the grid settings. So my X is, uh, let's see, 960, half the room. There you can see it's right down the middle. And so, um, so now I can close that off and drag this thing in down below here. And there's my quick game button. You can see it's fully, fully in there, fully focused, fully everything. And so now, come on. But maybe you see it, maybe you didn't. But the uh, but the fade in effect. This was on top of the fade in effect. Let me see if I can. Can I full screen this? I uh, dang it. I should be able to full. I'm gonna have to fix this up so I can. Isn't it control, alt, alt enter, alt space, or control enter, control space? I thought it was just something that was easy to do, but you can see that button down there. And But I do need to fix that up by taking this, uh, this fade in guy. All I have to do over here is just say my depth is going to be equal to negative, not just something that's negative something, and that will be drawn. Uh, the fade in will be drawn on top of everything else because. For whatever reason in Game Maker, the more negative the depth value, the closer to your eye it is. Okay, so there is my button, and now I can say there's my mouse, there's you know, there's my mouse over. Let me just go into the settings real fast here, game options. Uh, I guess, is it Windows, or is it just main? Let's see. Now I guess we'll have to go into Windows mode. Graphics, oh geez, all this stuff. Allow full screen switching, yes. Interpolate colors, yes. Synchronize, yes. So. These things I usually change borderless, yes. These kind of things allow resize window, nah, maybe not. But now I can apply this and I can run this and now I can full screen it. I don't know if you can see it on your end when, I use, when I'm using OBS, but I'm gonna try it and see what it does. Um, oops. I thought it was Alt-Enter. I, I always thought it was Alt-Enter that let me switch between, oh wait, it is doing some, what is it doing? I don't know what it's doing. And you can't see, it, it pulls it up on the other screen, of course, right? So maybe I, this is why I can't use full screen, or at least I won't start in full screen mode. How do I get out? Well, anyway. So anyway, I'll have to fix that up, and I will make it work here in a minute. So the last thing I need to do for this right now, for this button, is to go ahead and find where, where is this thing in here? Fonts. I'm going to create a font. And I'm going to say main menu uh text font and i'm just going to pick what let's see i'm just going to randomly almost randomly pick something uh something that looks halfway decent that not that that not that whatever i'm not picking is not halfway decent but censure okay century sure whatever I, I just pick something here um make it 40 big is that too much uh, probably a little too much maybe 20 we'll go 30 let's see what 30, yeah 30 looks okay regular okay i don't really have much of a choice so I'm going to borrow this guy here, and what I'm going to do here in the quit game button is in the draw event, I want to draw the actual button, so we'll do draw self, and then if image index is equal to zero, then I want to set the uh, color, draw set color. If it's zero, I want to set it to C white. Else, I want to set it to black. I'm having trouble since lately I've been writing code in Python and in C, and I'm learning R, so I'm just like, what language am I writing? What is the syntax? It becomes less and less clear here. So anyway, so I want to do draw set font. I want to do draw set h align so fa middle I can't I can never remember but I know if I use center for both it works 
Not that that's right, but I'm just just to kind of get things going since it's taken 11 minutes to make a stupid little button. Uh, FA center, FA center, and then what I all I have to do is just draw and just say draw text, and I can just say x comma y comma quit game, something like that. So let's see how that looks. Oh shoot, uh, I have to I'll have to fi oh, shoot. I didn't fix up the window screen here. So you could see anything here. Let's see, start full screen. Oh, it even doesn't even say start full screen and it just it's starting in full screen mode maybe it's the borderless window part I don't know oh, but it looks so nice I want to show you guys I want to drag the window open over oh let me get rid of okay here hold on. allow full screen switching and um, let me apply that let me try this again let me get the, why is this always trouble with this kind of right Nope, it's now it's now it is always making me do this board. Oh, maybe it's the borderless window part. Maybe all it is is the borderless window. Normally full screen mode wouldn't be a problem, right? But I want to make sure you can see what I'm doing. Here we go. Okay, so there and so there now you can see there's my quit game button and I can mouse over it and depending on the image, uh I I appropriately uh use the correct color so you can actually see white on black or black on white. Okay, so then with this quit game button, my goodness, quit game button here. What do I do on mouse left press? On mouse left press, of course, game end. Okay, and if I want to use this font, or if I want to set up a new font or something like that, create uh, just another font real quick, just to have, again, just to have something different. I'll say main menu title. But I thought this would, yeah. well, anyway, 15 minutes. Some of you, this is, uh, this is new stuff, but for many of you, you're probably yawning and wishing for to go on to the next part. But anyway, so let me pick another font. Oh, my name, Bradley. Bradley Hand. Oh, that's good. Okay, so um, <laughs> here I thought, well, I don't know. Felix, there we go. We'll, we'll just use this. Why not? Do I have bold? No, I'll, I'll, and I'll use 60 for this guy. Yeah, that's fine. And again, this is not this is not the end-all be-all to anything. And what I want to do here in the main menu is just create one last little uh, one last little uh, object. Main menu title uh, uh, text text no sprite attached and when I do this and I do a draw event on this guy all I want to do is draw text and then the X value is going to be 960 the Y value is probably going to be about 40 and it's going to be dot 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 Columbus something like that and dot 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 and again, I want to make sure, just to make sure, FA, ERPA, draw set, V align, H align, FA center. Just so I'm clear on that. You pretty much always want to make sure every time you draw something that you set all the parameters because you can't trust anybody else because you're going to forget. I'm going to forget. Somebody's going to forget. And so we test this out like this. Um, let me make this 50 just for the sake of this. And then I'll just draw set color to black just to be sure. And let me get rid of that crazy you. What? Come on now. Who knows? Hello. I actually like the, the you in there. So let's, oh, I didn't put that in the room. So let me just, I'll drag that in the room real fast. And but again, it doesn't really matter where you put it. Okay. I don't know if I even put it in the room at this point. Did I put it in the room? Where is it? Oh, it's over here somewhere. Let me drag you. Come on. That would be hard to find. So let me, oops. Oh boy, goodness, come on. Go Game Maker. Oh, that's because of the, that's because of the way I set this, the grid settings up. Okay, we'll change that and drag you over. Try this again. So long. It seems like it takes longer to load these days. That's okay. And so there you go, Columbus. <laughs> Columb okay, I figured that. Okay, now I have to fix that up. Columbus, the card game. Colum. You guys saw that. I probably didn't. And then can you set draw set? 
Uh, I was wondering if you could set the like the uh, the the scaling on, it. but maybe maybe not. But I'm not necessarily worried. Again, this is all this is all I wanted to do for this I guess for this video. So this is the first part of what I thought was going to be something that would take five minutes. Took 16, but you can see now. Uh, I, I'm drawing on top of my I'm drawing on top of my screen, and I have a button. And so now, part three, I can focus on the actual part here. And I'm going to set up controllers for this. So I'm going to set like literal gaming controllers, so you can play either by keyboard or by controller for the the four players that we're going to set up. So okay, so that's it for this video. Um, and uh, I guess we'll see you in the next one where we'll have a little more fun, a little more fun stuff here. Come on. Hello everyone, Bradley Sword here. And what we have here today in this video is part three of a continuing series. I'm making a card game. We haven't even gotten to the card game yet. We'll get there probably in part four. And I'm calling the, the card game Columbus. Maybe you know why, maybe you don't already. Uh, maybe you, if you can figure out what game I'm making, maybe it's a little clearer. But anyway, so it's going to be a trick-taking card game, but that's going to be part four. Part three here, we're going to finish up the main menu. And uh, as you can see here, here is my main menu. Let me just give you a quick go over because I have updated a couple things here. I can't make this full screen, at least with my OBS, but here, here is my splash screen. There's my cat, snowball and a cat. One, two, three, four, five second splash screen. It fades out. The main menu fades in. And now you can see I have all this cool stuff here. So as I was discussing, maybe we haven't discussed the card game, but this is a th this is going to be a three or four player game. And, you, and it's a cooperative game, meaning you can play all the parts if you so choose. And I'm going to allow the player to play through the keyboard and mouse or the controller. And so I have all of this set up. I, I, you know, we kind of set this a little bit up last time. I think I set up the quit game button and this text. I believe that's about all I did. So you'll see I added a start game button. And notice this one does not, I can't just click on it because I'm not ready. No players are ready to go. I can always just quit. I don't want to, I don't want to, I can click this and quit. And keyboard mouse, right now I have four controllers hooked up to my system here, but I don't have them turned on. So right now I can't click on them. I can't change over and say, hey, let's use a controller. But I can say, let's play, I'm active or inactive. And again, one player, nope two player nope but if I get at least three players now this thing will become active because again you have to have either three or f four players and it doesn't matter which ones you take off you have to have three or four players uh, ready to go in order for the game to start and then oh just to show you real quick then right here okay there you go turn down my turn down that I've got player one I've got player two and so again, players three and four aren't plugged in, so I can't really go with this, but player one now, I can switch over to controller, and player two, I can switch over to controller as well. Uh, and, I, and again, this is not meant to be the end all be all of all games, so it's okay, at least for what I'm doing, for my, my, my feeling here, it's okay to just use the mouse to set up the game and then play the controllers to play the actual game once the game gets going. And I go, yeah, you might not agree, and I kind of, and I kind of agree with you. Those who don't agree that I should set that up, but that would take more work and more effort. And this is just meant to be a fun little, uh, you know, a fun little project for winter break or just something you can do maybe over a weekend or something like that. This isn't meant again to be like the the menu of all menus to take over the world. And what's kind of cool about this here, if I turn off my controller. You can see that it went back. It doesn't change the in, the active or inactiveness of whatever's going on, but it does say, okay, the controller has been, the controller is no longer part of the system, so there's no reason for me to use that as my input method, and I move it over. And so I'm just going to show you how all that works. And again, if this is not what you like, you can always change it to make this menu exactly how you want it. That's the joy of being a programmer, a developer, and uh, working with designers and artists of, of great talent is that pretty much whatever you dream up and whatever you want to do, if you're willing to put in the effort, you can make it work. All right, so, and then just to prove here, I can, I, I scroll, or I fade out, and I fade back in, and again, this is, this is where the gameplay, this is where all the magic is going to happen, but uh, we're not there just yet. Okay, so as I'm discussing this, there are eight different objects that are part of my main menu, and, I, and I'm, I'm going to show you everything. I'll show you all the sprites, I'll show you all the objects just kind of show you how I went about and, and did this. And so from previously, I, I have the quit game button. I didn't modify that in any way. I didn't add in. I just figured if you want to end the game, 
Uh, the game just ends immediately. There's no fade out. There's no fanciness. You want out? Okay, fine. Because I, I, I'm, you know, I'm a practical guy when it comes to that kind of stuff. Like, I don't, I don't need to play around. I don't need an extra. Are you sure? Just, just, just let me go do what I got to do. I could. There are, there are many other ways I could exit the game. I'm being nice by clicking that button. But anyway, so the the quick game button has already been done in the previous video. And um, and then where did I put, let's see, main, main menu title text is where I played around with putting that title. Instead of, instead of, instead of baking it into that image, this is where I went ahead and set all of this up as well. And now it's more modifiable and all this kind of stuff. And I did add this little thing where you can put the main menu right under it. Um, I'm not going to run this to see, but we I also discussed every time you're going to print something to the screen It makes sense and one thing I didn't do here is a font is to just say it tell you know Basically make sure you set your alignments you set your color you, and you print out where you need to print Exactly how you want to don't trust that the other print statements are going to put anything back to the way It should be quote-unquote should be for the way you're doing things so um, the, the only thing here would would be to set the font, but it's working. It's working. I'm not getting. Let's see. Draw that font, and what is my font here? Main menu title font. Okay, so that's just adding a little something there. Something I missed, and it just happened to work. Okay, everybody's happy. So those two guys are working for us, and now there's just six other objects. And so the the start game button is kind of the same thing and again all of this is kind of interlinked and intertwined so let me just discuss let me i'll just i'll just show what i can here and so for this you know this is a button you know like any other button and, and i started out just borrowing the quit game button i used all of that functionality like mouse enter mouse leave and so you could see that it gets a little more complicated and that's because as i was discussing that when i went to do this that i wanted to make sure that at least three players were active for the game to start so I say, okay, I, you know, I want to make sure I don't blind you with a flashing screen. And then here I say, okay, and this is also when I'm drawing the thing, if, it's, if the color is black on white, you know, draw it correctly when I go to draw, or if it's white on black, draw this correctly. So that's where this draw event come from, comes from. And so left, and then, but left pressed here, this is to say, what do I want to do here? And this is, this is the, the joy and the non-joy of Game Maker and the WYSIWYG editor, and just not necessarily Game Maker, but just the way objects like this kind of development, this kind of uh, this kind of software development kind of works out because if I press left, the left, you know, if I click the button, uh, click that button, and I say the image index is equal to one, meaning it's in the active state, then I want to create this fade out to gameplay room object, whose job is to fade out, and then when it fades out, it it basically says, okay, room done. Let's move over to the gameplay room, and then inside the gameplay room, that's where there's a fade in object, and then everybody's happy. So that's what this, and I didn't, I don't need this in sequels. I was playing around with this earlier, and uh, I got a weird error. There's a new error that pops up that's only come up in the last month or two. Uh, I used to be able to go ahead and just start instat, 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 but apparently now Game Maker's not happy with that. And I have to do some more research into that. Like that's that's like my bread and butter right there when it comes to setting up objects and things like that. And if I can't do that, I got to find a way around that. I definitely have to find a way around that. So this image index equals one. That like okay, well, how does that even work, right? That, and that's where the mouse enter plays in. And again, these are all intertwined. That's the whole joy of development here. There's a lot of objects working together, but basically there is. I, I'm, I'm as I'm going to show you here. There are four of those objects, right? There's there's four of the window, little you know the little windows where that where everything can be active or inactive, and all of this is doing is just checking all four of them and adding together their image indexes because they're either going to be a zero or a one, and I just have to make sure that at least three of them have been set to one to be, to the active state in order for. Uh, in order for the image index to be one, so that when I press it, then I can create the fade out, the fade out effect, and then go to the gameplay room. And it sounds complicated, and that's kind of it is kind of. There's a lot of moving parts there where this has to occur, then this occurs, then this occurs. Three or four things going on here, but that's that's where this start game button uh, comes from, and it's using the main menu controller object. And then I'm, there is an array in there called players, and it's and I have four of them, one for every one for every player that could possibly play the game. I that active dot active, 
um, that I already showed here, or I didn't show it, or did I already show it? Uh, maybe I did. And then it's image index. So that's all we're going for here. Okay. And so as for sprites, let me before we get going with everything else. Yeah, I didn't I didn't show any of the sprites here. I think I only have four of them. Uh, I have my quit game button, four hundred by one hundred. Okay, and then, so you got that. Uh, I have my main menu placard, which is a thousand by one fifty, and it just has an outline, just you know, basically black on white, and only one image for that. This one, this does not flicker or anything like that. And then I have what is called the player active placard sprite, and this is basically for you know, that's going to say active or inactive, or let's play or inactive. That one's three hundred by one twenty five. And then for the uh, input methods, I use a slightly smaller version, which is 200 by 75. And then this, you know, and you can see all the sprites are exactly how they are. So not a lot of sprites here. And you're like, well, you, know, you can see that we're going to be dynamically generating all the text because you obviously see no text in any of these images. And so this, you know, these are two images. These are two images. And this guy is just one. So you can see that all the text is going to be gen generated dynamically. Okay, so again, if we look at the room, you can see that I, I definitely, you know, the WYSIWYG editor is showing me the start game button, and it's showing me the quit game button, but all these other guys, there's only five things in here, and that fade in object doesn't count. Its job is basically just to start the screen dark, draw on top of everything, and then make everything light, and then destroy itself, so that even that doesn't have anything to do with anything. But you see I have a main menu controller, and then I have the main menu title text, which we already described, its only job is to print. So there's only really, at least at the, when the room is started, there's only one object in this room that matters to everything, and it's, or at least to the way the, everything gets steamrolled out here, it's the main menu controller object. So what you can see here, and all the main menu controller object does is create all of the little placards. And so, and, and that's why you don't see anything. You don't see anything here, is because this guy is going to create the placard object, and that placard is going to create all the extra text and all the three buttons and everything else that's going on for every one of the objects. And by doing it this way, I can pass along the player information, like which player number is this supposed to be 0, 1, 2, and 3, uh, which is needed especially if I'm going to worry about the controllers turning on and off, so that each one of these responds only to the inputs of the specific controller that relates to the specific player. And so that I mean, it seemed, you know, so that's where this comes from, the main menu controller. Just sets everything up and yeah, I hard code and I could fix this up obviously. Just wanted to get it moving and get it going. And so and so I set everything up here and I could and again I could change everything. There's a really, really no reason not to worry or to worry about any of this stuff. So I'm setting, okay, I'm creating a new object called main you know, a placard for player zero a placard for player one, a placard for player two, a placard for player three, and then I'm setting them up in an array and keeping those instances, I'm keeping those values stored so that, you know, basically I can access those objects from here or from wherever it is that I need to access them from. And, I, and that's the joy of, of Game Maker and all these dynamically typed languages, is like where, where, I know I'm accessing this thing and I think I was showing you in the start game, but in, and there it is. I'm accessing the guy from here, but there's no way you know that unless I put a comment in here that says that and like I'm going to access this going to be accessed from the start game button. And maybe more. I don't know. So we're so again, so its job is just to create the main menu placard. And then the main menu placard, as you can see here, creates all the extra stuff. So then here is the button for the active turn on and off. It's, you know, it owns that. And then there's two, I call it K and M and pad, keyboard and mouse and pad. Those two objects are created. Those are called input method objects. And we're maintaining their image indexes and I'm keeping the keyboard as the default. And I'm, so basically everybody knows about everybody else. So at the end of the day here, the K and M object knows about the pad, the pad knows about the K and M, and both K and M and pad know about their parent, which is this guy, which is the placard that created it. And so, so everybody's going to be happy knowing, because then we'll be able to get all the data we need. And if I click inside of the K and M object, I can say, hey pad, 
uh, you know, basically you're inactive now. Or if I click on the pad, I can say, hey, KNM, you're inactive right now. That's why I call it the other guy. This is that just that is a very professional name if you've used you know, for, for, for what I'm doing here. Basically saying, hey, KNM, the other guy here is the pad. And for the pad, hey, the other guy is the KNM object. And so that is how I create this thing. And so I have all these objects that just persist, and I wanted to make sure that I put them at a depth level above the, the placard itself so that they're not drawn behind everything because then you wouldn't see anything. So I used instance create depth, depth, depth for all of these negative ones so that they're drawn on top of everything else. And so that, and then when I draw this thing, I'm also adding on, because I don't need to draw the other objects that I created, but I do need to draw the player one or player two, player three, player four, and then I also need to draw the input method text. So that's where I do this in the draw, and then all the other objects are drawn on top of all are, are drawn on top of the placard itself. So that's where that's where I'm coming from for this. And I just spent a little time and effort, and I and I tried I I didn't test this out, but I tried to make sure everything is parented so that. Uh, and so you know, so all the transforms work. So if I move, if I just drag or or just you know change an x value here or a y value there, it I don't need to worry about uh, cascading through and changing all those values everywhere else. I wish GameMaker had that kind of thing, like uh, like Unity and Unreal and all those engines have, where you can just kind of you can you can parent the transforms and not have to care about any stuff. But that's my wish list for another day. Okay, so there's my placard. The placard controls all of these things. And so this individual player placard is kind of like the other objects in a way, and except for the drawing. And I say, well, okay, so if I, if the image, oh, make sure the image speed is zero, and then by default the image index is zero, but every time I click it, just change it. Just change it from active to inactive, and, and, and active to inactive, and back and forth, and back and forth. But when I draw this thing, I just want to make sure if it's inactive, I draw the correct color. If it's active, I draw the correct color. Let me show you all that. Because it's, and I just wanted to make sure that I align this and make sure that it's always drawn right in the middle of the box, and that's why I just take the B box and just play that and say inactive versus let's play. So let's kind of see where we're at now and talking about all this stuff. Let's see this again, and we'll spare the. Spare, can't, I guess I can't spare you the five seconds of catness. I think he's probably doing that exact thing upstairs right now. And um, so here we go again. So these buttons, all these buttons do is just go in and out, off and on, off and on, off and on. And then again, I can, we haven't gotten to this yet, but I can click on these eventually just the same. So I click these guys and, and remember how the start game button is tied to all of these and going, oh, three of those have been selected. Therefore, we can play the game if we wanted to. Okay, so that's that the individual player placard, and then the input method objects are, this is, this is kind of where things get a little tricky, and you know, the engineering, the, the, you know, the software engineering of this, the architecture of this is pretty crap, I'll admit that, but it works at the end of the day, and uh, there's really not, I'm not doing much more with the project, so I guess I can just leave it in the state it's in. So basically for each of these buttons, the input method buttons, I start out with the text being, you know, empty string, and I say my other guy is no one. And this is just a good idea to use whenever you're creating objects from elsewhere, and you're basically doing like inst dot, inst dot, inst dot, because that's what I'm doing here in the individual player placard. Or is it that one? Nope, the other one here, main menu, this guy, where I'm basically creating an object then saying, hey, I'm setting text. Hey, I'm setting image index. Hey, I'm setting parent. And what happens is there's like a brief frame where game maker, like a draw event or things like that, where these 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 variables do not exist at that moment. But if you try to access them, it will crash on you. And that's the fun of dynamically, again, dynamic languages and all that, you know, uh, of all these kind of typings. So just to get around that, just to make sure for that first game frame, even if there's nothing there and it's just garbage, you're never going to notice that first game frame because it takes at least a half a second or so. To, at least when the game starts to get everything going. So text is nothing and it'll be filled in by the other object and the other guy will be filled in by the other object as well. And so this is where things get interesting. And this is all a very simple gamepad connection here. If the text is controller, that means that I'm that right now this is this object I'm in is the controller object and then I say, "Oh, okay, cool. 
if I press the left arrow key on the button and I'm the controller button and the controller is connected, then I can set that button. And I can say, hey, other guy, which is the K and M button, you're no longer active. And if it's not the controller button, it's, you know, the keyboard and mouse is always allowed. That's always the fallback default behavior. So that's, that's good to go there. So we can basically just, just change, uh, to see, you know, basically change what's going on. Here. Okay, so uh, two different ways to get to the same spot. So in the, and in the step event, this is just all where I'm going here. Hey, if the, if the gamepad got disconnected and, and I am the controller object, set me back and basically set everything back. And I did try to set it back to say inactive, but then this thing kind of wins out all the time and I didn't want to play with it anymore. Uh, this is, this was fine and dandy for what I'm trying to accomplish today. So then again, the draw event is just there to make sure that I draw the correct color. Uh, for the font uh, to make sure if this is if it's off that I'm drawing white and if it's on I'm drawing black and I could probably get yeah I could definitely uh, I could definitely the only you know I could I could move this out center center method font text and then move this down here because the only thing that should matter there we go save myself save save all of us but again one of those, if it works and you're happy, why should you bother, right? But it's dependent on a lot of things. And this is kind of, at this point, it's kind of half throwaway code. Okay, so that's how things would work here for that kind of thing, for this kind of object. Did I get everything left pressed? Draw, step. Yeah, I think I talked about everything that needs to go. So that kind of, so everything kind of works together then. All these different objects kind of, kind of get work together here. And the final step here is because of the way the, you know, the objects work in Game Maker, when I get to all of this hard work is for nothing because when I finally get to the game, there's no way for it to, oh, I, oh that's good. Actually, I like this better. That's cool. I like that. I changed the font here and actually, it actually fits what I'm trying to do. Look, oh, look at that. Look at me, accident. Look at serendipity here. But anyway, so now all of these things are working together again. The quit game button is left alone. The start game button is based on all of these objects here and their active states. And at least three of them are active. We're good to go. And so the controllers... So now I got all four of them going. And now I can, because of this, I can, I can turn on all four because I have, and you have to just trust me on it, of course, I have all four controllers going here. And so I'm allowed to switch over. But if I, if I disable, like number two, and it, it took me back to keyboard, now I can't click on it anymore until the controller comes back. And it, can, it could still be active, but it's a matter of, oopsie, there's nothing I can do. And again, every one of the other ones is still active, and that's what's pretty cool about this thing because you know it's that's a it's a hard part it's a hard thing to try to make sure that objects have individuality and they're and they know basically if if things occur to these objects what other objects need you know basically do I need to apply other uh, events to and so that really covers everything for this part of the video so the next thing to do I'm sorry after what I'm going to show you here the next thing to do will be actually to start the actual game because now I have everything going so <coughs> excuse me so the final thing to do here for my main menu here is it, where do you put this thing? I guess I put it, uh, let's see, input menu left pressed. Um, nope, I guess I want to put it in the start game button because that's where the start game occurs. In the left pressed here, oh, oh, let me, I can start turning off these controllers. We only have enough batteries and my kid likes doing things with my batteries. So I got to make sure. I keep them fresh for him since this is just a demo. Okay, so say I'm creating that fade in to fade out kind of thing here. But what I can also do is set up uh, what I can call maybe like a game data object. So I'm going to create an object type. I'm going to call it game data, all lowercase with an underscore. I'm going to make this persistent. And so I've got that persistent. I'm not going to let's. I'm not going to worry about anything here per se. Uh, I, oh, maybe I will. And I'll create, uh, in the create event here, I'll set up an array. Uh, and I'll call them inputs, just for now. Maybe I'll probably change it later. And I'll put no one 
no one, no one, and no one. So by default, there's it's just a four element array, and they're they're not being you know basically there's no there's there's nothing for the inputs. However, if I go over back to where was I here? Nope, start menu, start button. Here, what I can say is var ints equals instance create. And th again, this only works because I'm setting up the I'm setting up the object as persistent, right? I'm only because I'm setting this thing up to live between rooms. Uh, oops, okay, okay, here we go. Instat this blah blah blah. It doesn't matter where I put this thing, so zero zero is fine. It's going to be invisible. It's going to be everything. Depth, who cares? Just zero is fine. And then the object type will be the game data. And then what I can do here is say ins dot and this is where things get a little tricky. And so again, I have to remember that I'm dealing with the uh, I'm dealing with the in, I'm dealing with the ma main menu controller object, and then I'm dealing with this the, uh, the players main menu controller dot players is what I'm going with here. And so what I can do here is say, uh, come on, come on, Brad, you got this. Come on, okay. Ints dot or ints. I get. Uh, let me just say ints zero. Oops, not ints zero. Ints dot player. Oh, gosh, I already forgot what I called it since I'm doing all the talking here. Inputs. Okay, inputs. Ints dot inputs zero. And I can once I have this going. Once I figure out what I'm doing, I can I can for loop this or I can just hack it out here. So I say main menu controller. Okay, dot players, the zero component of that dot, and now this is where I, I got to look into there and say main menu controller. Okay, and players, and players is this, which is a series of main menu placards, and then main menu placards. Okay, cool. Then I have to go, this is, where, of course, this is tricky, right? I have to go into this active object and get its image index. And that's that's how I know if the thing is... Or I'm sorry, I have to figure out what the K and M button is versus the pad button to be able to figure out uh, what control I'm supposed to be using here. And, and it's very possible that one of these players is not being used, so it's very possible that no one could stick around. So coming back to this here, I'm going to go into the pad button because it's just easier uh, easier to go into. Where is my start game button again? And so object. Oh, Maker, help me out. Oh, come on, make this big. There we go. So I say, okay, players dot. Oh my god, did I already forget what it's called? Players zero dot active, no, not active dot pad dot image index. And so let me get this, let me get this here first. Let me steal this guy, and I can say if this big giant thing is equal to one. Then it is the pad that I want to set up, and I want to, and I'll say controller. Okay. And then else, if, or in this case, just else, and I could say make it the keyboard and mouse. And as I was saying before, I have to make sure this thing. I do need to use that active after all. And so I'm going to put an if check around this. And if it doesn't work, uh, I'm only out a minute or two, and you guys are watching me just blab for nothing, right? So if I can say dot active dot image angle is equal to one, then do this. So it's still possible that nobody comes out of this thing, like no one, right? Like the no the no one. So no one versus controller versus keyboard and mouse. And so I could test this out on this end here in the game data by saying, okay, I have my inputs, and in a draw event, what I can do here is say draw set color. Uh, see, uh, see black because that thing's going to be yellow in the gameplay room, and I'm going to say four, and I'm going to say bear i equals zero. I is less than four. Plus plus i. Draw text. Uh, let's see. So I'm going to draw it at uh, 
let's just put it needs to be on the screen somewhere 50 comma or 50 plus uh 100 times i comma 50 comma uh inputs at the i location so let's see what happens so let's see what happens. Yeah, meow, meow. Let's go. All right, come on, five seconds. There we go. I'll have to change that eventually. Keyboard, mouse, keyboard, mouse. So I go, let's play, let's play, let's play. And let me set up this player one. So with the controller. So this should say controller, no one, keyboard, mouse, keyboard, mouse when I get there. Oops, and and my te and this is terrible because I need to do that H align, but you can see that something ain't working right. So let me test that out. Let me figure it out, and then I'll get back to you. There's no reason why I should tinker while you guys. This video is already long enough. Oh yes, how could I forget a 40 minute video? All I I just forgot that I I didn't put this in a loop. I'm like, why does it only work for the first one? Duh. So I just have to just have to set up this var i equals zero i is less than four plus plus i put everything inside of there move everything shifting over then go ahead and just change the zeros here to i's and then it should work when I go to the other room uh, let me set up the game data object for for its draw event here let me move this over to fifty. No one is a negative four. It doesn't it doesn't print as no one? But I just but I just just to show here. Here's the game. Okay, here's the game. Come on. I, uh, five seconds is way too much. Not enough when you're playing my game. But right now when I'm testing it, yes. Okay, so controller one active, active, active. So it should say controller negative four, uh, keyboard mouse, keyboard mouse. And there it is. You can see it. And again, don't mind the, that this is printing over. Just this is just huge. The controller is part is the zero, the zero player. Negative four. There's no player one. And keyboard and mouse is being used for keyboard or for players three and four. So we have everything now that we need. The menu did its job, right? Yeah. My cat does more than <laughs> my cat annoys me more as much as usual, or maybe. Uh, he's pretty good. But you can see. But now everything kind of works, and now the game itself can play, and I don't have to do anything else. The main menu is done. At least it's functional. It's done as a, from a functional standpoint. So if you want to change, I can't change this. I can turn on a player and say controller, controller, active. And even if it's inactive, and as a controller, it still won't do anything because it's not meant to. But I can say controller three, active, and then keyboard. So it should say controller, negative four, uh, controller keyboard mouse controller negative four controller keyboard mouse and so again so now we have everything we need this game data object can tell us basically all the information we need and now we're ready to actually start the card game woohoo you know how much an hour or two of work and now we can actually start the actual game that we want to make all right so let's see that in the next video thanks for sticking it out with me guys uh, these videos are going a little longer than I anticipated that's why I could only imagine how long it would go if I was doing it while I was trying to talk and do, like literally doing it instead of just explaining how I already did. All right, take care, everybody. See you next one. Hello, everyone. Bradley Sward here, and this video today is hopefully shorter, a little bit shorter than the other videos, and this is going to be more of an artistic endeavor for me today, which <laughs> which it end up, it might end up taking longer because I'm terrible at art. So the game that we're making so far is called Columbus, like dot 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 Columbus dot dot dot. You know what it is already I'm trying to make and I'm, I, I've still held off the actual rules of the game which I think I will save for the next video and um, and so but but we need to make the cards and we're gonna make them a little different than uh, just a normal playing card I'm still using game maker visuals game maker visual studio game maker studio 2.3.7 if anyone's interested in that I know things are changing and I'm still running on the newest and greatest as far as I know so we we have the whole game going so far. We're ready to get going, and we need a graphic. And I'm going to create this. I create I just create a playing card sprite. This is it at in real you know at, at a real uh, size compared to the 1080p graphics. So I think it's pretty good for what we're going to be trying to put on the screen for because we're we're going to end up putting like 40 cards on the screen. So 
I think it's pretty good for what that is. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and edit this image. And things I'm going to do here, I'm going to have, I'm gonna have four, uh, five different colors of cards. Uh, I'm going to, uh, what color should I choose? I'm just going to, for now, I'm going to pick just dark colors like this, like a darker blue. And what I'm going to do, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to have the, the cards themselves are going to have numbers from zero to nine. And basically the colors are going to dictate the, the, the suits instead of it being like hearts and diamonds and whatnot. So if I take, you know, so I'm just, so just a matter of taking a little bit of this here and just, oops, like this. And just just creating something like this and I might change it later of course because right now it, I, I'm just creating something just to have it and uh, and we'll go ahead and uh, fix it up so if you if you if you have a better playing card because what I'm gonna do is put the numbers inside of here and then inside of here and inside of here maybe I, well, I guess I think that'll be good enough for what we're trying to do here and um, uh, let's see how far did I go here 54, 54, somewhere about there. Oh boy, 54. 20. Oh boy, well, getting closer. Sure, perfect. So there's going to be my playing card sprite, and this is going to be my blue one, obviously. And then I'm just going to duplicate this, and that's pretty much it uh, for the big cards. Uh, I'm going to duplicate this a few times over. Let's see, what else? Red. There's always red, right? And what I can do then is go ahead and just go into here. I'm in that sprite, but I am not in that sprite. And then I can just go ahead and do the same thing here. A little bit. Anything less? Just a little less. Nope, not that much. A little more. Oh, that's not red anymore. Something like this. There we go. That's perfect for a red card. Duplicate this guy again. Um, hey, red, green, blue, why not? Go in and change that and make it a dark in the background, a forest or something. Edit, uh, what do I have here? Do I have access to a forest green? Am I just not seeing it? That's, it'll be pro again, I'm, I, I reserve the right to change this without telling anybody at any time because I know the art sucks. Okay, so final one here is going to be Duplicate for yellow. Yellow. There we go. And edit that image. And let's far, see if we can find a dark yellow. There it is. And then back it up with some regular. Eh, maybe that's a little. Maybe that's a little too much. Yep. Does it even? Does that even change anything? I don't necessarily. There we go. So there's the blue playing card, the red playing card, the green playing card, and the yellow playing card. And so these are the regular cards. And then what we're going to also have are what we, I'm going to call like objective cards, where because the team is going to be trying to get certain cards into certain players' hands. And we're going to you know, simulate that by like a, a soccer pass and then eventually try to score a goal. That's going to be the end of the, the result of the game will be to pass the ball around, the, the virtual ball around, and then just score a goal. And then that's how you beat the game, the card game cooperatively. So I could basically just steal this if I wanted to, just steal these playing cards and duplicate them a few one more time for each of these. And I'll call this the blue little card. And but how little should they be, right? That's that is a good question. Uh, let's see what happens if I cut this thing in if I cut this thing in half, 100 by 140, is that good enough? Look at that. Yeah, that's cute, right? That's a good looking playing card for a tiny card that's basically half the size. And so what I can go up, go ahead in here, edit this. And for this one, what I'm going to do is let me borrow, let me steal my colors here. I'm going to need, I want this guy and this guy. And I'm going to go fill in this with the, you know, everything here. And, but for this one, because these aren't going to be held in your hand, these are going to basically be on the virtual table. I'm just going to put this in the middle somewhere here and just do something like this. There we go. Again, the best artwork you've ever seen, of course. And I'll just put in a number on here of the 0 through 9 in here somewhere. Okay, so that's the blue little card. And then I'm going to duplicate this for the other ones. And then we're calling it a day for this video. Six minutes, again, a short one, thank goodness. But, but if we have these dimensions and we have everything else going for us, then we'll be good to go.
Um, maybe I should, hold on, I just want to make sure I have the right colors. So I'm going to steal these two colors. Oops, I'm not going to, that's, that, that's the wrong tool, Brad. Okay, so these two colors of red, and I go in here and I edit this. Oh, pff, are you kidding me? Those colors don't come over? Well, anyway. I'll do my best here, and again, it's not it's not necessarily matters that we get it perfect, at least for now. But you kind of get the point of what we're not, what I'm trying to do here between all the cards. So when you get through this, you'll have eight different sprites, four for each of the different types of cards, and that is pretty much everything as it is to as we're going to need for the game itself. Uh, yeah, that's pretty, I mean, we might add a graphic here or there, but in my head, I don't, don't think we need much anything else from a artiste standpoint here. So let me, let me, let me duplicate this guy again for the green. Definitely not going to remember what, what colors I use while I'm thinking and talking and doing all of this stuff anyway, but I use, probably use something like this for this guy and probably use something like this, oops, for this guy. And then uh, duplicate one more time over for yellow little card. And we're not going to create the, sp the objects just yet. That's for another time. Uh, this is a good eight, nine minute video at the most. So then uh, I can go ahead and uh, create yellow. Oops, wrong thing again. Yellow and use this guy maybe as the background. And now I have my, I have my eight cards. I think I did everything else right. Everything is spelled. Yeah, no, there's nothing that I'm that I feel like I'm missing here when it comes to this. So I've got my playing cards. I've got my little. I've got my little cards, my big cards, and everything else is going to be ready to go. Oh yeah, maybe a little soccer ball. Ooh, that'd be cute. Uh, I'll have to go look for that, and uh, I'll bring. I'll, 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 I'm just gonna. I'm just gonna borrow a, a picture of a soccer ball. And here it is. Here's my soccer ball sprite. Uh, what do I have for a size? 215 by 225 at the moment, and it's that's even probably a little too big. And we'll fix it up later if we have to. We can we can we can uh, scale it more. But that's something I'm using. You can use whatever you want. This is basically going to determine who is the starting player, or who is the one who won, uh, who, who basically won the the previous round when it comes to the cooperative game, because we're going to be passing this virtual ball around trying to get it to the right person so we can finally score the final goal. So that's, that's and again, a, a future video will finally let you all in on the, uh, the goal of the game that we're creating, probably the next video. So uh, thanks for sticking it out. This is about a six, seven, eight minute video. Hopefully nice and easy today, or this time around. And then uh, next time we'll get into it and we'll set up, we'll, we'll basically create these cards, pass them around, and uh, at least uh, at least we'll do that for the next part. We'll just say that that'll probably take a little bit of time too. All right, thanks everybody. Have a good one. See you in the next video. Hello everyone, Bradley Sword here, and this video today is part five of the continuing series of Columbus the Trip Taking Card Game. This video today will show you the rules of the game. Uh, this is about my 16th take on this since I just can't get anything going today. I cannot get any momentum, so please bear with me as I explain the rules. And if I don't get anything perfect or if I misexplain something, please let me know in the comments and I'll fix up and answer your questions as we go along. We're still using GameMaker version 2.3.7, which uh, I guess since I'm doing this from the future, uh, it they've moved up to version 2022 instead. They've gone by dating systems instead of versioning. Whatever, it's their software. They can do whatever the hell they want. They seem to change their minds quite often at this point. Game Maker Studio is going to do what Game Maker Studio wants. So let me explain the rules. Remember, it's a three or four player game that we're setting up, so you have to have at least three players. You have to have at most four. I'll set up four players just to kind of get everything going. Remember now there's going to be 44 cards dealt to four people, so everybody's going to get 11 cards uh, off the main deck, and you can see things coming. Forgive me. Let me see if I, if I, make, this, if I make this full screen. It'll take a couple seconds on your end. Will it come up? There it comes up. Okay, good. So everybody gets 11 cards, and then everybody gets a goal card. Let me press space bar here so you can see all the cards here. So again, everybody gets 11 cards. There's five different suits. There's a blue suit, red suit, green suit, yellow suit, and then the, the, the black suit are the trump cards. And the goal of the game, uh, literally goal, is to get from a trump, 
like this player needs to get this the blue six into their hand by winning a trump or by by winning a trick and the, this guy this this person here needs to get the red three this person needs the blue two and this person needs the green eight and let me see let me make sure so the, i can get the green eight to this person by doing as such so if you've never played a trick taking card game it's one of those things where it's kind of once you've done it a couple times you go oh i get what's happening but like the description of it can be rather confusing so uh, the goal right now we're all going to work together and you would in a real game you wouldn't be communicating per se i guess you would be you could do whatever the heck you want but the real rules of the game say no communication between players but and so if we we're trying to communicate and get the the green eight into this person's hands we can do so by doing the following thing so the first player sets the suit for the whole round so in this case they want they want to play a green card because it, the, the green everyone has to play that green card if they have it uh when when it's their turn so in this case since i'm the first player i can select anything i want but when I go, I go, oh, you know what? I want this person to win and win with the with the eight. So I will put the one in. And so that sets the suit. And now everyone, you can see here, I'm going, you know, everyone has to play a green card if they have one. And if they don't, that's when they get to choose any card they want. That's It's a very nice part of the game, but it takes strategy to get you to that point. But I'm trying to get the green eight out of this guy's hand and into the winning of the trick. So a nine won't work because a nine will beat the eight. So I'll play the four for that player. And then I want to make sure any of these cards will work for the eight because none of these cards will beat the eight when I go to play it. And I just have to make sure I remember to talk myself into remembering to use the eight because trying to play for four players while I talk and while I do and while I think can be rather challenging. But now when I play the, the green eight, this player will win the trick because the, this player has the greatest, the largest green card played to the table, and they win. And now, yay, now they, they basically got the ball passed to them And since they won the trick. And they don't have to worry about any goal cards anymore. They won. <coughs> now, they, excuse me, now they can focus on getting all the other cards to the other players. And so now we can get the blue six to this person by doing this. By saying okay let me play the five and let me play the seven here and then let me play the six so now even though you know even though the six is being played the seven is the winning card that was played by this player here so i don't have to worry so much about this so i just have to make sure i play the one on this end so that this player win this player wins the trick with this with the six in it it doesn't matter that you win with the seven card. It matters that the card that is part of the trick ends up in your hand when you win. So now there's the six, and now that person won. And so my next question is, is it easy to get the three into this player's hand? And no, it is not. And is it easy to get the two into this player's hand? And I go, yes, this, that is easy. I can just, now I can just play a four here, and then I can play it doesn't matter what here. I play the nine. Oh no! I oh shoot! I didn't do it right. Well, that's okay, since I'm just describing the rules anyway. If this were for real, people would be getting quote unquote angry at each other, whatever it is, having fun with it, and going oh, or just can I can I take that back? I didn't do the right thing, but I did nine here and an eight. Let's see what happens. So there we go. That player won the trick. And so now, trying to get this player the blue too, what can I do about it, right? So this person needs to win a trick. Let's see, what can I, I can choose a red card, but they'd have to play the red card. Yep, I can make, I can make this player win the red three by doing this, then by doing this, by doing this, and then, no, I can't win the red three. So now, here's where the losing condition, I'll just show you the losing condition. Since this player cannot, will, will lose, the three card will be played, but someone else will win the card, there's no way this player can ever get the red three, so the game will be over. And so the game, the game ends immediately, and then it goes back to the main menu after a few seconds here, and then we'd have to play again. So let me try a three-player game. Let me try this one more time. No guarantee, but the winning condition is met, if all of the players 
can have their goal cards removed from play by winning the trick. So this time around, each player will get 14, 13 or 14 cards or whatever it will be, because they, they deal the whole deck out to everybody. And there we go. So now, so now you can see everybody has a ton more cards. And let's see what I can do here. So I can get the I can get the red eight to this person by doing by playing the red nine and then playing the red one and then playing the red eight. So this person gets that gold card. Good for them. And now let's see here. Oh, this is going to be tricky. Because I can get, nope, I, this is, and yeah, so there's no guarantee here. This is where I'm not going to be able to do good strategy and figure out things to make this work. But let's just try something like this, where I could play the eight here. Let's see, I'm going to make sure I don't play the two or the six. Just, I'm just, right now I'm just trying to burn the yellow cards as many as I can. As I can. Let's see, i got to make sure I don't burn the two or the six. let's see so now i can get this i can't get the six to that player but let's see i can't get the two to that player yet either i can't play either of the yellow cards right now but let's see um let's see what i let's just burn the blue cards since the blue cards don't matter or at least you know whatever we're just trying to figure out okay so now here trying to get there's no more blue cards for player three so I might be able to, to work this out for them. Let's see, if I play, let's, let's burn off yellow, let's burn off blue cards one more time. I can burn off one red card in that place. Okay, they won. So I'm, try, I'm still trying to get the six to this person. And if they don't have any blue cards and they don't have any blue cards, I can make this work. Because what I can say here is I wanna play the blue nine. And then they now they can play any card they want because they don't have any blue cards. How about I play this the two? Or I'm sorry, I want to play the six. I want to play the six. Oh, don't do this wrong. Okay. So though now even though you know this card is the winning card because the the first color of the suit wins out over anything else. So even if this was a six and this was a nine, the blue card would win. But the black cards trump everything, so I will win that trick at player three, and now that is all good. And now we have to find a way to get the, the, this two to this player. Uh, how do we make this work, right? So let's see. Um, I, I can't play this four, because then they'd have to play the two, and then they would the game would be over. But let's see. What can I... Is there an easy way I can do this? I don't know the answer, because I'm just trying to talk and think... And this video is already going a little longer than I anticipated. So let's see here. How can I make this work? So let's just burn some red cards. I can't burn that card for sure. <coughs> so I got it. This it's always tricky with some of these on the low end or the high end. Um, that that's part of the fun of the game is trying to figure out, trying to deduce the puzzle. That's why this is one of the the best best board games of the year. You know. Uh, a lot of people are saying, board game, card game people, are saying that this is a very fun game and this is their game of the year. It's just a puzzler. It's just, how do I get this two from this guy's hand and still make it win? How do you make him win with that? And so, um, and but let's see. If I play a red card, then I play a yellow card, then they play. It just, I don't, I don't know if it's possible. And I, of course, someone's going to point out probably something that I'm not thinking of here in the moment which is perfectly legit. Um, just maybe I get rid of get rid of this card. So I won the trick now. But again, I just can't play the two because then they can play the four. And so this is getting trickier and trickier. And I just, how do I, okay, I play the three. Then I can play this four. And then I can play any card I want. Oh, I have to play, oh, I have to play the black four because it's the black suit. They won. So now let's figure out, um, let's see. Green six, green seven, green one. They win. Ah, here we go. I think we can do it. Hey, look at that. I think I made it work. Because they play the yellow card. They they don't have any yellow cards, so that even if they play the eight, the two is still going to be the winner. And the same goes for any of these cards. I can play anything. They get the card, and the game's over, and I won. Goal! So there you go. In 12 minutes, there is a description of how to play the game. 
and it's a fun game. And again, the real game has 50 different scenarios that you can play, and I'm not coding any more than I have to for this. This was a fun enough project, a three-week project to do over winter break uh, to make this game little by little by little. And I can share this with all 20 of you who are watching any of this uh, and, I'm, and enjoying and learning from the process. So there it is. Part 5 is complete. The rest of the series is done according to my, <laughs> my timeline. And for your timeline, you're just getting started here on the, the big main part of the game. And I hope you enjoy. But again, if I misspoke about something or if there's something wrong, especially with the rules, please let, or if you don't understand what is going on, please let me know and I'll try to explain better. I'll even copy paste the real rules if I have to, uh, just so you can kind of get a feel for what's going on. So thanks for sticking it out with me. As always, everybody, have a great day. Have a great, have a great, have a great lesson. And I'll see you guys in the next videos. Take care, everybody. Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sward, and today is part six of a continuing series where we're making a trick-taking card game in Game Maker Studio 2.3 or beyond. Uh, as I'm making this, I'm just going to keep current. Uh, I call the game Columbus. Uh, it's a soccer-based cooperative card game, trick-taking game. And if you've watched part five of the series, you got to see the mechanics in action. You kind of got to see ahead of time what we're going to be trying to make. So today, with part six, uh, we're going to take the gameplay. We're not going to worry about the controllers per se. We're just going to get something going so we can put the you know, a, a dealt hand of cards out to every player in the game. So that's where we're going today. So let me show you this. Let's show you where we're at. At the mercy of Game Maker, getting this thing going. Okay, so here I've, I've shortened the time our cat lives with us in our game here, down to like two or three seconds. And so he's gone. Now here's our main menu. And again, I can't make this full screen, otherwise the, the OBS won't work. At least on my end it won't work if I try it, if I make this full screen. Let's see what happens. Go. There it goes. It's full screen to me. I see it perfectly clear. But, uh, oh wait, did it, did it pop up? I'm, now, I'm, now I'm curious. Hold on, let me see what happened. Seems like it delayed. And then, oh, there it is. Apparently it just it just on a delay. So now here is the game full screen, and I'm going to say let's play all players. And again, I'll show you everything I'm doing here. And I hit start game, and it fades out, and it fades into the new game. And now it's going to deal out the cards to the player. And you can see I picked a wonderful <laughs> NFT or something like that, some picture, some graphic file for the backs of the cards. And you're like, well, okay. How do you <laughs> how do you know anything worked? Well, this is I'm pretty you know this is kind of pretty cool. If I press the space bar, it will show me all the cards that are dealt. And so I basically borrowed. Uh, <laughs> forgive me for everything I showed in part four, but I tried it for half an instant, and I was just it just it was just the most awesomely terribly looking graphics I had ever done in my entire life. And I had to go out and find at least something that was a little better than those cards that I was uh, showing. Uh, in the previous video there before the video, before the uh, demonstration. So I, so I go back, space bar, space bar, and you can see that this is all sorted, blue, then red, then green, then yellow, and then the black cards. And so if you want to think of it, these are the, these are the cards that are 0 through 10, these are 10 through 20, these are 20 to 30, these are 30 to 40, and this is 40 to 44. So that's that's just where we're going with this. And let me just show you how I got this all going. And again, this is all that's going right now. Nothing else. There's no other bells or whistles. Uh, we'll do that in a future video, maybe even the next video. Okay. So we don't need too much for this, at least to get started here. I have my fade in object, and which you know you may or may not already have. It doesn't really matter. And then I have this object called game deal game deal cards state. And so the game itself is going to be run by a controller object that changes depending on the state of the game. So the first part of the game is dealing out the cards to the player, and then we'll have to figure out different states. I, what did I call this one? Uh, game start round state. Uh, I haven't I haven't worked out the entire you know state machine for the game, but it's you know it's very you know it's it's very probable that the, this game start round state. Basically saying start the round, and maybe and maybe we'll keep that in there for an entire round of everybody playing one card. But for now, it's just it's just a placeholder. There's nothing in it. It's just so that uh, when the cards are all dealt, the this object moves into this other state. And then, as you can see here, I have an object called player card hand, 
It doesn't even have a graphic because everything is dynamically drawn. Uh, it doesn't obviously doesn't look like it, but it, but looking at this here, you can see up uh, not display screen, gameplay screen. You can see there's nothing on here, but that one object creates and takes all the data from the game and 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 from the cards in front of us and turns that into you know a nice view or at least nice enough, <laughs> nicer than it would have been. Oh man, those graphics were horrible. That is my. That is the epitome of my terrible artwork. Okay, so let's take a look at the game deal cards state. And uh, as you can see, there's a, quite a bit going on here. So in the create event, I'm setting up and and I'm going to have to play with this somehow. Eventually, we're going to have a small memory leak if I don't delete this DS list at the end of the day. But what I'm doing here is I'm set, setting up, okay, I have a DS list, which is like a vector. Like in you know basically well or a, a vector in C plus plus or a list in uh, Python, and so I need this to set up and keep track of all the cards that are in that are in everybody's hands, and so I set up this DS list and I say hey everybody let's go from zero to forty four put the numbers in, but all all of you guys who are uh, not, who are uh, divisible by zero get out. So that's why when you see when you saw that game running here oh yeah, nice you can sell oh, cool you can see it. That um, you can see, there are no there are no zeros. There's not, not you know there's no zero for the yellow. There's no zero for blue, red, or green, or even black. And but those but those numbers you know could exist obviously if we wanted to. So this gives me all the numbers from one to one to nine, and then ten, uh, eleven to nineteen, and so forth and so on in that list and then I randomize and I just say why not shuffle twice it probably shuffling once is probably good enough but why the heck not and then all I really do from here on in is set up those those player card hands so you know there's four of them and there always will be four even if there's a three player game they'll just they just won't be dealt any cards so this thing will be there player four just to kind of show you that yep there's no one playing in that in that seat uh, you're, you know, the game. This game is simple enough. You're not allowed to come into the game midway or anything like that. So just, if you're not in, you're gonna wait for the next round. So this is just where I'm setting everything up. So the player one card is in the upper left hand corner. Player two is in the upper right. Player three is in the lower right, and player four is in the lower left. And I set this up so that I have my array of them, keeping track of all of those objects. Um, because if I need to use them in any way, then I have access to them through this array. And at the moment, I'm blanking on how I went ahead and used these things. And then this is where this is where things kind of take a little turn here. Also, is that I have my alarm, which says wait four seconds to do something. Right? And all this gets initialized, and now we're sitting here. The object waits four seconds. What's it waiting four seconds to do? This code right here. There's not a lot of code here, but this is where the dealing of the cards is actually occurring. This is just getting any, everything initialized and ready to go, and then it says, hey, in four seconds, we're going to start what we're doing. And so what happens here is that I have a couple variables here. I have an index and player deal. An index is which actual card is going to be shuffled out to one of the players, and player deal is at this moment which actual player is the one that's going to take the card. And so, and again, don't mind, we're going to get into the player card hand in a couple of minutes. But this is just to say, as long as the, that index value of which card I'm going to deal out is within the list, then I'm going to keep on going. And then fi eventually, then, when I run out of cards to deal out to everybody, then when I hit this alarm, then I'll say, oh, cool. Let's change, the, let's change this object, this controller object, into that game start round state that we were discussing. And for now, again, and for now, for this video, that is the end of the line. But in here is where the interesting part happens, where we're saying, okay, while, and say, because this could be a three-player game or it could be a four-player game, so it's very possible that one of the, you know, one of the players is not being used. So this just says, hey, let's go over them, find the next player that could be that could be part of the game, and use a modulus four so that you can uh, come back around and kind of keep on keep on cycling through the players and you know theoretically you should only have to go through this at most one time because then because in a three player game that's the lowest number of players in a three player game you're only going through and uh, and avoiding one player and then once you do that 
you take the basically the top card on the deck over here on my end and you put it into that player and I know this looks complicated right now but this is just saying okay there is going to be uh, for whatever player it is because I kept I did keep track of that over here in the create down here right the players say for that player there's going to be a uh, there's going to be a DS list called cards that's sitting in all of these player card hands. Why don't you put that card in there? And now that you know, and now it has a new card. And then say, oh, okay, let's move on to the next player for the next card, and move on to the next card. And let's just wait a quarter second before we give out the next card. So then it sits there doing nothing. If the alarm hits. It does it again. It sends one card out to one player. It waits another quarter second. Does it again. Boom, boom, boom. For you know, forty times. I think it's yeah, forty times. And then kicks on out and then it changes the state and then this is where we would say okay now it's time to I guess deal out or I, we still have to deal out the mini cards but we could do that either in games this game uh, start round or we could add a new one for game uh, like game deal tiny card or whatever you know like the the uh, the goal cards or something like that so now that you understand that without without oops I should have just opened it up oh I can run it again here you can kind of get a feel for what's happening with this controller object controlling the creation and maintenance of all these other objects or these these other four objects and inside of those four objects there's going to be a, is going to be a lot more code so let's just say players 1 2 and 4 this time around i already don't remember if i skipped a player last time but you can see there here they are coming around skipping player 3 every quarter second it's dealing out a card or maybe half a second from either a half or a quarter second. And again, I, I think this is cool. The space bar, at least for right now, toggles back and forth between visible and invisible. Because as much as this is a cooperative game, you're not meant to be sharing that information nonstop with everybody else. And as I see it, it's, if it's your game, you can play it however the heck you want. So I give you that option. I'm going to give you that option. And also, you're going to need to know the cards for yourself because you're not playing on your own tablet or anything like that. Everything is on one screen. And so it's, it's gonna make sense that each player is gonna go ahead and try to open these things up and look at their cards. Because if you're just randomly picking cards, the game's no fun and you're probably never, ever, ever gonna win. Okay, so now that we've explained the details of setting up these placards and sending data into them, all these little numbers from zero to 44, let's take a look inside of there and see what's going on with that. Okay, and before I discuss the player card hand, uh, I would be remiss here if I did not uh, apologize for part four and those ugly, ugly, hideous cards I created. And again, I tried this out and it just looked horrible. I had to go find at least something. So I picked, I looked up Uno cards and basically just kind of borrowed a, a little graphic for that. And um, and you can see it, it's it's not perfect by any means. It's very pixely. It's very 80s. But at least it's it doesn't look as hideous as it as it did before. And so what I did here, how I changed things from that previous video number four is I have just right now I have a graphic for the back of the card. I call it back playing card sprite. And it's every card is 200 by 280, which at at least right now kind of seems a little big. I just wish they were a little smaller for, but at the time they made sense, and I'm just going to keep going and just kind of work the design around it, since uh, this is mostly just a prototype. Anyway, so there is my back playing card, and then inside of this playing card sprite are all 44 of the sprite. You can see all 44 of the images. I can edit them, and I can just go through, and you can see starting from this, you know, this is image zero, an image from image 0 through 9 we don't use 10 we don't use 0 we don't use 10 we use 11 through 19 we don't use 20 we use 21 through 29 we use we don't use 30 but we do do 31 through 39 and then we don't do 40 and we do 41 42 43 and 44 and so though every image index applies to the card number that we're dealing out to the players so it's a one to one you know it's a one to one relationship between the number that gets sent to this uh, this uh, playing card hand object and how it interprets that data when it has it in its in its technical quote unquote hand. So just to say that is how I changed because I had like eight or ten sprites and I don't need them. I deleted them and I've replaced them with a with a 44 card uh, array here or a, 
animation. Okay, so very, very slowly, quickly here. Uh, basically, when I create this object, I, I need the deck of cards, so I need a DS list here. I could probably have a, I probably should put a destroy event in here. I'll do that right now just while I'm thinking about it. For every DS list that you create, you have to destroy it. And I think I called it cards. Did I call it cards? I already forgot what I called it. Yep, cards. So for every create, there's a destroy. And I'll show that draw here in a second. I was, thought that that was the destroy here. Let's see. So I create, I create, and I destroy, I destroy. And now we're ready for the draw. And it's it, there's nothing else in here. Everything I'm doing is just taking that little bit of information, the deck of cards, as I'm being dealt them. Remember the... the uh, state machine here is sending out data to each of these four placards and every one of those placards is taking that thing in and only when they get that information can they update what they're drawing on the screen and so that's where this is all coming from and just again remember in this create event this is where that player number is coming from and this is by controller number not necessarily player number this is on this is development side player number not uh, human side, user side, player side, uh, player number, because we do zero through three over here on the dev side, and of course on the player side it's one through four. Okay, so over here now, so I have my create, I have my destroy, and now on the draw, this is, you know, it's, I can't make this any smaller per se. Obviously I can't, I can get everything on one page there. So now what this does is, and there's, there was a lot of guesswork, and you know, I didn't write it, I didn't draw anything out on a piece of paper or anything like that to kind of get a feel. So I just kind of played with the numbers a little bit, and you can kind of see the numbers are just kind of, are kind of messy. And I could clean them up, and maybe I will, but maybe I won't. So what I need to do here is say, okay, on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, why don't you sort the cards that are in your hand? And that's why, if you notice when the game runs, and I'll do that again at the end here, that when you see it running, you can see that as new cards are added, they get put into sorted order because this is being basically done on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, sorting that list. So, okay, so that has nothing to do with the graphics of everything, so this technically could go in the, uh, in the step event, but uh, we, I didn't do it just yet. And so now I have, what do I want to do? I want to draw a white rectangle. I can't remember, outline. So I'm drawing a white rectangle. And that's basically the boundary of the entire thing. You can see it goes from whatever X value. It's 860 wide and it's 325 tall. And again, it just, it just works with what I've got. So I draw a white boundary and then I draw a black rectangle. And I draw it at 0.4 alpha. So it's, you know, it's mostly see-through. So it does, it's not just this, uh, the game, you can actually see the uh, background image a little more than just a bunch of black boxes. And I basically draw and fill in the rectangle and then put the alpha back. And then I say, okay, player one, player two, player three. This is how the text gets drawn out. And remember, I always recommend basically setting up the color, the alignment, and the font for every draw you do, because you'd never, at least for text, because you'd never, you don't, you can't trust any other object in your scene to put it back or put it how you expect it to be explicitly say what you're going to do when you do it. So this takes the player number and adds player one, player two, player three, player four, and this is basically this little for loop here is how I draw out all the cards. And so, and for right now I've tied it to the space bar, and I'm going to change this. This is, again, this is just to get going. In the future video we'll kind of make this so that you can use the controller or you can use the keyboard to see what's going on, but for right now it's just the space bar, just, to, just as a proof of concept. And this just says for every card in that list, and remember the cards are being added again, every, you know, every second you basically get a new card, and, and this is on a frame-by-frame -frame basis, is saying, well, how many cards do I have? What value is that card? And check to see if the space bar is pressed. And if the space bar is not pressed, then what do you know? You don't want to see those cards, because again, like you only want to hit, you know, only want to hit the space bar to view the card, should I be able to see it. And so if I hit the space bar, then, then I want to show whatever playing card sprite. And again, remember, I have 44 cards or 45 cards in tow over here. But that's the animation I want to draw to. 
and then the animation frame will be whatever the card number is. We already showed that with the graphic. And if I'm going to do the back playing card sprite, I could set this thing to any number at all. And since there's only one image in that entire uh, graphic, it, it doesn't care and it'll just draw that one graphic. So I don't need to have any if statements or anything like that for the, value, for the Im image index that gets printed out. And so then it, here's where it prints out this, you know, the exact sprite at the exact position that I want it to be. And I'm moving this thing over 50 pixels for every card. I draw the card and then I move over 50 and I draw the next. And I move over 50 and I draw the next. And I move over 50 and keep on going for as many cards as I have in here. But this, that's pretty much it. It looks like a, it say it looks like a ton of magic in a way when all this is going, all these little moving parts. And in a way it is, you have all these dynamic objects kind of just living in, a, in this little sea in this engine, just kind of working together. And, uh, and it just, sometimes it's just magical that it all happens, especially in these, for me, in these uh, uh, non-statically typed languages, these kind of things. So let's try this one more time. Now with the full understanding of what everything is going on, here's my cat. Three seconds, get them out of here. Okay, so now, and, and again, remember that it also takes into account only one of the players can be inactive. I can't start the game with two players. can't start to play with player with the game with one, but I can with three and I can with four. And so there's 40, uh, 44 cards. So I set it up so that if there's a three-player game, just like in the rules, that everybody gets 11 cards, or uh, 13 cards, 14, 13? Everybody gets 13 cards and one player gets 14, that, that is by the rules. And if it's a four player game, everybody gets 11 cards. So you can kind of see that in here with everybody playing. You can see the 11 cards come in and you can see, watch them sort as they go. Isn't that pretty cool that you can see them sorting because it's doing it on a frame by frame basis. And these are just, this is just, again, this is, <coughs> excuse me, just an implementation of a view of the data that's stored in here. This is a 4 and a 9 and a 14 and a 21 and a 23 and a 29, 31, 33, 37, and 41. Instead of just showing numbers on a screen, we found a way to turn that into a, you know, a different graphical interface. And this is for player 2 and player 1 and player 4 and player 3. So everybody's ready to go now that they have all their cards. Uh, i got to find a way to, to add the, those little cards. I don't know where to put them just yet. I'm thinking it out just to make it easy just to place it. But these things don't have numbers on the bottom, which I can change. I can make, but I just would have to do that manually. And I don't know if I'm willing to do that for something like this. But, um, but we're gonna have to figure out a way to get each person one of those little mini cards for their goal card. They have to win a trick with, and, and, be, hand, and be given that card in the trick that is won. Otherwise, basically, if by the end of the, the game, if you haven't done all that, then you don't score the goal to win the game. Okay, so that covers everything I wanted to in this video. Uh, I know it's probably 20 minutes or so of videos. So, uh, and you have the YYZ file. But as always, if you have any questions or concerns, if I accidentally misspoke, or if you know a better way to do a lot of these things, I'd always love to hear it. I always like to, <coughs> excuse me, I always like to, to learn from people who are working in this uh, more than I am. So next video, we will continue to freshen that up. This, uh, this player card hand will make it so that you can use the controller to, to basically look at the cards. Uh, because it, it look, it, right now it's really weird that everybody's an all or nothing kind of thing. So we can set it up for individual players, either, either with the keyboard or with the controller. And then we can do a couple more you know, odds and ends as well and, and add that small card, add the goal card value. Uh, goal card, um, uh, value to the to this uh, whole thing here so that's next video so take care everybody have a good one and i'll see you then hello everyone bradley swart here and this is part seven of my continuing series of making a basic card game using game maker studio 2.3 and beyond as i'm creating it i'm keeping current the game is called columbus as many of you probably already know and so it's a trick-taking card game and let me just show you where we're at remember we, this is our main menu and i'm a, i have to have at least three players and maybe four and then i play the game
And then here is the game itself, and we're just dealing the cards out at the moment. So this part, we're still going to be dealing the cards out. And now we're going to be, now that the cards are dealt, we're going to set it up so that the player can control, each individual player can control the viewing of their cards. Because right now if I press the space bar, every one of them gets viewed. And don't, you know, so don't mind again, I, I just don't want to do this in full screen because it's just, it just, it just adds a delay that we don't need. So right now, spacebar does everybody, but what I would like to be able to do is set it up so that if I press maybe like the one key, if the, if the player is using a, the keyboard for their control, if I press the one or the two or the three or the four, that player will be, you know, that player will show their cards. So it's not all or nothing or on the controller, I can maybe use the, or I'm, I'm looking at the old Xbox uh, 360 controllers way back. You know, I haven't, no reason for me to upgrade when I have a hundred of these things, liter not literally, but quite a few of these things sitting around here and in our computer lab at school. And so I can use, I can like use the Y button to be able to view the cards on that controller. And so let's just go ahead and do that. So hopefully this will be a shorter than most video. So where does that need to go down? That kind of needs to go down here. And so right now, I, this was the if keyboard check. This was just this was just the filler piece of data here. And so now what I can do is take a look at what's going on. The player, remember I have access to the, my player number for each of these four objects, if I'm in Python, player number. So I can use that at least on the controller side. So what I can do here, I can, let me just put an else if, and let's just put this, if uh, game, is it game pad? I can never remember the, if the game pad button check, all right, um, yep, game pad button check, and I can say uh, the game pad number is player, if it's either going to be device 0, 1, 2, or 3, and button index, oh shoot, I do not know what button index that is, let me, Let's go and find out. Uh, the help comes up on another page for me here in another window. That here. Let's see, how do I get, to, I want to get to the gamepad input. And it's going to be, um, why would they do, why would they put every, I understand what they're trying to show you, but why would they make me turn my head 135 degrees? Oh, that feels good though. Stretching, stretching is always good. I'm going to be using GP Face 4 as the button, you could do whatever you want, obviously, but I'm gonna use GP face four. Uh, where am I here? GP face four. And I, I just, I also wanna preface this by saying if, and I say, I have my game data object and it, I have what's called inputs and it's at the player level. And if that equals controller, and right that and this then i want to do then i want to do it uh hold on i want to say image to draw is equal to playing cards sprite i'm sorry yeah playing card sprite so let's try that out and i know this gets a little unwieldy though there's a lot of verbosity here and it might not even be 100 percent correct here here we go so I'm saying if my game input data is a controller, because remember my game data object, all it's storing is inputs, and it's either going to be the word no one, or it's going to be a it's going to be the quote unquote string controller. Oh, I wonder if this will crash. Let's find out. Oh, let me turn start turning on some of my things here. All right, so I've got all four controllers going. So I'm going to set this up all four players to play, but I'm only going to set up controllers one and two for the actual control. I don't know if this is going to work. I don't know if it's going to crash. I don't know anything right now. Let's see what happens. It hasn't crashed yet, which is good. So now I can press the Y button and nothing is happening. I can press the Y button. Nothing is happening. Y button, nothing. At least it's not crashing. So, so far the controllers are not doing their job. Spacebar is still doing its job. So let's see, let's see what I did incorrectly here. Maybe you're screaming out at me. I do not, I can't hear you from here. Where is my object here? Here it is. Okay, so let's see here. If 
game data dot inputs. Let's see, hold on, let's just go game data inputs at the player level is equal to controller all caps. I believe it should be. I believe it's that. Maybe it's not. Maybe it's just not in all caps. Let me see if I can. I just got to remember where I did this. I think that was in the start button in the main menu. Take a look. Left press. Nope, it's just all lowercase. I thought it would be. I thought it was all uppercase. Um, let's just keep. Con let's just keep consistent with what, what we've already done because maybe I've done this in a few other places. And, and as if I screw this up, then I screw up other things. So now I'll just go back and put that in in perspective. Say okay, controller. All oh, lowercase. Let's try again. I lost one of my controllers. I some of my batteries are dying. Lucky to have found eight whole batteries in this house with all the toys, all the stuff running around here. I'm a number of my toys, but, but anyway, not always kids stuff. Okay, so all four players are active, and again, only controller one and controller two are allowed to do this. So let's take a look now. I say, okay, controller, there we go, no crash. Oh, cool, look at that. I'm pressing the Y button only on player one, and it's showing me my cards. And this will be good any time. That's awesome. I'm loving it. I'm digging it. And so player two, all right, cool, fair enough. That's working. And so now player three, nope. Player four, nope. And that's because I said that I'm going to be accessing things through the keyboard and not through the controller. So now the controller is working for player one and player, and basically for the controller things are working. And now I want to fix it up. So I press instead of pressing space bar, I can present uh, the player card here. So if if and let me move this down. Let me let me move this inside of this because I'm gonna you know because I can't have a dual condition here and keep everything the way I want it to be. Else if game data dot is equal to keyboard and mouse. I think that's what it was. I think that's how I spelled it out. Let me go back to my start game button and keyboard and mouse. Let me just steal this guy and just copy it in. I know I typed it all out and everything, but it's very possible I made a slight mistake. All it takes is one one character to be off. Okay, that is good. Okay, so then now we have to figure out what button to press, right? So how do I figure that out? Let's see. Um, so this, instead of gamepad here, I will use keyboard. Check. Uh, keyboard check. And let's see. I'm going to take the player number, can, let, I'm going to try this out, take the player number, convert it into a character, CHR gives me, CHR gives me the string containing the character which is the Unicode value, so it gives me a string here. I, and I think I'm doing. I think I'm going to be doing this right. Where's my stuff here? Where's my? If it's keyboard and mouse, it check keyboard player plus one, and say if this is equal to true, and then try. Let's try that out. Yep, okay, everything is fixed up. Put this controller back on again. like we did before let's see as as things are going on let's see I can show uh oh I got a crash let's see this is on line 39 of the draw event so what did I do wrong line 39 image to draw okay okay fair enough I can just work that out by just saying ahead of time image to draw is going to be the back playing card otherwise
Or I'll, I'll use the space bar. Oh, no, let's let's keep it the way it was. So if I press the space bar, um, so if I press the space bar, everything is good to go. If I'm on the controller, so it's one of those things, if you're playing by yourself or something and you just want to say, oh, okay, I want to see all the cards, I can press the space bar. Otherwise, if I want to see individual cards, I can, I can press the player numbers or I can use the controller to do the job as well. So that's the theory. And again, sometimes I do this, I do this ahead of time and sometimes I just kind of order hack it out. I know what I want to get done. Active, 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 active. Let's see if we can do this now without crashing. Okay, here we go. Good, good, good. Okay, so oh, um, player plus one, and that's okay. CHR. Maybe I need ORD instead of CHR. Uh, I'm gonna take a look at that. I'm gonna then I'm gonna it's just not to waste your time trying to figure out some simple syntax error that I'm that I'm neglecting. I'll be right back with the solution. Okay, so I got it going. Uh, it was ORD and not CHR that I needed here in this case. So this is saying, okay, it's the back of the playing card unless it's a controller and I'm pressing the Y button or the, the at least the GP Phase 4 button. It might be different on the controller that you have. Or if I'm going to do keyboard and mouse and I'm playing, if I'm the one, player one and I press the one key, I'm player two and I press the two key. This is not the number pad one, but this is just the uh, this is just the number on the on the actual keyboard one two three four. And then I got to get rid of this else because right now if I press the space bar, nothing happens. But it's supposed to be the the end all be all to everything, right? So this should be an if statement on top. That's not part of the part of this structure. So if it's the back playing card, if it's the controller and I press. If it's the keyboard or if I press, or if I press the space bar, trumps everything. So let's take a look now. And I think that should do it for today's video. Oh yeah, I still have to work out the mini cards. That'll be next part. I have to work out the mini cards and then um, that's it. At least from getting the, the deal started. And then we can start playing the actual game. And then with the actual game, we have to we have to tinker just a little bit more so that the player knows which of the cards they are going to select. So let's see, if I press one, it doesn't work. But if I press Y, it does. If I press two, it doesn't work. But if I press, uh, where is it, Y, it does. All right, so let me put, if I'm player three, Y doesn't work, but if I press three, it does. And player four, if I press Y, it doesn't work, but if I press four, it does. And if I press space bar, they're all viewed. So I've got myself a deal. I've got everything that I want to do here. And just to try it, I tried player one and player two, obviously. And that, you know, player one, player two, and player three. So let's, let me try this one more time, reversing this so that it's a four player game, but players three and four are the controller, the controller players. And then uh, in that limited amount of testing, I'm pretty confident that everything is working as it's intended, at least for what I'm intending to do in these videos. So let's see, active, 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 controller, controller. And again, this isn't going to matter if you're not playing, you could still have the thing on and you could press all the buttons. But since you, oops, that thing keeps coming out because the batteries are dying. Um, it doesn't matter if because you don't have any cards to come to bring into focus. So it's not showing you any cards anyway. So you can tinker to your heart's content. It should not, it should not have to matter here. So let's see if I'm player one, Y button doesn't work. Uh, player two, oops, player two, Y doesn't work, but if I press a one, it does. If I press a two, it does. One and two, there you look at that. One, two, three, okay. So three and four are now now not working on the keyboard. Three, um, let's see, player three, oh, that's player four. This is player four. This is player three. So yep, so everything seems to be working. And again, if I press the space bar, everybody gets displayed. And I think we're good to go. I think we I think we have everything. And I pro if I said something and I already forgot it, I'll take care of it in another video. So that's everything for today. Uh, so now we are moving on to setting up the mini card. What is the goal card for each individual player? Remember, at least in our game, 
every player gets one. Oh yeah, I wanted to try. Uh, I wanted to try this out with one player missing. Um, but remember, every one of the players gets uh, one of the goal cards, and then once you have all that together, then you get the final card, and hopefully you can get that card to score the final goal to win the game. That's that is the goal of what the goal literally of what we're trying to do here. So player three. Let's try it out here. But as you can see here, everything's still working. Player three is not getting the cards. I might change this up so this is player three and this is player four. At least on the Xbox, the old Xbox 360 controllers, it's uh, player one is upper left, player two is upper right, player three is lower left, and player four is lower right, which goes against clockwise order, which is what I was trying to do here. Let's see. I'll press space bar for everybody. One, two, three, four. See, three doesn't matter. And I can go, okay, there it is for player two. There it is for player one. Player four to, and player three doesn't get it. Yep, everything I wanted to do for this video is done. So as always, uh, if, you, if I misspoke or anything like that, or if you have a better way to do things, realistic i'm not go i'm not going to go back and change these videos of course i'm not going to change this so we can always put it in the comments how to do things better better practices because i'm not claiming i'm not claiming best practices on any of these things i just wanted to make a quick and dirty fun game in my spring break or my winter break period here um so cool next video come up next uh we hope to have some fun doing that and uh, then we'll be ready to actually play play the game itself and play some cards out to the table and see what happens. See you then. Bye-bye, guys. Hello, everyone. I am Bradley Sward, and today is part eight of our continuing series, making our trick-taking game. We're spending a lot of time just getting the cards dealt and dealing with the user interface that, you know, obviously that the user is going to have when they're playing the game, either on the keyboard side or on the side of the... Uh, uh, gameplay controller. I'm using Xbox 360 controllers from way back in the day because that's just what I have and I have access to four of them here in front of me. So here is the play and remember I can press the buttons on the keyboard. This is one, two, three, four or if I had controllers enabled I could use on my end the Y key or uh, GP face four to be able to toggle on that. And then I can press the space bar to see everything if I wanted to see everything. So that's where we're at now. Two things I wanted to add in this video is the goal card. I think I finally figured out what I'm gonna do with that. I'm gonna make it smaller. I'm gonna print it and you know print it out with you know make it like half size or something like that. We'll figure out what size. And for this case, like a four-player game, I'll just put it, I, I can just kind of put it over here. Or maybe I can put it like 300 pixels over from wherever the last card is so it kind of comes with you. Or for a three-player game, that's maybe not so feasible. I don't, we'll have to, we'll figure it out. Uh, we'll just figure it out as we go here. And with the gold card, and then I also want to make it so that you know which card is the card that you are currently active. Like if you were to play a card right now, which one would it be? Because you have all these in your hand. So we're going to make it, we're going to use the shoulder buttons because I just want to use buttons. I don't want to do anything analog right now. I just want to keep it simple. So we'll use shoulder buttons so that we can toggle between the cards and we'll have a little like a little soccer ball pop up. So you'll be able like down here, whatever you'll, so you know which, which, uh, which card would be played if you were able to play at that current moment. So with that said, let's get to it. Okay, so one thing I'm gonna do here on the player card hand, I'm gonna go in here and I'm going to create an object called, or a, a variable called goal. I'm gonna set it equal equal to negative one. And that just means what is the goal? And again, I'm not making hundreds of levels of this. This is not my concern. I'm, you know, I'm not worried about creating different vari you know, variations of this. Everybody's gonna get one goal card. That's, that's the goal. And then, um, and then that's pretty much it. Every player gets one for just one and only one. And it's gonna, we don't need a DS list to, to hold one value. We just need a variable to hold that one value. And I'm going to forget I called it gold because I'm talking and thinking and doing. Okay, so over here, so what do I want to do now? So what I want to do is, because we shuffle all the normal cards out properly, so now over here, instead of doing an instance change here, let me duplicate this first off. Let me duplicate this. And then what I can say here is duplicate for alarm one. 
Okay, so I have my alarm zero and I have my alarm one. Let me borrow this guy from the create here where I can take my list and shuffle it. I don't really need to keep it. If I were doing this for real, and I was, you know, like if I was doing a, a client server kind of interface, I would absolutely have all the data stored in one place. But since this is just a simple game, I don't really have any problem moving the data around and having other objects stored. And also for those of you who are not used to doing things that way, at least it's some practice. So you say this isn't best practices, but it gives you some good practice on basically how 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 data gets managed between separate objects. Okay, so over here. I'm going to, instead of this, I'm going to start setting alarms. And so I'm going to wait one second. I'm going to set alarm one to 60. All right. And in this case, I'm going to set index back to zero because nobody has been served yet. And I'm going to do that shuffling. Oops, I thought I had shuffle here. I did get it. I just forgot to copy paste it over. So we'll get one more. One more, oops, one more shuffle, set it back to zero, and then we'll set this alarm, alarm one to 60. Okay, so now, so now here in the alarm, we'll do this kind of come back here. And if, when everything's said and done here, and let's say in this case, we're just gonna do this four times over, or yeah, less than four, yep, as long as it's four times over, and, um, Let's see, I wanna make sure, or I guess for number of players. Shoot, do I have a function that will tell me how many players there are? Not quite. Um, so let's see, maybe I could write one real fast here. I'll call it num equals zero, and for uh, bear i equals zero, i is less than four plus plus i. If uh, game data dot player or dot, dot inputs at the i value location does not equal no one then i will plus plus num that should get me should get me going here and so my index uh, player deal oh i should set my player deal back to zero as well Okay, so player deal is zero, index is zero, set my alarm to a different alarm to a value and reshuffle the cards. And now when it comes down to it, how many players are there? There are three or four players. And so as long as the index is less than num, okay, oh, wait, I, no, I need to keep that. Oh, do I need to keep that? No, I don't need to keep that. Do the same thing as I've done before. Plus plus player deal it should only only happen one time and said and now instead of touching the cards and using a DS list I should be able I did remember should be able to just call it goals equals all cards at that value and then plus plus index plus plus player deal and then move on to the next what is it not happy about variable goals only referenced once so hold on players. Okay, oops, come on, game. Players, okay, and then this thing is holding a player card hand. Players dot, goal, oh, goal. See, I already screwed it up. What if I wanted more than one goal, right? Oh, well, today not gonna happen. So hold on, get rid of goals. See, that's what the, that's what the IntelliSense is there for, right? Okay, there, fixed it up, dot goal equals, and then that should do it on this end, hopefully. And now, and then we could test it out here by putting in, in my draw event, just, I'm just gonna make it real easy to start here. I'm just gonna draw text uh, x comma y. I'm gonna draw, oh, hold on, I wanna draw set color to white just to make sure. I think it will be white anyway, but I just wanna make sure. Oops, okay, and then I wanna print the goal value. And let's see what happens. Before we worry about the graphical side of things, let's make sure that it's functional. All right, cat going. Oops, I got an error somewhere here. Hmm, what doesn't it like? Fail formed if statement. What? Line five. Game data dot dot inputs at the i value. 
where i equals zero i is less than four okay what is going on um just want curly braces nothing seems out of place that's nothing screaming at me. what happens like now Okay, don't know. That's okay. All right, here's my cat. Let's make everybody active. Let's try it out now. There's okay, minus one. Oh, shit, I should have changed it up, but it's okay. Minus one, minus one, minus one, minus one. Deal the cards. And if they change to something that's not minus one, then we know we got ourselves a deal. Okay, so everybody, and then it goes one second, and then. 37, 28, 43, and 41. So yes, it gave me four completely different numbers. And now we're ready to do something with that graphic. Okay, so like in this case, I don't think it's a bad thing to put everything like right over here, like here is my goal. But it, but when, the, when, the, when there's a three player game, it's not as easy to do. So let me just, but let's just, uh, and this is public information. So this card should be available to you the entire time you know, it should always be visible no matter what. So let's just, again, let's just kind of get it going, and then I can spend a couple minutes here. Uh, what's it, seven minutes in already? This is, um, we can kind of just deal with that here. So let's see. If goal does not equal negative one, this is where we'll start printing stuff, right? So draw sprite. I'll have to use draw sprite extended for this thing. Now, image to draw is definitely what I, oh, I'm sorry, I definitely want to use playing card sprite. Because it's always going to draw something. It's never going to draw the back of it. I'm going to do that. Draw goal. Now, where am I going to draw this thing at? Oh, my goodness, here. So, let's see. What is I? I is everything up to DS size times cards. Let's just get this. Um, I can, this is just, okay, let me just. X plus 55 plus oh, 55 X plus 5 plus 50 times number of cards plus 1. Now let's just see, again, let's just see what that does. And then uh, I'm going to do draw sprite extended. So it brings out all the parameters. Sprite, sub image, X and Y, and then all sorts of extra stuff. So I say scale, I'm going to try 0 0.4, 0 0.4. Rotation, zero. Color, C white. No tinting. And alpha, one. Let's see what happens now. Then I won't have to worry about drawing the, uh, the, the number on the screen anymore. Because then we can, ver we can verify that the number that we have written down is the same as the number uh, that we're expecting to see. When it gets transferred over. Okay, so we have a three player came this time. And this is all I'm really worried about here. Okay, boom, 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 boom. See what it looks like. There we go. So there's at least there's something. 17, that's a red 7. The 1 is a blue 1. And 29 is a green 9. So, yep. Um, that's good to go. Oh, the only thing is I got to make sure. Oh shoot, I got to make sure there you, that the uh, that there's no black card. Black cards are not allowed to be uh, the the trump cards are not allowed to be the cards that have to be won. So I have to I have to get I have to call that from the deck. So while I'm thinking about that here and over here, I'll just steal the create event here. I'll steal this guy, and then uh, when I go to fix this up over here. Oops, DS list shuffle. Yep, this is a nightmare when it comes to formatting, but we'll get it. All right. What I want, what I want is DS list clear. Oops. I want it to be, what is it, all cards? Okay, and then this time I want it to be up to but not including 39. Okay, 
for the and and not the non zeros and I think that will do it and I'll have to take a look okay now that the distractions have seeped on my end let's see clear all the cards add from 0 to 39 getting rid of anything that start that ends in a zero that's one through nine. Yep, that does all 36 of the, the 40 cards that are th of the 30, yeah, 36 of the 40 possibilities. And then we're not taking into account 40, 40, and anything from 40 on up, which are the, the, the wild cards or the, the trump cards. So that should do it on this end. Then I shuffle them up, and then everything else goes according to plan over here where the cards get dumped in. Okay, so then, uh, so now with that said, now we gotta, now we wanna get I just want to format this just a little better in the draw event down here. And so I'll do that here and I'll show you what I've done. I'll, I'll just stop the video again for a second here and I'll fix it up a little bit so you don't have to watch me just hem and haw through it. And then once we have that going, then, then we can go ahead and take a look at uh, uh, making it so that you can see which card the player wants to discard or wants to play for a specific round. Okay, so here is what I've got going here. So I've got this goal card. And so I've got a little placard behind it. I show the card. I, I make it very clear that that's your goal card. And what's what I did? I'll, I'll show you the code in half a second. But when I when I'm I can I'm hitting enter. I added a little just a little thing to hit enter to remove a card. And you can see that it sticks with it until it gets down to you know so there's enough room over here. And then finally it gets rid of all of that stuff. So you can see the goal and it's always visible to you. Again, the goal is common knowledge to all players at all times. So even if everything's going, you can kind of still see what's going on. And as, as I reduce down the cards, it follows it along. And so I think that's a pretty good, uh, that's a pretty good uh, compromise on what to do with the card, at least for this simple game. Uh, I, again, I would probably change this around if I were making this for real. So that's, that's where we are now with the goal card. So we have all the cards dealt. And now the final step here is to make sure that we know where the player is going to be, you know, what card the player wants to tink wants to tinker around with. So to do something like that, I'm going to have to go into the player card hand again. I'll have something called create. I'll say index equals zero. And okay, so make that easy. And so now here in the draw event again, I'll do this down below on top of everything else is uh, basically there should always be at least one card, right? So, but, well, if DS list size cards is greater than zero, let's, let's just put an if check in there. Let's just make sure that there's at least one card to go off of so that we draw, that we draw the index here. So what we need to do is steal that guy. We want to draw the sprite. And what sprite am I going to draw? I'm going to draw, where are you, sprites? Where are you? There you are. Uh, I'm going to draw a soccer ball sprite. And I'm going to, where am I going to put this here? Goal, I'm, I'm going to put it at uh, zero. That's the index here. And for the, just for the moment, just to find the position, because a lot of this, I don't have any of this written down anywhere. I don't have any sketches for this thing. And so I'm going to say, oh, I don't want XX. I definitely want, uh, where is the code for this guy? This crazy formula right here. No, not that one. This crazy formula for right here is where the card is, where the card is being drawn on the screen. So let me just steal this. Borrow that. And let me, okay, I'll, and then let me just add 30 to this. X scale, that's a, how big is my soccer ball? I bought my soccer ball is 215 by 225. I'm going to have to reduce this down. I'm going to say to 0.1 by 0.1. Let me just, I don't know what that's going to necessarily do, but I'm just going to try it, see what happens. Okay, game maker, thanks for nothing. There we go. 0 0.1, 0 0.1 for my scaling, rotation zero. Oh, I can rotate. No, I'm not going to rotate it. Uh, color C white and alpha one. So let's see what that does. Before I worry about moving the thing around, let's just get it, let's just kind of get it where it needs to go to start with, right? Oh, I is gonna, this thing is probably gonna crash. Let me put index here instead of I and, and start over again. Whoop, okay, never mind. What just happened? What, um, index. 
I don't know what what did what did I some kind of animation I must have accidentally triggered something. Let's try it out here. And then it should be pretty simple from here on in. Now the only question is what to do about all the, you know, it's going to be easy on the controller, but what are we going to do for the players that are playing on the keyboard? Oh, there's the little soccer ball. You can see it. The little soccer ball. And let's just see. Okay. Maybe I, maybe I can make it a little bigger. I had no idea going in. So just 0.2.2. .2 see the little soccer ball and that and that's what I I want the soccer ball to be very distinctly visible on top of all the playing cards because of course I want you to know that if I do press the button to give a card away to play a card from my hand that that is the card whether it's whether it's visible or not uh, you want to be able to know that that's the card that you want to be able to play and oh my goodness what has happened We'll try this again one more time and then I'll again I will not bore you with all the details of just a uh, trial and error until you get something that you're kind of happy with and I'll show you what I got going for me. Just, uh, let's just do four player got, okay zero players playing there's the card there's my soccer ball We're getting better I think that's the right size for the soccer ball I think we just need to kind of move it over just a little bit let me just move it over just move it over like four pixels and let's see do I need to move it down yeah I need to move it down about 10 more pixels and uh, from there we'll see and again I'm just gonna do trial and error so I will not bore you with that and I'll get back to you here in a second when I'm done all right so here is the code that it make that it makes it look halfway decent for me so if there's if there's a card if you still have a card in your hand and if it's the back image, I'm going to draw it a slightly different X offset than the than if it's not. And the reason being, just it's just a graphic, it's just a visual thing. Like this looks pretty good there, but if I make it, so I just want to make it so it's a you know it's not kind of cut off by the black outline there. And I know that's just that's just me being pedantic, but I just I just think it's kind of cute that way. And so the the only thing left to do now again I'm going to make it easy on the controller I'm going to do the controller side first because that'll show that everything's working right and like moving from left to right and back around and all sorts of stuff if I you know press the the shoulder keys uh, then we'll have to figure out what to do with the uh, with the keyboard and I'm kind of still debating in my head what to do about that I'm thinking maybe only the active player on the keyboard can change because why not right because everyone else, there's only one keyboard, right? It's not like everyone is having has their own keyboard. Uh, I don't think that exists too much in the world. Um, so let's just get to this. Let's just figure out what to do here. And so, uh, so I have all these buttons. If you know, where is it? If if gamepad button check. So I can borrow this down here. I can do this before I do the cards here. So if gamepad check, and I don't know which bad gamepad button it's called, and let me check it out here. It is called. I am looking at the bump, not the bumper. Am I looking at the bumpers? What are they called? I'm looking at shoulder. Where are you? Come on. Where are you guys? Shoulder. I'm looking at the left shoulder button and the right shoulder button. So this is the button. This is to go left. Then I'll say, I can say minus minus index. And then I can say here, let me just put some parentheses around this. Say, okay, if index is less than zero, then I will say that index is equal to uh, DS list size cards uh, minus one. Because we're starting from zero. And let me just try this here. Um, I guess you can put an else if here. Wait, I can do a check pressed, right? Yes, I'm going to do a check pressed. And that way I don't have to necessarily have anything else there. So check press both ways. Shoulder right RR plus plus index. If index is greater than or equal to 
Yes, list size of cards. Then index is equal to zero. And actually, I don't. I want to make sure because it's you know if if I if I eliminate cards from the left hand side, yeah, there's always going to be a zero. But if I eliminate cards from the right hand side, maybe I can just put this outside of here, and I can test this out. Let me just try this out. The way this is written here. That's the fallback in case I delete stuff. So let's just see what happens now. Um, oh yeah, I have to make. I also have to make sure that this is a uh, that they are using a controller because right now, right now I can do it no matter what. Let's see. A play, player one will have to use the controller. So here are my cards. And I'm doing the left shoulder. Well, that looks pretty good. I'm pretty imp that's pretty impressive so far. Let's see. Left, 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 and there's that. Oh, maybe I'll move that. Maybe I'll move this thing over just slightly in those cases. And then if I press this key, there we go. So that's pretty cool, right? So I can do I can do both here. There's the card that's active. There's my goal card. And I can click, 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 click. And I was saying, what happens now if I eliminate a card? Oh, it goes back to zero. Oh, because in oh, because index is index. Do I want that to happen? Probably not. But I can go left and right, left and right. Um, so let's see. Well, if index is greater than or okay, uh, okay, I see what I'm doing here. I'm gonna have to do this. I'm gonna have to do this in two places here. And then in this case, I'm just going to have to say DS list size minus one. I think I'm there because that was that looked horrendous when it was like that there, where I I kept clicking and then once I eliminated a card, it took me back to zero. That's not good to do to the user. So let's see. Let's try this one more time. Almost done. Almost done for the day. I promise you guys. Nice. Oh yeah, and I gotta fix up the again. I gotta fix up the controller part of this. Whoops. Okay, so it's now it's not working again the way I was anticipating. So I will I will I will work this over and I'll get back to you in a second. What is going on? There. All right, so here is the code that makes it happy on my end, at least with the controller. So I say if I'm a controller and, and if, if this specific player is tied to this placard and that player is using the controller and they hit the shoulder button, then decrement the index and then scroll it around if it has to. Otherwise, if it's the right player or the right shoulder button, add to it and try to move it around again. And so, so you're cycling around left to right, right to left. If you care, if you don't care about that, then don't worry about that. The only thing you have to worry about is what happens if a card, if you get rid of a card on the right hand side, and then you uh, let's see if I can. Oops, I I have to start it over. Uh, what happens if you're if you have a card on the right hand side, like the the last card, and then you give it away? You have to make sure that 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 the soccer ball moves to the next card, the the one that was the previous one. So that it's not uh, not anything weird. What does that mean? All that rambling. It means something like this. So this is all good here. So I can I'm using the shoulder using the shoulder buttons to go between left and right. I'm using the Y button to to toggle everything that I can do here. Very limited interface. And then I'm saying like, what happens if I'm here and I hit Enter to get rid of a card? That ball better move along to the because that this card will no longer exist, and now you can see that the index is tied to the the largest card or the the last card, even as I keep on going and working my way down. I can still go left and right and toggle around, but if I'm if it's this one, it doesn't matter. But if it's this one, it does. It will go back and forth. Okay, so that covers everything I wanted to do in this video. We have our goal card. We have the ability for every player. Oh, I didn't. I, I, I didn't do this right. How about how about this for the uh, 
if if here. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. And so now that's for controller. And what about for the uh, keyboard and mouse? And I probably can combine these, but I'm not going to because I'm not in that state of mind just yet. But at, at least at, I, what I think I'm going to do when I get to it, when we get to actually making the actual gameplay, is only the active player can move their cursor around. But for right now, since we don't have the idea of an active player, and that's per part nine or beyond, that I'm just going to make this a keyboard press on the left arrow key and the right arrow key. Keyboard check pressed, VK left uh, for minus. I like to do the equals true. And then equal uh, the right, go to the right. And let's try that out. And then if that works, then we truly are done with everything for this part. Okay. It's we live in the future. Okay, so here's controller one, controller two. So here are the players. Okay, I got my player one, player two. So I can't press the one on the keyboard, but I can press Y on here, and I can't, you know, say I can't go left and right. You can see all the you can see player three and four moving, because those are the keyboard ones, but the ones that are controlled by by the controller, no, you're not gonna you're not gonna see that. So I can do this individually. That's pretty cool, right? So the keyboard is handled, everything is handled together. Space bar is handled everybody at the same time. But if I press one, can't do it. Two, can't do it. Three, I can. Four, I can. And space bar shows all no matter what. Just think it's like, it's like the, the pseudo version of uh, playing this game. Show me everything. So that is everything I wanted to do now. So I think we can start playing the actual game. And so we can start playing down now that we have access to this cursor. If it's your turn and you press the A button, or v, probably uh, GP face one or something like that, you'll play that card to the middle, and then every player will get their opportunity, and then we'll resolve the cards. We'll figure out if, we, if someone got their goal, or if, if basically, or if a goal card was given to another player, then you fail and then you did not win your task. So that is where we're going, and we do that 13 times, <coughs> and that's pretty much where we're going with this game. So we're, we're, we're making good progress. We have our interface working now. We just kind of have to finish the deal and start working out what to do uh, with the actual gameplay. So thanks, everybody. I'll see you in the next video. Take care. Have a good one. Hello, everyone. Bradley Sward here, and today... This video is part nine of a continuing series, making the trick-taking game I am naming Columbus. Uh, if you've been following along, then you know very well what we're doing. And so, <coughs> excuse me there. So I'm using Game Maker Studio 2.3.7 here at the moment. And we have a quite a bit done, and it still looks daunting, but I, I promise you we are making great progress, and we are actually closer than you would think to having a complete game uh, ready to go. So here is the game. I say I'll save you my cat for at least one time today. So let's play. Let's play four-player game. Two controllers. Let me just tell you what we're going to do. Part of it I've already done, and part of it we're going to do fresh. Uh, I'm going to do live, quote unquote, uh, with the stuff today. So right now I have a two. I have a four-player game. Two of them are controllers. Two of them are keyboard. So I play. Here are my, my four players. It's dealing out the cards as always. I can press space bar, I can press one, two, or I can't press one and two, I can press three and four though. I can press the buttons on the controllers for that specific stuff. Uh, and now the and now I have this set up so whoever the current the, the active player is, they're the ones who will get the soccer ball and it'll either be here, it'll be here, it'll be here, or it'll be here. So it'll be very obvious which player is the one that's playing. And the reason why I kept it on the outside is so that we have the room in the inside for the cards to get played by the players so we can actually have a, have a resolution to this. And so uh, I also have this set up so that the players, only the active player, at least on the country, on the keyboard side, can m modify the, uh, the little pointer soccer ball. I can press space bar, I can press three, I can move around, 
but player four is invisible. Oh, <laughs> I'm moving my hand as if you could see anything. Uh, player four is invisible, and it doesn't move until it's the player's turn. But you can see for the controllers that I can go ahead and I can change up and I can move them around and and I can do whatever I want to do as I see fit. But as I as I see it, only one player is at the keyboard at the moment, so they're the only player who should be able to actively be able to change their cards. You can still see them if you want to, if, if it's like, can you hit four for me? And then they can do that for you. But when it comes to the, when it comes to the card itself and which card do you want to play, that is completely up to the active player. So that's where we're at. And so this is going to be the finalization of the, of the dealing of the cards. Finally have everything. And then the next step will be to create, basically have it and, and generate and create one round of action where every player puts one card to the center, and then that'll be it for this video. And then in another video, in the next video, then we'll deal with the resolution of that when we have an array of four cards. How do we know which one is the winner? And then we can process to say, well, did one of the goals get met? Or did we lose the game because maybe one of the goal cards got put to another player, and that card can never come back around again? So if that happens, then we have a game over immediately. So there's... You know, it's, again, it sounds like there's a lot to do, and there, I mean, it, it, there is a bit to do, but it is not as daunting. It, we, we have much of the mechanic already completed here, and so we're ready to go. So where to begin our discussion? So on the, on the state of the, of the game, the deal cards state, I have added a variable called active player, and it is set to no one, which is a negative four, if I remember correctly. And so everything else is handled, is handled properly, but now here at the end, right before I send the game off into the let's play the game, I, I've, I've changed the name to full round state, so it'll play one full round of uh, action. Use my nose today. Got a little something, but I don't know what it is. A little cold. It is a cold. It's nothing more serious than that. Um, so I have four players. Who's the active player? And if you remember, the, or maybe you remember, but the, the person who is the active player once all the cards are dealt are, is the player that has the black four card. And so, that, so all I'm looking for is I'm going, hey, hey, all you players, do you have the 44 card in your, in your hand of cards? And if you do, then we're setting that player. The active player is that player number, either 0, 1, 2, or 3. And I'm, that is the only code I've added to this whole thing, is just adding this so that it doesn't crash on us in, in a brief, you know, in any brief moment where the active player is trying to activate the active player, but there's no variable existing, and then using it here to set it up to say, oh, it's player two, and so that's all there is to do in that, and have it still have not even come, you know, done anything with that full round state. It only exists so that I can that I can translate uh, uh, that I can. Uh, that I can change the instance into that when I see fit. And then, oh yes, maybe I haven't, maybe I didn't, did I do this in this video? I don't, I, I probably did that in this video, or for this video here, that I created an object called game state base class. And those of you who know me from other videos know that this is basically my parent class. Inherit, you know, this is basically any, any class I teach, this is the inheritance polymorphism object oriented programming portion of that sort of information. So the base class is the parent of all of the other classes that are going to be states. So the game deal state, deal card state is parented to this. It, this is a child, and game full round state is a child of it as well. And again, I'm not going into every detail of everything for this video. But, the, but because of the way this is set up, all the virtual functions and everything like that, uh, if I ever get around to making things smart instead of just, just hack, you know, quote unquote hacking things through, uh, I could move stuff up into the parent class. Uh, but right now there's no common behavior for any of this kind of stuff because this behavior is very specific and this one doesn't have any behavior at all. However, as we're changing objects from state to state, I need a consistent way to access that information and that's why I can use game state base class. Uh, I can actually, you'll see here, I can actually use game state base class and it'll always get me the data that I'm supposed to get. Okay, so that deals with everything here and so just parenting, parenting everything and um, getting ready to go. So then the, only, the, only, the, the other thing here is with the player card hand. 
Uh, let's see, create here, uh, index. Nope, I have not modified anything inside here. And so the only thing left to do is to, to talk about the, the draw state here. So let's see, this has not been modified. This has not been modified. Um, let's see, I have added some code here. Where is it? Let's see. Let's see, it draws out the cards and it figures out what to do. Um, figures out the goal state. Figures out what your goal card is. We've talked about that before. And then this is part of it too. So here is if uh, for each player card hand, only worry about that little the little the little soccer ball that pops up so you can you know you can move around and say, oh I want card two or I want card four. That is only visible if the game is not in if or if the game is not in the game deal card state. And so when everything started up, you, maybe you noticed or maybe you didn't, you can go back and watch the video a second time if it's interesting to you, that you can see that the little soccer balls don't pop up for anybody until this state has been moved out of, the, the deal card state has been moved out of and moved into the full round state. And so that this just wraps everything around. So okay, so if so basically, and even if you pressed left or right, nothing would modify. Or if you press the bumper buttons on the controller, nothing would modify here. The controller does not be, get active, the keyboard does not get active, and anything else. And so then coming around after that, I still do the same stuff with, with the cards here, but I do one extra little check and say, hey, if you're a keyboard and mouse player and you're not the active player, then don't show it as well. But everything else is, everything else is visible the way it was as before. And so that that you know, so there's a couple, you know, an extra couple if statements, quote unquote, carefully carefully placed, so that um, it doesn't affect things. Uh, um, who knows? And I say that's the fun of programming is it works for the case that I want it to, but does it uh, does it break does it break down for cases that I wasn't expecting or cases I haven't thought about? And over the that's why I kind of. I started doing this and then I started adding little tweaks and that's why I figured I'd spend 10 minutes or 8 minutes or whatever of this video, however long this is, discussing these things because, yeah, it is important for you to see that I did make a couple of changes to the, uh, basically to the design uh, and the implementation of the way the, you know, the cards are dealt, the way the, 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 the visual aspect of everything is placed. Okay, so then the final step here is am I, act, am I the active player? So this is what I was saying here. No matter what, of, no matter which of these states, because there's going to be at least three or four different states that we have to go off of here, it doesn't matter. I don't need to do an if, you know, like basically, hey, are you a deal cards? Hey, are you a full round cards? Hey, are you this? Hey, are you that? I can go right to the base class. And since I know I'm only going to have one object of this entire base class existing at any given time, then I can go right to it and say, hey, hey base class, get me the active player. Get me that number. And if I'm that, then basically print out that soccer ball on the screen. And I just, this is kind of hard coded as you can see here, which is fine for this game. Now, I, I really do wish this had a more of a WYSIWYG editor and kind of things, the way that Unity and Unreal allow you to parent these transforms. I got it, yeah, so like, I got it working. If we wanted, if we were gonna modify the design, I would have to go back in here at this point and play around with it. I spent way too much time just, uh, trial and erroring this until I got it anywhere near where I wanted it in the first place. And uh, maybe next time I'll design a little more. Yeah, I, for, <laughs> I guess for, for coming in with no, with, no, with no actual design at all, nothing on paper, not even anything really in my head, I think I'm doing okay for that. So, um, so again, don't do that. Those of you who are real gamers, this is just, uh, this is just something again uh, to do in my winter break period. Keep me from all the boredom of all the coldness, and all the wet, rainy, snowy, icy stuff that's outside. Okay, so that's that's where this is going. Print the soccer ball on the screen. Make it a little smaller because that soccer ball is way too big as it is, uh, as it was as full size. So then everything works out. So let me run this one more time for you then. And then now we're ready to move on to the next part. Okay. Yep, I still got to see my cat. He's He's basically doing that upstairs right now. He took over our couch, always does that at night. And so here we go again, here is our player. I, I, I turned off my controller, so I'll just, leave, I'll just put everybody, or I'll, put, I'll put one, two, and four in, start the game this time around. 
And here we go. So player one, player two, player three, player four. Uh oh, well, let me do player three. Oh, I have it reversed? No. Oh. Interesting. Oh, player one, player two, player three, player four. Oh, I do, I, I do have a bug introduced here. So I'll have to fix that. All right, fair enough. So whatever I changed, I'm not allowed to look at the cards for player three is, and, unless I press spacebar. That's not good. And I know it has to do something with the fact that uh, I'm trying to be nice so that player one, two, three, four. So if I'm playing on an Xbox controller or an Xbox 360 controller, uh, whatever whatever player tells me I am, I'm set it up to that. However, I wanted I was originally going to set it up so this is player one, player two, player three, player four in clockwise order. So I know at least I know with all the things I've been doing that that's where that problem is. And so I press spacebar and again I can move. Player two is the active player, so that's the only that's the only one. Oh, and player one. Oh, yeah. So something's going on here. I'm going to have to fix that up. But otherwise, we're ready to go. I mean, I'll fix it up. I'll tell you what I did differently, and then we will for sure be ready to, to, to go into the next state and actually start playing some cards. All right, I have it all figured out. So what I did was, uh, first thing I did, I, I, I said, hey, I called up my designer, and I said, hey, designer, what's going on? And he's like, I'm doing all right. How you doing? This is exactly how it went down. And I'm like, hey, you know what year it is? And he's like, yeah, it's 2022. And he's like, yeah. It's 2022. Who's using an Xbox 360 controller in the year 2022? And the guy goes, I don't know, you? And I said, yeah, but who else? No one. So what I did so after that, we said, yeah, we agree. We made it so that it's going to go in clockwise order, and that just makes it easier on me to do. Um, stupid story there. So I changed things up in here. So it's player one, player two, player three, player four in order now, as it, you know, clockwise order. And I, so I modified the XY positionings of those two objects. And I also did that in the player card hand when it came to drawing out uh, where to put these things on the screen for the active player. And when I do that, everything now turns out fine. And so be it. And I was also noticing, and it was one of those things, once you notice one thing, the, the house of cards starts to fall down. That may, and maybe you noticed, and you're like, wait, hey, Brad, what are you thinking about this? That I, when I would play player one, two, and four, it would actually give, the, it would actually put player four into the player three spot, which was not what I was intending, of course. So by trying to switch player three and player four, I just caused all of these kind of problems. And so now player four actually, player four actually goes into the player four spot, and player three would actually go into the player three spot if I had player three going. So let's see, I got a one and three shot of player four getting the getting the main one here. Nope. Player one's gonna get the, the go ahead here. And there we go. And then but again, player one is the only player that can modify until they hit uh I'm I think I think I'm gonna use up arrow. You can use whatever key you want, of course, uh or enter or something like that. I think I think it makes it, it makes sense to use spacebar, number keys, and then if I need to yeah, number four come, that now comes up, number four is proper, number two is proper, number one is proper, and spacebar works. So I think, it's, I think it's okay to go ahead and do things the way I was intending here. All right, so now we are finally ready to play the next round of this. Find the card I want to play, hit up, and, or up or enter or whatever, and then this card will go into a pile of cards. I think I'm just going to place the cards in the middle here. Uh, again... The, I'm just going to do whatever's easiest just to kind of get the to get the flow of the game going, and then of course the graphical part of this and cleaning up everything come would come later. But that's that's where we are. Let's do it. Let's make it happen. Okay, so now I am in the game full round state, and by full round I mean every player, if there's a three player game or a four player game, gets to go ahead and play one card to the center. So we're going to, you know, this, these are the variables that were part of, that are part of this object when it goes from this state, this object, into the, you know, the deal card state, into the full round state. These four variables all come along, oh, and players, I definitely need, 
I'm only doing this so I can remember what I've got going for me here. So I just remember, you know, so I know what what's going on. I'm probably going to comment all this out, or at least get rid of the things I don't need and keep the ones I don't. Just so, again, just so I have a recollection of what's happening, and don't care about any alarms, don't care about index, I don't care about player deal. Um, anything else I care? I definitely care about active player, right? So. But otherwise, let's see, I do not care about index or player deal. I need to know the cards, but actually, I don't really need to know the cards because they've already been dealt out. And again, what I'm doing here does not officially match up with what I would do if I was doing this in a full set, like in a, if I was doing this for gaming or for like for like a casino or something like that where I'm dealing out cards, like because I've given up the control of the deck of cards to all of the player objects and and again, there's a there's a whole bunch of stuff to worry about, but I'm not necessarily worried about that. So I'm gonna but what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to say DS list, I think it's clear, right? Clear. And then I'm gonna say all cards. And I'm gonna start over and say we're starting fresh. We know who the active player is. So let me get get rid of that. We know who the active player is. It's you know, it's either zero, one, two, or three. And then from that we can know which placard we need to grab the cards from because we know which we know what number is the active player from 0 to 3 and we can go ahead and go into those arrays so with that said then what we can do is put a step event in here let's so let's try this out for the the first player because we know that we know that when the game just starts up and i in the first player goes that there really is a player we and if we if we have a three player game after we make the first decision we don't know if there's a player in the next spot so that's a that's a condition that we'll have to meet up with in a couple minutes. But let's just say in a step event, if if what right? So there's a lot going on here. So um, well, we have to deal with the controller aspect of this, and we also have that game data dot inputs. That's how we know what we've been using, and it's the inputs is an array. Of just remember it's of controller types or yeah controller types or no one for if the player isn't even playing but again let's just get this working for the keyboard then we can get it working for something and get it for something else so we have the active player we have all this we have all that let again let's just say let's just per, let's just presume it's a keyboard for the moment here and just say if keyboard check pressed and I'm going to use the up arrow key. You can use enter, you can use whatever you want. I just want to keep it cons you know, I just want to keep it nice and easy so you're not moving your hand all over the place. So you can use your left hand for the space bar and the 1 2 3 4 and then you can use your right hand for anything else. So you don't have to be like how do I get to enter and, and take your hands off things like that. So that's just where I'm coming from. And so if I press up arrow then what I want to do is figure out which one the active player is. And then figure out what index that is. So this, there's a couple things to go that that are going on here, right? So let's see, var card equals uh, game data. Let's see, uh, uh, I'm in here, so I can say players active player. Dot, and then I can say, and now I have to go into because I'm going into this placard. And I'm saying, okay, you have you have an array called cards, but you and you also have an array, you also have a variable called uh, index. That's the card index. Maybe I would rename that, but at this point, I need cards and I need index. Uh, dot cards, and then I could say, uh, uh, well, let's just here. Let's just say, okay, hold on. Let's just say. Card index equals this guy dot index so I say okay okay go into the get, go into the active player get its card value get that card index and then get me that value from it okay so that's that and then what I can do after all that is I can add to the vector my on my end remember i'm calling it uh all cards 
all cards dot uh, oh, not all cards dot what am I doing here DS list add all cards comma uh, all cards comma the value which is the card and again I'm not until I try this out I'm not 100% sure this is gonna this isn't gonna crash somehow but just gonna be a syntax thing for the most part so I'm gonna add a card to my list on my end and then I'm going to go ahead here in DS list remove or destroy or delete delete I need players active player dot cards and I'm gonna remove that index those four steps and again I'm not gonna worry about anything else just now then there's enough going on in these four lines of code but the, the goal is to move, basically move one of the cards from the placard back into the game round state because, because that's the card that the player wanted to play. And then that'll eliminate the card from the placard and move it back over into the controller. So in a draw event here, I'm just going to just quickly draw, the, draw this up and just say for uh, var i is equal to zero i is less than ds list size all cards plus plus i i'm going to draw set draw text at um what am i going to pick what's uh what it was my room 960 for the oh, 960 for the or 540 for the height and i'm going to choose um just say 100 540 and then i'm going to say what's my string oh yeah sorry 100 plus 50 times i so every if there's more than one card which there will be eventually because i just want to get it working before we worry about the graphical side of things and then what am i going to print here i am going to print all all cards at the i index i don't know again why i need to do this but i need to do this to make this work in game maker for the ds list and let's all these moving parts i don't know what's going to happen cross your fingers make it work Oh yeah, then I'll have to change the active player and things like that. But we'll see. Okay, four player game. Let's play. Deal the cards. Getting closer. Excited about this once we get it going. Then we have a game. Okay, and okay, player one has the four. And I'm gonna move around and say, okay, I have the eight. I'm going to use this so green 8 this is going to be uh, 8 28 that's going to be going to be sent I hit up arrow key ah, I crashed okay and so that sucks but yeah whatever oh, I, am I allowed to move this size of this box no so what is this card players index dot cards card index trying to index a variable which is not an array okay so let's take a look at that uh, let me, I'll move this over so I can view it while I while I find the code here this is line six, line six of the event of the step state. Okay, this guy right here. Players, active player dot cards. And let's see. Okay, so it's in here. Players, active player. It is called cards. So what's the deal? And then, hmm, let's see. Dot index. I have to take a look at this because at least at first glance, I know that of course it's wrong, but at first glance, <coughs> without without having to focus 100% of my efforts on thinking and having to do other things, nothing seems crazy at the moment. So I say, okay, players, players is this guy, is from from here, players exist. And then I say, okay, player. Then it would have been player zero. Here, I know what I can do. I can put a breakpoint in here and run it in debug mode. Let's see if that helps us at all. Don't mind me. I'm just running it off on the other screen. I, I'm more focused on getting this going. And the same thing's going to happen. I'm going to play all four players. Hit start game. Then I'm going to deal out the cards to the four players. Okay, and then getting closer. I got to speed. I got to speed a lot of this up, right? But this is good testing, right? Okay, player four is my main player, and I'm going to put. I'm going to put. Uh, 
Uh, let's see, 6, 16, 20, 36 is going to be the number. I press up arrow. Okay, hit the break point. Card index is 7. So apparently, let me see. Let, oops, I can't. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. Yep, it's card 7 in my index, z starting from 0. I'm just I'm looking on the screen here. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. The seventh card is the one that I want to get. And now cards, this is, this is what's interesting to me here. I can say player, which is an array. I can say active player, which is three, because there's four players in this thing, dot cards. And it's saying it can't, it's unable to evaluate that. And now I'm going to have to look into that, because that's very confusing to me, because we've pretty much established that this thing has a, a DS list called cards. So I'm, I'm not 100% certain what's happening. And of course, if I hit... F10 to go again, it's going to crash with exactly that reason. So I'm going to have to do a little research, and I'll get back to you here, and I'll tell you what the heck I'm doing wrong. Maybe you already know, but I don't, so I'll let you know in a minute. I'm pretty sure I know what it was. Since I was saying these are DS lists, and that's the fun part of this. I was, I'm was i using arrays for some of this. I'm using DS lists for others. I'm pretty sure that I have to do that. Because if I'm accessing a DS list I and I use the square brackets, I have to add the the pipe to this. So I don't even think I need to, uh, I didn't even think I need to just do this. I just figured I would show you just kind of in almost real time. My cat. Come on, get. Let's go. Here's my game. Let's start. Silly. Silly game here. Okay, so let's see. There's my four players. What do we got? Four players. Come on, let's go. All right, there's our goals, there's our player, player four, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I'm going to take this card, 41, and I'm going to try to put it into the list. I'm going to press up. Hey, all right. And you can see the 41 made it. Maybe it's, maybe it's not so easy to see, but the 41's right there. So it made it, and this card's gone. The 41's gone. It's out of the list. And so the next thing to do is now move the player over to the next player and do this four times over. And so what do I do here is, next thing I do when I press up, and again, I, I, now, I have to make sure I do this, I can do this for the controller and for the next thing here, is, and um, so I can say here, while, or just, just say, um, while plus plus player, I'm sorry, active player, so plus plus, my, oh, maybe I should do the, do this, why, you know, just write a couple lines of code to make it work here. Active player equals active player plus one plus one mod four. Because there could be, there's four players, and it could be the fourth player, and I want to be able to go around four times over. And, um, well, another thing I want to be able to do here is just to say if ds list size of my uh, of my all cards. After all of this, if it's less than four, then I want to do this. And I'll I'll, fi I'll finish that up in a minute here. And if it is four cards, then I want to set up the next. I want to be able to instance change into the next thing, and which is going to be game. Uh, Resolve cards state. And I don't, here, I can I'll borrow this. I will go ahead and create a new object that parents to my base class. I'll call it, oops, call it what I want. Oops, that's, I don't need a sprite. I want parenting. Parent it to gameplay object called base class. I wish they would make, fix this up so you could read the whole darn thing. I'll have to mouse over. All that does is cause issues when, it, when you're trying to do things right. And so I'm not going to deal with this. It's parented. Everybody's happy. But I don't really care right now. It's just there so that I have something to change into. Okay, good. Everybody's happy. And so what I can do here is just say while um, game data dot, uh, what did I call it here? Dot inputs active player. 
um, does while it while it does equal no one, then I'm just going to do the same thing again. Just keep on going, and it, theoretically I should only do it one time maximum. Uh oh, what's, what's it not happy with? Oh, I use this. I need a square bracket here instead of a parenthesis. That should does that fix it all? Yes. Like it. So then now and then it should go to the next player. And again, I'm just going to do everything keyboard here for the moment. All right. So this again. Four player game just to make sure. Oh, shoot. I'm going to have to. Okay. Yeah. For right now, it work. It'll work for a four player game. I'll have to resolve a three player game as well here in a minute. I'll just have to have to do that while I'm thinking about it. All right, here we go. Okay, so player three has that has the four card. So I'm going to see. Okay, I'm going to try to put the one in there, and I did. Oh, look at that! It moved over to player four. So now, what do I want to do? How about that? How about that? Thirty-two. Done. Cool. How about I move over and now I go? How about twenty-five? Done. And now, about how about you? Forty-two. Done. And now the reason it doesn't print anymore is because it everybody's happy, everybody's done. And now we gotta oh, oh, I guess when we're done here, we gotta say no more active players because you shouldn't this player shouldn't be able to do anything anymore because we are now in the game resolve card state, because that was the thing we did. We said, hey, if there's four players, then change into that state. So it worked. It freaking worked. That's awesome. Okay, so active player is gonna equal to no one then. But otherwise, at least for this, it's it's pretty much working. Uh, let me steal this guy. Let me borrow this real quick here. How many players are there? I'll say, I'll say total players. Equals zero. And I'll have to do this for a for loop again. For var i equals zero. i is less than four plus plus i. If... Game data dot inputs of i does not equal no one, then uh, plus plus total players. And then I can borrow this guy here, presuming I did everything right. I can change that four into that. So if it's a three player game, oh, I gotta. Nope, it'll always be mod four here, but the total number of players, because there's they'll, 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 there will always be four placards, but there might not always be four players. So I just have to make sure that if it's a three-player game, that it takes into account that. Let's try it. And then this 25 or 30 minute video is complete. Hope it's 25 or 30 minutes. Not trying to be too long with these videos this time around. Uh oh, did something break? Oops, something's broken up here. Uh, for some reason, Lately, I've been needing to put the curly braces in. See, it, it now works. Crazy how it just can't handle. For some reason, it can't handle. I don't. But I, I always recommend using curly braces. But a lot of times, especially when you're just trying to get something working, the curly braces just get in the way. But I definitely do fix things up later on when I have when I have it all working. Then I make it a little more professional before I before I ship it basically. Right, get it working first before you worry about making it look pretty. Okay, so here we go. Here's my four players. Up oh, here, yeah. We'll try the four-player version now, and then we'll try the three-player version, and then we're done for the day. So there's everybody. Player four. Okay, so I want to play card four to the hand. Like up there it goes. There's my four. So now how about 21? 21 goes, oh, I'm sorry, 31. Oh, because there's no, I don't, that, that player doesn't have any blue cards. So this is 11, this is 21, this is 31. Yeah, this, that would have been 31. So this will be, uh, let's see, 17. There it is. And then, yep, it still needs player four. And this is player, uh, this will be 22. And once I hit up, it'll go away, but you won't see that anymore 
and now there's you know now I can't move anything I can still see the cards but I can't modify anything because now we're going to be resolving because again we have that deck of cards we have the the, or the the DS list of four card numbers and now we're in the resolve card state so perfect so let's try this out with three players and then uh, and then essentially we're done for the day Like I told you, this we're getting places here. It's a pretty, I mean, all things considered, pretty simple card game. Okay, so one, three, and four. Oh yeah, I still have to. Oh shoot, yeah, we're not done for the day. That's this works for keyboard stuff. Now I got to get it working for uh, controller stuff, which shouldn't be too big a deal. All right, so here is player one, player three, player four. Everybody's happy. There we go. There's my player. Player four has the card. They're gonna play the nineteen. The, this guy here is, oh my god, he's got a lot. It seems like he has so many cards. He's going to play 38. And then this guy's going to play 43. And then, yep, because it's three players and we've gone around, that there's nothing left to do. All three players have put a card. This one doesn't count because he's just already kind of done his job. And it's all good to go. And there's nothing more I can do on this end. I can't play any more cards because the state will not allow it because there's no code in that current state. Awesome. Okay, so what we so again, what we have going here in this step event here, this is perfect for the keyboard. So let's see. So let's see, let's see, let's see. So the first thing we have to do is make sure to do any of this work. I want to do this for sure. It doesn't matter if I'm in a keyboard or if I'm in a whatever here. Oh boy, okay. Um, but what I want to make sure... Here, let's see, hold on. Maybe I don't need this. I don't probably, I probably don't need all that code inside of that if statement. I can probably, because if I press the up arrow key, I want to do some work. And then I want to check to see what's gone down. And then, um, oh no, not necessarily here. <laughs> because uh, I don't want to change the active play. Oh my god, this thing would cycle through so fast. So let's see. So yeah, so I want to be able to do this part. Okay, so let me, uh, let me put it back. And I will, again, this is just part of it. Just get it working and then you can refactor to your heart's content. All right, that's just generally how things go here. So what I want to do now is say if... Uh, active or uh, game data. I gotta steal the game data thing again here. Whoop, here we go. Say okay. If game data dot inputs dot active player is equal to keyboard, then do all this cool stuff. Oops, I need double quotes. Bring this down. And then switch everything up and move everything over one. Oops. Whoa. Yep, there we go. I don't know what the heck happened there. So now this says, okay, if if it's a keyboard, then I can do this. Because if I press the up key and it's not a keyboard, the active player is not a keyboard, then what the heck am I doing? Okay, so now and again this is a lot of this is just a lot of copied code. Else if controller. Oh, I have to call this keyboard and mouse. I remember that now. And I have to call this controller. So now instead of this, I can say, oh, okay. I have to say if gamepad check button. Okay, um, check button. Why isn't it helping me out? Hello? I don't know. Check, okay, check, check button, check. Oh, I, I, oh, it was. I had it. I had the the wrong order there. Okay, so I want device. I want, uh, what is this thing? Active player. And then I want to say which button. Um, let's see. That would be, uh, I guess face one. GP face one. And I think. I wanted, to, and again, obviously we can fix this up. There's a lot of extra stuff going on here. 
But at the moment, but at the um, at the moment, this should work for both controllers and for. Let me put on. Let me set up two controllers here. Gaming is the wild west of programming. Let's see, four player game. Oh, shoot. Wasting everybody's. Oh my god, this is 14 minutes already? We're almost there, promise you guys. And most of you, I hope, are walk watching at a one and a quarter speed or one and a half anyway. So I sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks or something like that. I know I watch videos at that same kind of speed. Okay, four player game. Here we go. Can't press one, can't press two, but I can press three, but I can press four. Controllers, I can press this, I can press that. Okay, let's see. Player one. And pl again, player one and player two are controllers, so they, they get full access at any time to do what they want to do. But when it's the keyboard, since key the keyboard players are three and four, and they're not active, they don't get to... They can, we can do the stuff with three and four on the keyboard, but they don't get to move around their uh, their thing until they're the active player. So let's see. I want to move, put eight into the pot here, and I go boop. Nope. GP face one is not working right. So I'm not. Something is not. Oops. So it's going off the wrong controller, and I'll fix that up, and I'll get back to you. I won't waste anybody's more time since we've been going forever on this, and I'll let you know what I did wrong, and then uh, we'll call it a day on this video. Was there actually something wrong now that I'm I was tinkering? I mean, it seems to be working. So what did was I even doing anything wrong? Did I talk myself into a problem that didn't exist? Because here I go. I've got player one, player two are are on controllers. Player three is keyboard, and I can press spacebar. I can move around. So let me put a let me put a twenty six into the mix here, and say this. And twenty six is the number. This is just what, who is the active player. And so player three is now the active player. And I can go ahead and say, okay, let's put a five in there. Okay. And so now player one, I can't move around. I can't press up arrow key. I can't move around the player, any of the players, but I can use the controller to move around. And I can say, how about, uh, how about I put a 27 in there? And I'm on player one here for sure. I know I'm on player one because I can, I can move around. So I say, okay, how about I'll do 23 here. I'll put that into the mix here, 23. And so it worked. And I, I don't, again, I don't know what was happening, but I might have just been just talking myself into the crazies again. And so now this is uh, 10, 20, 30. I'll do 30. I'll add 34 to the mix here. And we've called it here. And everybody's happy. Oops. And, uh, and I can still move this around, even though it's showing me the next... Uh, it's going to be showing me what's going on on the screen here in a minute. Maybe I should disable that, or maybe I won't. We'll see. We'll see as we go. So I think we're good to go. And if not, then I'll fix it up in a future video. You can always comment below to make sure if I did do something wrong or if I'm if I talked myself into something I didn't think I talked myself into, that everything will work out. So uh, that covers this. We're almost done. Now we just have to resolve the four cards. And if it's you know basically. Um, if it's a if it's good, put remove one of the goal cards from whoever won the hand. Like in this case, if the if the four gets won by a play this player, then the goal card can go away because he has no more goals to worry. Literal goal card. He has nothing to worry about anymore. He has he can that player he or she can focus on the other players getting their goal cards, and then so the, but so this will go away. At, but if the f blue four goes to anybody else. Maybe you know, probably on accident or just because of the way the the game goes, then the game has to be lost immediately because once that four goes to somebody else, it can never get back to you because those cards never get replayed. So the the resolve state will put us into two. To, basically, the resolve state will either take us and say, "Okay, go back to go back and do the full round again," because we everybody's happy resolve it and go back to the new round or go to the end game state or what happens if the game goes to everybody's goal cards are eliminated and now you're left with oh hey we have to we have to generate the fifth and final goal card uh, which only will be generated when everybody's established their goal cards and, and it's you know basically down to zero and establish that as the basically the the winning game condition one 
or basically the next state, bef the, the state before the final one, the, the win condition, the, com the complete win condition. So was, okay guys, uh, I've been talking enough, blabbing enough. So thanks for sticking it out. Thanks for having a good day here with me. I hope you did. And I'll see you in the next video. Hello everyone, Bradley Sword here. Today is part 10 of our continuing series, Making Columbus, our trick-taking card game. We are getting close to the end, believe it or not. And we're using Game Maker Studio version 2.3.7 for this video. Let me show you where we're at and what I've updated for this video, and then I will describe it all. And of course, you can always pull down the uh, YYZ file and play with it for yourself. So I have four player game going, two controllers, two keyboard mice, people. I'm playing the game. I'm going to deal the cards. And now we can actually start playing the game. Do that in a second here. All right, who's going to get. Player two is going to get to go first because they have the, the black four card. And so there are the gold cards. And now, isn't this going to be cool? Look at this. His turn to go. He needs to, he needs to get the green six somehow. Oh, boy. I mean the red six. <laughs> and he needs, they need to get the, oh boy, the, the, the yellow one. They need yeah, the green eight. So let's get, see, how can we get them the green eight? We can get this person the green eight by doing something like this. Oops, I got to. I gotta use. Oh, I gotta use the controller. Hold on, is I gonna do? No, I don't. Wait, whose turn is it? Oh, never mind. This player's turn. Player two. Okay. Um, let's see. We want to get them the green eight. Let's put that card into there. The, the green two. Now, it's getting difficult playing for four people at once. Space bar. Okay. I'll just take the four and throw that in there. And then I'm going to take this player over here, and I'm gonna say, oh, how about that eight? And then I'm gonna have to trump this over here. Up. Oh, this is using the controller again. We're gonna to have to use. Oops, I use the two. I want the two, and so the card that card will win because that's the winner, and that goes over there. And he got the goal card, so the card goes away, and he no longer has to worry about the goal, uh, the goal card because he's accomplished his goal. And so everybody else can continue to play now, and because he won the this player won won the trick, they get to go in the next round. And I'm used to doing this all by keyboard, so I'm just. But you can say, okay, I want to get that green six over to this, or the red six over to that guy. So I'm going to put here, here's red six. Your turn, player two. The only way to get that, the only way to do this is to play this card. And then it doesn't matter what anybody else plays for this stuff. So I'll just, it doesn't really matter anymore. Uh, let's see, I just want to just use blue and then use blue. They won the card and then they, their goal card goes away. Now they get to go and it's their turn because they won the trick. And this is just going to play around. And so, like, if I just pit, randomly pick four cards, oops, forget, forget to go, and I go up, up, and go, that this the player two is going to win. Player two is going to win, but they don't win anything per se. They win the trick, and they get to go again next round. But they, but we haven't furthered the goal in any shape or form here. So let's see if I'm going to try. Oh boy, I don't think we can get the. I, let's see, how can we get this? How can we get this to this player? They need to win a trick and have the one be part of it, right? So let's see. Ooh, and they don't have, right now they don't have a card. So they need to win. This player needs to win. Again, this is hard here. Uh, okay, we need to have a green card to start. And then player three can go, okay, I want to put the seven in there. They need to win something. Um, okay. Oops, I'm going to win. So they won the trick, they get to go first, so they get to pick and say, oh, I'll use a green, I'll use a red card here, or, pff, yellow, what, it's like those puzzles where like the word is red, but the it's written in yellow and you just get all confused. Um, okay, so we got to get them the one, and we get them the one like, like so, and then uh, player two can use any card, and then they get that, then they get their goal card, and now we gotta get the, the red four. Oh no, I, we blew off the red four at some point, so the game should have told me, which I have not implemented yet, that will be for the next time, that they, the, this card, the game should have been over a long time ago, and maybe you saw it while I was doing things, I was so focused on everything else, that we can't win the game because we can't, the red, wherever the red four went to, it did not go to player four. And so there's no way to win the game in, in and so there's it should tell you immediately that things are things have gone south and there's no way to win. So that's where I'm at right now. So we have a pretty pretty good working game. We have, and again, another thing that doesn't happen is I don't have anything that determines I don't th have anything that determines when the 
uh, when we've when we're out of players. So let's just let's just take a look at what this is all about for this video, and then uh, we'll move on to do you know those kind of things in the future video. And let's see, I, I figure we probably got about two two to three more parts left. Uh, we got to add the win game condition, the add the lose game conditions, and then maybe some sound effects. I know I need to add some buttons to this game so that uh, basically because right now there's no way to quit back to the main menu. Uh, and there's no way to basically show anybody what the controls are because right now we kind of taken it for granted that we know what the controls are but um, yeah nobody needs that right even on a controller people want to know what what they're able to do and what they're not and um, and we're gonna make it easy for them so that's what we're that's where we're going that's the roadmap for completion of this game so let's again take a look at what's going on okay so what have I changed here? One thing I neglected in that long 45 minute video in the previous part is the actual printing of the cards out to the screen, like on the screen. Because right at, when I finished the video, they were just numbers that we put on the, on the screen. And that's great and all, but we need a graphical representation of, those, of that array of data. And that's what I went ahead and did here. So that uh, basically I pick how many players are there and I want to make sure it's centered horizontally, so I just make sure if it's a three-player game, it's centered a little differently than if it's a four-player game. And I just went ahead and said, hey guys, use this formula. Uh, the x value is uh, 220 times the index value plus xx, which is one of these two numbers, and then the, the, the height is always going to be 400 to center that thing vertically, and just print out all the cards that are currently in the deck. And that's the, I think that's the only thing I added to the full round state. Yeah, this is, again, we could really resolve this down. There's a lot of duplicated code here. The only real difference is, uh, if I remember right, is basically how do we get this, this this if statement right here is different depending on if we're using keyboard mouse or if we're using the controller state. But everything else is taken care of. And so the, the, the only thing left was a graphical change. So everything else was placed into the resolve card state. And I don't think that I did anything, I don't think I did anything here. Maybe I modified numbers around a little bit just to kind of tinker. But again, I don't think I really did too much. Most of the work here today uh, was in this resolve card state. So I have two separate states for this, uh, so like a sub-state. And I didn't want to break it into, I didn't want to break it into several sub-states here because it just, that would just make it a little too complicated. So in the resolve card state, the first part of this is a almost one second delay. After the last player plays their card, there's a five sixths of a second delay. Let me go, I don't, I, I don't know how to unable to disable that once I've enabled it when you're like, oh, show me the whole thing. I don't, I don't wanna know. So, okay, so uh, when I create, oops, that's not it. What the heck is this? Okay, so I set my alarm and then, I, and then we'll talk about the draw here in a minute. And then when the alarm hits, it goes from, when the alarm goes off, it goes from that delay state to the move to winner state. Where if you noticed, all the cards go in the direction of where the player, which player won the hand, or the round, all the cards go, basically go to them. And then we do that in a little over one second, one and a third seconds. It takes for the cards to go to the middle, to where, the, you know, basically just to somewhere where they look like they're going to the player that won. And basically this is the starting index. And then when you hit that other, the next alarm, then you basically say, okay, cool. The, the active player is the one that basically won the, the, won the last round. And, uh, and since this, and uh, there's a script involved here, which uh, I'm gonna show you guys as well, that tells me which card, which of the four cards that went in, in, you know, that went into the hand is the winner by index. And then you add that to starting player mod by four, and then basically look to see if the goal has been reached by that player. And if so, eliminate the card from their hand, and then go back to the full round state. And again, this is right, right here, there's gonna be a lot of work in here. Because did I, if I got to here, did I win the game? Or if I fall out of here, did I lose the game? So there's a lot going on in this, this little bit of code here that we're gonna have to update in the future. But that's the whole thought process, delay, then move the cards, then update the goal card, and then go back to say, let's do it again. That's, that's the basic idea. So let's see, so I have a create, here's this again, alarm zero. And so we're just determining which winner it was, like which player was the winner. 
and then we're going to say, oh, this is the direction I want you to go. Player one goes to the upper left, or player one, quote unquote, player zero, the, you know, the first player goes to the upper left, the second player goes upper right, third player goes lower right, fourth player goes lower left. And that's basically where is, where do I want these cards to end up at the end of the day? And that's what I'm storing here, final XX, final YY, so that now in the draw state, you can see that um, I need to know how many players there are again, because in the, in the non-move to win state, I need to be able to print the cards out on the screen uh, exactly where they were in the, the full round state, because they're still on the screen exactly where they were in the previous state. It's only when I'm doing the move to winner state that I want to go ahead and modify everything. And forgive me, because this is all just a little bit hacked here, because I could fix this up a little bit, but I'm not gonna, because it works, and just just kind of spread that negative sign through everything. But um, but essentially here, if the state is the move to winner state, this formula tells me on a frame by frame basis where that X and Y value should be to print everything out. And basically, so basically shift everything over a little bit according to where I am on that chart. Am I 100%? toward the corner, or am I 0% toward the corner? You know, basically, am I 100% to where it needs to go, or am I 100% into the center of the screen? So that's the idea here. And so I always want to print the stuff to the screen, it's just a matter of where. And that's why this, this stuff here prints, it doesn't mean, you know, that's not part of any if statement, it's not part of anything else. Basically, if the state is the move to winner state, we modify where the x and y values are. Otherwise, we, let, we leave them exactly like they were in the full round state. Okay, so then how do we know who is the winner? That's, that's a big question, right? That's, we look at four numbers cards and we go, a human could look at that and go, oh, this card is a winner, or that's, that card's a winner. But how do we do that here? And so let me see here. I don't, let me see, did I, do I use, yeah, I, I use two separate functions to make this work. So here, let me, can I make this any better? Kind of, oh, not really. Let me see, F7 is it? There we go, F7 a few times. So, okay, so the idea here is I need to know, like in this case, if I have two cards, an A and a B, A is gonna be like the zero case and B is gonna be the one case. I'm thinking from an index standpoint. The left card is a zero, the right card is a one. I'm testing left card versus right card. And as I'm testing this, because of the, the way the trump cards work, the first card is sets the suit for the entire round. So I want to make sure that, you know, it's it's very possible that someone plays like a red seven and someone plays a green eight, and you would think that the green eight would win, but if the red seven is the, the suit, then the red is going to win. So we, we have to account for that when we think things out. So we have to all, okay, so how do I do this? This is the black card test. If any either of the two cards is black, then I just say, was it left or was it right? And they both could be black cards. So we just have to make sure that the correct card gets called. And if it, this is greater than this, then return the left card. If a, if a is the larger number because one of the two is a 40, then return a zero. Otherwise, it has to be the one. And so this, this code presumes that you do not have any uh, tie cases. Because right now, every card is unique. So there's no need to worry, there should be at this point, no need to worry about two values coming in at the sa of the same number. And this should, then so far this has accounted for everything like we expected. And again, the left card is presumed to be the suit card. So if I fall through and I say, okay, there are no black cards, well, what do I do now? And now I check to see basically the color. That's what the div is supposed to be for. I don't remember again uh, what colors are what in what order, but the blue cards, are, yeah, here we go. The blue cards are zeros, like one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. The red cards are the ones, which is 10, 11, 12, and so forth. Green is in the 20s, and yellow is in the 30s. And I, of course, it won't send me back, okay? So basically, if, if, the color of the card is different, then I'm gonna return the zero. I'm gonna return the left-hand card because that's the card that's presumed to be the suit card. Um, so just, and I know like if you've never played like these kind of card games, and this is kind of about the first one surprisingly in my life that I've played, like it took a while to realize how simple the rules were for trump taking or you know, trick taking games. But at, at the same time, there are a few rules that could trip you up if you're not careful. So this is saying, okay, 
if if there's a red card and a green card, or just the co the colors of the cards are different, whichever card is the one on the left is the winner. That's just that's just an, it, it feels arbitrary, but it it won't be when we get down to this part here. And so if they're different colors, so this this is the black card test. This is the same color or different color test. And so this is the if they're different colors kick out. And the only thing that could be left if I get down to here is that they're both the same color card. And then basically I'm just going to return whichever one is the larger number. I guess I don't even need the mod. But uh, but again, it's it's written, and I don't feel like testing it. it. I tested it with the mod in, and but I don't. If they're the same, if they're the same color, then it shouldn't matter if I mod. The values should be exactly the same, because this yeah this will fall through. But I'm not going to change it. So I could simplify this. So that gets me through everything. Was there a black card? Are they the same color card? Are they the and are they the same color card? So then for so I need this for testing two cards, but then I use it for testing all the cards in the deck. Because there's no reason to test all of them together. I can just test card zero versus card one. And I can go, which what is the winner? What is the leading card? And then pick the winner of that and then go, hey, let's test that against card two. And then let's test the winner of that against card three. And just kind of go through the entire list. And that's what that's all this is saying here. Is saying that, okay, cool. Go through all the cards. The, the, at the current moment, the best card is the first card. And try all the other cards and just say, hey, if this thing comes back with a 1, set the index to whatever card that is. And just keep going through. Keep finding the winning card. And when I get through, when I go through the whole list of cards, whatever index is the, you know, is, comes back is, is the 1 when I fall through the loop, is the card that holds the winning card of the, four, the 3 or 4 cards that are being tested. So all of this together, I'm oh, I'm gonna I'm gonna go wild here. I'm gonna test this out. Return if A is greater than B. Return I'm gonna. I'm, of course, how can I not push? How can I not uh, change my code? Right. So. So that's the idea here, and of of finding of the four cards the winning card. And where do I resolve that? I resolve that here, in the draw event because I need to know who the active player is. Draw? No, it's an alarm. It says draw, but it's an alarm. Isn't that great? Oh, I love I love game maker sometimes. So <laughs> there's the alarm. So I need it. Uh, let's see. I don't need it in the draw. I don't. I need it in in player. I need it when I when I switch over from state uh, idle to state move to winner. Excuse me, I'm just sneeze. <laughs> Sorry about that. And so when I do that, I need to know, okay, which player am I going to move stuff to? But then I also need to know for the next round, when I, tell, when I tell you which index, I can add that to the starting player from the previous round, and I can know who the active player is going to be moving forward. So all of that together, and let's, let's run this one more time. All of this together gets you where you need to go. This is about a 20 minute, 20 minute video. Half the time when I don't write the code while I'm talking and thinking and uh, pretending like I'm a horrible, horrible vaudeville. Uh, so coming again here. Got all that. All of this from before. Deal the cards. I can see all the cards. I can't press 1 and 2. I can press 3 and 4. And let's see again what we've got going here. Look at all this cool stuff here. We got to get cards to everybody. Okay, we got to get you a, a, a red three. Oh, that's going to be tricky. So let's see if I can if I can get this player this here. I can put this card. And it, let's see, anybody blue? No, blues won't matter. Oops, uh, blues won't matter. And but I do need to get the oh son of a gun. Anyway, I'm not playing this game four player while I'm thinking and talking. And so, but you get the point here. Let me just finish off. Okay, it's your turn. We still got to get you the, the red or the yellow three. So let, the only way to do that is to play that card and then to play this card and then to play that card. He, need, he needs to get that card over. Or they need to get that card over and then move that card over. So they got the goal. They got at least one part of it. So now the same thing goes for oh this there's no way to win the game because there's well actually I dare say that there 
um, get that. No, 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 no. Let's just try it out. Stop being pessimistic, Brad. I need to get that five over to player one. And the only way to do that is to continue to play it as is here. So, oh, it's not it's not player one's turn, it's player four's turn. Oh jeez. Uh, okay, so play a red card and uh, play this card. And then we'll try to get the five over to you. So do do. Okay, play the five, and then play whatever that is. That goes to you. Everybody's happy with that. Now we got to get the red nine. Did I blow it at this point? Nope, I haven't blown it yet. Uh, I haven't blown anything yet. Okay, so I want to make sure the blue. Play the blue somehow. Oh, it's it's still not their turn. Uh, maybe I, the way I'm seeing things, maybe I should not worry about having their cards up or their the little soccer balls unless it's the active player's turn no matter what because I seem to be in my play testing I seem to be doing dumb things here like thinking it's my turn when it's not and so forth and so on so I gotta get the red nine over to you so I gotta play I do have to play some red card to get it going uh, okay and then I can play any card I want over here theoretically right and then I can play the red nine Oh no, I don't think I can do it because we can't get the red nine to that player. There's, I think we've I don't I think we've reached the end here. Uh and I and again there probably is a way, but playing four players at once is not easy, right? Um so that's as far as I'm gonna go with this video. But it's working! Everything is working. And now and now we have to fill in the win and loss conditions for everything. Oh wait, no, maybe we can oh, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. Hold on. Okay, 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 okay. I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Really I can't. Okay, hold on here. Um, make sure, make sure I don't accidentally use a red card. Boom, and then they get the the nine. Oh, son of a gun! Not being able. This is ridiculous. Okay, anyway, I'm done. I'm not going to keep doing this and wasting your time. So, uh, next video is we're going to set up the winning conditions and the losing conditions. And then uh, we'll pretty much have a full game, and then we'll have to fix, again, fix up buttons for quit game, end game, uh, and then controls, and then put some sound in, and uh, we, we have a full game. Thanks for sticking it out with me as always. See you guys in a future video. Take care. Have a great day. Hello everyone, Bradley Sward here, and today this video is part 11 of our continuing series of the trick-taking game I'm calling Columbus, a basic card game that we've been working uh, with Game Maker Studio 2.3.7 and here is where we're at now. I've noticed some bugs creeping up into this thing and so I decided this is more, this is like a combination uh, bug fix video and also when it comes down to it I've added the winning condition. Just the winning condition. We'll do the, the losing condition uh, in a little bit here. So I'm going to set up a four player game. And in the process of doing this, I forgot one of the rules. And when I, I may, I'm, I'm making video five last, the description of the game, I should have done that first because I completely blanked on the fact that, like, when it's your turn, you unless you unless you play a wild card, one of the black cards, like if like in this case, if I want to play like this here, I want to get, uh, let's see, hold on, let's see, like this green card here, I want, or this yellow card here. Like, if I have a yellow card on player two, I have to play the yellow card. I don't get a choice. The game is way too easy if I can just choose any card I want. So in this case, I, if I have to play a yellow card or I have to play the, one, of the, one of the black wild cards here, the trump cards. And so I've completely blanked on that part. And so, <coughs> excuse me. And I've also, and so we'll have to fix that up in, in the next video too, or one of the, the final videos here as well, so that how do I know which cards I'm allowed to select? But for, it's been great for now for testing purposes, but I completely blanked on that. So let's see, I have to get the, let's see, what I have to get cards to people, and you can see players. And I also noticed with this that uh, like when I was playing a three player game, things weren't working right. So I've, I've just kind of tinkered around a little bit to make sure everybody's happy. Uh, let's see. I don't want to make sure I don't ruin anything for anybody here. Um, let's see if I can. Okay, let's just uh, let's just play some cards. Play some cards out. Make sure. Here we go. So that that's the winner card here. I got to get this guy the this person the the nine. Let's just go ahead and do that. But how do I do that? I you know just challenging. And, or we can get. Let's see. We can get. We can get the three to that person. 
Oh, no, maybe not. We get the nine to you. We'll get the nine over to you somehow. All right. So let's see. I can use green cards all the time, and I can use it too. And so that nine went to that person. Good. Um, can we get the black nine to you somehow? Yes. Or I'm sorry, the, the blue. blue nine. Maybe not. Ah, shoot. Anyway, so the game would be over at this point because there's that nine went away to this player, and there's no way to do this anymore. So we do need that losing condition. But you can see here for in the four-player mode, everybody's happy. Everything's kind of working. All the things are going to the right places. And if I want for the three-player game, uh, things were like cards were going to the wrong places, and all sorts of things were all messed up. So uh, a lot of bug fixes here. And I do have, again, I do have the winning condition, which I'll set up here in a couple minutes. So let's see, did I change anything to the player card hand? I do not believe so. I believe that is the way it's been. That lot, all a lot of code and one, <laughs> one whole comment. Like, it, <laughs> like nothing else needs a comment in there. But um, let's see, resolve card state. I did modify this quite a bit. Uh, because, yeah, so it makes sense too. So I have my delay, I have my move to winner, or full round as well. I changed my full round. Here's my step event. Let me see if I can make this a little bigger here. See this? And so this time around, what did I do? I, 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 was, I was noticing that I need to keep track of that negative one for, uh, for like the no player in a three player game because it was throwing off everything of where the cards were going, who was the next player, and so forth and so on. And so all I have set up here, and I could probably, I can't, no, I can't really do anything with this, is to say while I'm in the, the full round state, if, if I ever get to a place where all the, the list of the cards is four sized, then the active player is none, then I'm going to resolve the cards because I'm going to have four cards to resolve every single time. And I exit out. Otherwise, I go through and I kind of did it before and I finally kind of went around and cleaned things up a little bit. If I'm in the keyboard and mouse and I press that up arrow key, then I add a card to the list and I say, okay, what's the next next player? If it's the controller and I press that A button, I go to the next, I put a card in the list and I go to the next player. But now that else here says, basically, if there's no one, if there's no player, then just put a negative one into the list and go to the next active player. So it just, and again, it's only so, it, and, it, and I fixed it up so it won't draw a negative one, but that negative one is needed so that I can go, I can figure out who the next player will be, especially if that no, that no one is somewhere in the middle, like if it's like the second player or something like that, not everything gets thrown off. So, and the clean, and I cleaned up the code a little bit here, and I probably, and again, I could probably clean this up even more. I, I probably is definitely. But that is the full round state. Uh, and then here it is with the drawing. I just I modified this slightly so that I if that negative one pops up I don't draw it and I make sure with my XX I move everything over accordingly and I only move over if I hit a if I draw uh, a card and then I go oh negative one don't move but then the next card will be drawn and so forth and so on. Okay so that's how we handle the full round state. So now what did I do over here in resolve here? So let's see I have my delay. Uh, let's see, I have my delay, nothing really changed here, everything's kind of the same uh, when it comes to this. a lot of this stuff. Alarm 1, oh I did change this here, because I told you about the, the goal, like this little goal state thing here is going to be a big deal, and it is. So I'm saying, okay, set my active player, and then here is, this, is, this code here checks to see if there's a winning condition based off the fact if... Uh, if the, one of the players hits their goal, and it's you know, goal is a uh, figurative thing here, not a literal thing like the, is the game, the object of the game is to score a goal, and so in this case, if one of the if one of the one of the cards in the trick that is won by the player is the goal card, then yeah, we set that goal card back to negative one because they hit their goal. But now we check to see if all of the players have hit their goals. Because every player starts with one goal card, and if everybody has, then when I come out, I say, "Hey, why don't we go to that win state? Otherwise, go to the go to the full round state." And earlier, I was discussing maybe setting up a whole like a fifth card or you know one more card to come up that the players have to work together to solve. But then I, when I remembered the actual rules of the game, I said this game is tricky enough uh, for for what it is. 
and uh, for what we're trying to accomplish here. So I'm going to I'm going to neglect that from the design. And if you do play the real game out in the real world, the real card game, there are 50 different uh, setups for the game. This is just mainly, this is just one of them, one of many setups that you could play. And there's a whole sequel and all sorts of stuff. But that's a game, you know, that alumnus, you know, like the dot, 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 dot game. Okay, so, uh, so if the winning condition is true, then go to the win state. Otherwise, stick around and go back to the, f and try again. And I'm going to have to add the losing condition to this as well. But for right now, I do not have that in here. And for the draw event, uh, for this thing, for this resolve card state, uh, I kind of, I, I use the same code as I did from the full round state just to make sure the cards are drawn properly to the screen. Okay, so then now, coming around to the win state, what do I do? When I know I'm in the winning state, I set up a seven second timer. I say, yep, the active player is no one because there's no one to play anymore because the game is over, the game is won. And when, the, when that alarm zero hits, I'm going to set up one of my fade out objects. So that adds a little extra time to it because the fade out object just fades out and then we'll go, to the, we'll go back to the main menu. And when it does that, it destroys the game data object because that thing is persistent, but it's done its due diligence, it's, do, it's done its job. And I want to make sure it gets destroyed uh, prior to going back to the main menu because the main menu will create a whole new one and that's the one we're going to be working off of. And if I don't do that, I realize that I set up my, some bugs uh, also in the mean. So create, uh, draw. This is basically, this is the same code from other fade out objects I've been using in the past. And at this point, I would say if I'm going to make this a real game, I should, I should make this into a script or something because this is getting a little out of hand with, I don't need to have a different fade out object just to go to different rooms. Uh, but again, that is for a, another time, another video series, uh, but I have recognized that need. Okay, so let's see, I go back to my main menu room, and then in my win state, the draw, all I'm really doing here is just drawing, hey, uh, like a, white, a white, uh, white text on a black square that just says goal, and, for the, and right now that's all it says, and again, I will be adding sound effects in. Fine. So that, with all these little bug fixes, just you know, just and just testing the game, because I was, you know, all of a sudden it wasn't quite working for three players, and then this and that, and whatever. And I'm not saying it's perfect now by any means, but it seems to be it seems to be working uh, quite a bit better than it was prior. So let's let's see if I can do this this time and get the winning condition for uh, for a three player game with the with the with playing the cards the way you're not supposed to just yet okay so let's see i gotta get you the red one and we can do we'll do that right now all right we'll get you that card we'll get we gotta get the black nine over to you somehow i'll just put any card i'll give you rump the card then put the nine in here everything gets shifted over you're happy now we gotta get that guy the yellow one so i can do that very easily as well and now we're good. And then you can see, goal! There you go. And then seven seconds later, it fades out, and it will send me back to the main menu. There's my win condition. Where again, with the sound effects, it'll be, it'll, it, you know, it'll sound a little better. But we have our win condition. We have our way to get back to the main menu. And again, I can just start up any time I want now. And everybody's, you know, I can just start up a new round, and then play from there, and just play to our heart's content. So that will cover this video, and again, next video I will cover the losing condition. Uh, I will, and then I'll have to fix up uh, the cards again, so we figure out which cards are playable and which cards are not. Um, but uh, that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for sticking it out with me as always. Um, please uh, download the YYZ file if you're interested, and uh, have a great day. Or just a couple videos, a couple three videos away from being done with this game altogether. Maybe I'll try for 14 parts, so that's a two-week series here. One, one part a day for two weeks will get you to the end of this game. So thanks, everybody. Take care. See you next time. Hello, everyone. Bradley Sward here, and this today is part 12 of our series of Making Columbus, our trick-taking card game. We are almost done, uh, as you can tell, near the end of a project. The final 20% of a project is sometimes 80% of the work. And maybe it's not feeling like it, but it's starting to feel that way because it feels like I'm putting in a lot of work just to get a little return because we have to we have to 
you know, uh, prove up uh, and make sure everything is working properly and kind of get those last details in before we can kind of, you know, say it's the game is over we're done for the day here so or we're done for the week or the two week period here so this video is going to look at the losing condition and i'm going to show you up front i've got the first part of the losing condition done the easy one there's two ways that this game could end and let me just show you the first one the first one is if you use up all the cards and say let's just a caveat of course is the previous video shows you the winning condition and so this one's going to show you the losing condition and so first step here is if I basically exhaust all the cards and any player still has a goal card, then, then, the game is, then the game is over and you have lost. And just by complete accident, it looks like I'm winning. Some of these are winning. At least player four has had their goal card met accidentally. I'm just kind of going through and you can see here getting closer and closer and closer to the end here. And you can see, okay, one last card to go. One last card to go here, and full-time whistle, you lose. I'm going to have to fix that up, uh, add a little bit to this. But you can see that I have lost the game because all the cards are exhausted and I have not reached all of the gold cards for all of the players. So the, the code to do something like that is in the resolve code state. And so here is all the winning condition stuff from before, and right now here is the losing condition stuff. Right now it's not so hard, not so bad. And then I added this to the little if-else kind of thing here going on. So what this is basically checking is take a look at all the players, add up the cards in their hands, and if the number of cards total is less than four, then the, the losing condition has been met and we go to the loss state. That's it. There's really nothing, at least, you know, I said this is the easy condition. Uh, that we're going to have to deal with. So I'll check all that. And then the loss state is pretty much exactly the same as the win state. I just print something different. And um, maybe in the future I can change that up because this is you know a lot of duplicated code again between the loss state and the win state just to print out, hey, you lose, and that sort of thing. So let's see, if I move this, uh, let's see if I subtract off 20 from each, of so 20 here and add 10. Add 10, remove 10 and then remove 10. Eventually I'll, you know, say that just at this point it's just uh, trial and error to get the thing, this get it to look nice on the screen. Okay, so that is the first part. Now the second part is when a card is, when these things are resolved, if any of the cards that have been won go to a, go to a player that, uh, or basically, oh, how do you describe it? If because the player needs to get a goal card, and if one of those cards go to another player, it can never get back to the player it needs to get to. So, so right now you would be right now if that happens, you wouldn't know that the game is over, and you would just play all the way through. You would have a sinking suspicion after a while, like, wait a minute, where did that card go? But nothing would outright yell at you and go, hey, the game is supposed to be over right now. And so that's where we're going to be doing things right this in. Let me show you. Okay, so there's many ways to go about doing this, and I just kind of just hacked it out. I didn't really hack it out. I just I found a way to do this. And so uh, the second way of figuring out if you've lost to make sure if a card goes to a person who's who, who, basically whose it isn't the gold card of, then the game is over. So what I, what I did here was I basically made sure I set up a new list and I destroy it at the end when I'm done with it. But I take all the cards from all the players and I put them into that one list, which I called C. So basically it just says for every player, for every card, add it to this one list. And then just go ahead and say for every player, if that goal isn't in that list, then the card can't be won because the card uh, because because the goal would be a negative one if they if they didn't if the if the goal card had been won already and then the card was removed. <laughs> excuse me, goodness, was removed from their hand. So it would be a minus one. And so if it's not, and, and, and it's like, oh, the, the red nine, but that red nine isn't in the list of cards that the players have collectively, then of course, then the game is over. And so that that's the only thing I added to the second part here is just, you know, get all the cards, put them in a list, check to see if the cards are still available for every player, and if any one of them, and I could probably put in a break here if I really wanted to, and if any one of these players uh, you know, finds a way to not, to not be a winning condition, only, all it takes is one player to not have a winning condition 
uh, still available to them for the game to be over. So just to show you, because I already showed you guys the losing condition when you run out of cards. So here is the last condition here for that case. And I can show you here. Four player game. We're good to go here. Deal out some cards. Cards. Okay, here we go. Here's the player cards. And just to be sure here, let's see, I can play any green card. I just want to show you guys that, it, you know, like the green cards, it's not, it, just to make sure it doesn't do it all the time. It's only when a specific card is eliminated. All the green cards can go away. All right. And then now let's find that eight to say, okay, you're not going to win that eight over there. The eight's going to go to the wrong person because it's meant to go to player one, but it's going to go to player two. So what happens when that happens? It goes over here and it goes up oh, full-time whistle. And I'm going to have to fix this up. But you can see that the full-time whistle has been sounded and you lose the game because the wrong card went to the, or the card went to the wrong player. And so that pretty much covers everything with that. Oh, what the frizz was that? I've never seen that happen. Where, where did my output window go? Anyway, so now... Uh, <coughs> So now the final thing here to move on to, let me move this back up, and move this thing up 10 more pit, is it really 10 more up? Anyway, um, the final thing left to do now is to go ahead and set it up so that um, the correct cards are playable. Because again, the game is right now too easy, maybe you don't agree, but the game is too easy when you can play any card at any time uh, but the rule is if you have a card of that color, whatever the leading suit is, you have to play that. And so let's fix that up and um, we'll have to, we'll call it a day on video 12 and then video 13 looks like it'll be the final video. I'll add some sound effects uh, to play the, you know, some music and some sound effects, but otherwise I think then the game is completely, completely done. Okay, so to fix up the cards such that if someone plays a red card first, you have to play any of your red cards if you have them, and only if you have no red cards available to you can you go and fix up any of, you know, basically any of the cards in your hand. So it, sometimes it's to your benefit to get rid of all your crap cards, and, um, and so, that, so that you can play other cards so people can get the correct cards into their hand when they win the tricks. Yeah, very complicated way of saying all of that stuff. But so I did, I do have to modify. It's one of those things, once you start adding things, you're like, well, what do I have to change to make this work? And I, this whole house of cards here, literally, <laughs> in the player card hand draw event, this thing's been kind of, this thing's been just kind of a hodgepodge. And I know I should have moved some of this stuff to the step event a while ago, but I'm still here doing that, so I might as well just continue on it. So what do I do here? Well, how did I fix everything up? Let me describe this. So what do I want to do? I still want to sort the cards on a frame-by-frame -frame basis. Uh, technically, I don't need to sort this more than just the first time once all the cards are so once all the cards are put out to the player. But I'm not going to change that. I'm going to draw the little rectangular box, and I'm going to draw this, the the text on top of it. That doesn't change. All of I've modified quite a bit here when it comes to what type of cards do I want to draw on the screen. So I'm saying okay. I'm, uh, I'm presuming that I want to draw the backs of the playing cards, and then if it's a controller and I'm pressing the button, then I want to show the actual cards. Or if I'm on the mouse and keyboard and I'm pressing the actual button, like, like the 1, 2, 3, 4 button, then I want to show the playing cards. Or the nuclear version is if I just press the space bar, then I show everybody's cards. So, that, you know, so this if, else if, if statement gets me so I know exactly which type of cards to put to the screen. Do I want to put... Where did my sprites go? Do I want to put this guy, the playing card sprites, or do I want to just put that back playing card image? And so a lot of that has been reduced down to just a few lines of code, which it should be. As I've mentioned in previous videos, the refactoring a lot of a lot of this, a lot of this could be simplified down, but it's one of those you get it working and then you start hacking and playing with it and eventually you get to a point like right now where you're like, this is unsustainable, so we have to, we have to tinker. And then after all of that, I, I, no matter what, I print out all the playing cards. And the nice part about this is the sub image, the image index, even if I'm, if, even if I'm drawing something that only has one image, I can put this, this number in 
and it's not going to worry. It's always going to print out the zero image because there's only one sub image in the back playing card sprite. So, so okay. So then I get all the all the normal stuff, and all of the rest of the code is pretty much set up to show. Oh, I'm sorry. I forgot about the goal card. If you have a goal card, then you're going to print it out to the screen as well because I, yeah, I forgot about that. Of course, that's very important. And is and, and again, this could probably use some some work too, but maybe not. It, it, well, at least at the very least, I could reduce this down. I'm not going to play with the numbers right now to, and make sure that I have everything correct. But everything is correct as is, so why modify it if I'm not willing to spend the time? So I, Okay, so that's that. So then everything else, look at that, I actually put some comments in for the stuff I did here. And you can see that there's a lot of code here I'll describe in a second to get the work so I can make sure that the player can only select the, the correct selectable cards. And then at the end of the day, um, draw, the, draw the soccer ball on the screen if they are the active player. Okay, so let's talk about what I changed, what I modified here. Where is this here? Okay. So define the selectable cards. I create a DS list, and it's called selectable card indices. I want to know the index values of the cards. I don't, want, I don't care about the card values themselves. I just care about, hey, it's the second card, the third card, the ninth card, whatever card it is. So I just want to know which cards are selectable out of the ones that are in the player's hand. And so I start with an empty list, and I go through the cards that are currently in your hand, and I say, hey, okay, if the game state class has no cards in its, in its list, that means that no cards have been played yet, which means you're the first player, and if you're the first player, you're allowed to pick any card you want. And so basically for every card, add that card to the list. So that's, this is what I'm saying here. So a card is selectable if you're the first player to play, that's what this is doing. Or, or if you want to think of, you know, or, or if the card, if, if there's at least one card in your hand, you have to play, you have to do your best to play whatever color is in that first card. So you have to make sure that the div part of this, of that the first card in the in the game state class, and the first and any and the card that you're dealing with is the same is the same div, meaning the 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 tens digit is the same. So then if, if this is card 17, then this is card 15, that's a match. If this is card 22 and you're card 9, no, that's not a match. Because you have to make sure that they're the same colors. And that applies even for the black uh, trump cards. I was reading the rules on the original game, and I'm, I want to keep consistent with that. If someone plays a black card as the first, the first card, you have to follow suit if you have a black card to play. Which eliminates all of the fun of having the trump cards, but that's the rules of the game. So that's saying, okay, so one of those two things have to occur for the card to be selectable at any given time. And then I go through the entire list, and when this is all said and done, if there are no cards that are selectable, then I say, okay, let's just make them all. And this is, and so this is, so because if you, you should always have some card that you should be able to play, because unless the game is over, but then you have no cards left, and then that, that doesn't matter anymore. So if you have no selectable cards at this point in time, that means that you can select any because you, sh you have to be able to play a card, and it just turns out that you don't have the color card that you're supposed to have uh, according to the rules of the game. So this is just saying take every card and move it into the selectable card indices. And this is just, and I tried the DS list copy, but again, I don't want to copy, I just want to copy index values. I don't want to copy the values themselves, so it did need an extra little for loop here to kind of get everything where it needed to. Okay, so now at the end of the day, when, when it's all said and done, the selectable card indices is now what holds all of the selectable cards, not the cards uh, list itself. And so it gets, this gets a little tricky here. And so this is just allow, okay, I only show, let's see, where am I here? I only show the little, the little soccer ball if you're the active player and it's in the game full round state while you're playing the game. So only the active player will ever get to see that little soccer ball. I've changed it one more time because it just gets a little, well, it got annoying for me trying to play four players at once, trying to figure out what's going on with the game. So you can only see the, so you can only see it and you can only use, work with it when you're the active player. And if you're the controller and you play left or right, you add or subtract one to the index. Same with the keyboard and mouse with the left and right arrow keys. And so here is some extra code here that says, if my index value is less than zero, then, then basically move it over to the right-hand side. 
and use that selectable card indices as the, the go-to. And if it's greater, then go back to zero. So this thing will loop around. So you can only play the specific cards that you're allowed to. And then only draw the little soccer ball if you have a selectable card. This, cra this for some reason, if I don't put this if statement in here, it crashed. And, I, and it's because this thing is empty or something like that. And I didn't want to play. I, I didn't want to tinker with it. It's easy. You know, a lot of times you just want to add a little if check just to make sure you're in the bounds before you start doing things. And it only it only happened. I was I was very happy with everything. I was like, I'm done. I'm done. And then and then and then I happened to click on something and it, and it happened to crash. And I'm like, oh, I'll just put an if statement around it because it does make sense to to always make sure that you have at least. Or you can access the you can access the array and you can access the index you're trying to access. But this is based now you can say okay this is the fifth card or something like that and I only did this so that it doesn't this isn't even more unwieldy when it comes to just the, the amount of code that goes in here just to draw something on the screen and so if the image way going way back if it's the back playing card sprite um, remember I this there's a three pixel difference here because of the way that I just because of the way my graphic looks and I just it just looks a little better all of this is just to make it look a slight bit better with those three pixels difference uh, depending on the back playing card versus the front playing card okay so let's see and then I then then I destroy the selectable card index because I don't need it anymore so I create a list destroy a list so I don't have a memory leak uh, one other thing that I did change and I had to go in a couple places and I, it was one of those things where it was, it made sense at the time, and I didn't even think about it. Is that uh, I should probably use, should have used like no one, or like an empty card. But at the time, I didn't need to think about it. So what, and what happened is, if I make it, if I make goal negative one, that it's possible that I can find that through other searches throughout different lists. And so all I did was I changed the goal value for like basically no one into a negative two. So let's see where I had to change. Where did I have to change? Where am I at? All the way down. Let's see. In the create event, my goal is a negative two. Every anywhere where I was checking goal versus a negative one, I just made sure I was checking against a negative two. I, and again, I do not recall uh, exactly all the different places I had to go for doing this, but I definitely had to do this here. The resolve card state. You can see now it's negative two. Um, not to be confused when I'm using the DS list find, which is like, why didn't you change this? It's because this function returns a negative one if it can't find an element in, an, in, an, in a list. And so, and so I want to make sure I don't find a negative two, but it, but it will return a negative one. And, um, so, so, and again, I'm not going to go through everything here. I think I replaced it in one or two more places. I do not recall. I wish I do recall, but I do not because I did this last night. I didn't get a chance to make the video before this afternoon came around, and so um, I'm gonna have to literally deal. One in here. I don't think so. So anyway, so that covers everything for this video. Oh yeah, I didn't play it. I didn't prove anything to you here. Prove it works. Let me show you, and then then that that will do it. Everything for this video. We only have a few things left here. The game itself is pretty much done when it comes to just the simplicity of just playing a card, going, hey, you won the game, hey, you lost the game, or anything else of that nature. Let's play a four-player game. Make it easy on myself here. Here are all the cards being drawn out. One, two, three, four. Okay, space bar. Everybody's happy so far. I'm happy so far. Here we go, here come the goal cards. Okay, player two's turn. And now I, player two can play any card in their hand. Let's see, they're gonna to try to get the three to that guy. Let's see, three, oh, that's gonna be hard for you. Four, four, okay, I can get the four over to player four. I can go, okay, there we go. And now you notice, every time I hit, it only, go, it only cycles between the blue cards because of the way I wrote the, wrote the code. And so I still wanna to try to get this uh, six over to you or the four over to that guy, but he has to win. There we go, everybody moves over. Now he's happy, he wins. And then he can select anything he wants. We gotta get the three over to you somehow. Ooh, that's not gonna be easy. Uh, I gotta get the red four to you. Can we do that? Nope, we can't do that. Get the seven to you somehow? Nope. This, the rest of this isn't gonna be easy, but, I'm just, but I just wanna show you guys how this works. Let's see, I'll play a green card. Now only the green cards can be selected. 
Only the green cards. I'm not here to win the game, per se. And there's no other choice but the nine. There we go there. Let's see. Can I, is there anything I can do? Just get that seven over. Uh, oh, yeah. I guess I, I guess I can. I just was playing for four players again can be a challenge. I got the seven to you there. Boom. Done. Okay, good. Let's see. Get you a three. Can I get you a three? Really? No, I can't. Um, I'll have to play it other ways. Can I get them before somehow? Nope. I can't. Yeah, I can if I play a yellow card. Yep, I can get them. Nope, 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 I can't. Now let me... But again, only the yellow cards. Here, I want to show you here. Just make sure one last time here. I guess I shouldn't concentrate so much on winning. Let's see, if I play a red card, red two here, you can see that... Because I don't have a red card, I can play any card I want. But only in that situation, because I don't have a red card available to me, can I do that. And of course I can play a black card or anything like that. It doesn't affect any other player, it just affects the player who doesn't have a red card. Um, let's see, so I just play you. have to play the red 9. And I don't want to play the red 4, because otherwise then I'll lose the game. And I go over. Okay, now we somehow have to get the red 4 to that guy. <laughs> Anyway, so that, that covers everything I wanted to show for this video, since there's no yellow card. It is working, as far as I can tell, and no crashes so far. And um, and so be it, right? So let's see. Oop, I can't. can't this, it's, this is challenging. How do I get, how do I get the red, how do I get the, how do I get them the card? Ah, I don't think I can do it. I don't think I can do it. <laughs> I don't think I can do there's there's only one round and there's two two people that need a card so there we go the full-time whistle has sounded because we did not win the game we did not score the goal and we lose the game oh no and we go back to main menu so everything seems to be working and of course you guys can test this to your heart's content and those of you who have followed along this time I'm sure I will hear it if there's some subtle bug or something that is in this code that is not meant to be uh, at this moment of all the things I've been doing, of all the thinking, talking, doing, and preparing, the one thing I have not been doing religiously here is testing. So forgive me if not everything works perfectly, if not everything is in place as it's supposed to. So, okay, part 13 coming up next. We'll see you guys in that. We'll finish everything up, tie up the loose ends, call it a, call it a class, call it a game, and uh, move on to bigger and better things. Thanks, everybody. Take care. See you. Hello everyone, I am Bradley Sword, and today is the culmination of all of our hard work, hopefully. This is part 13 of the 13-part series. I'm There might be a part 14 if there's bugs that you guys find along the way that I need to fix just to get you guys to the final finish line. But everything seems good to go on my end, at least with the limited testing I've been doing. But that doesn't mean, <coughs> excuse me, it doesn't mean that there's some fun little bug somewhere in there that uh, needs to be kind of ironed out. The game is called Columbus, as all of you know by now, that it's a trick-taking card game. Uh, we're basic, we're going to be basing it off a soccer game, and let me just run it. Uh, I'm going to be running this with sound this time. I added some sound effects. I didn't go crazy on it. You guys can, once I show you the basics, you guys can do whatever it is you want to do. Here's my purring kitty. Maybe you can hear it. That's not my cat purring per se, but it's just something I found on the internet. And now I have a crowd of people cheering me on as I get ready to play my soccer game, my soccer-based card game. And we're going to play a four-player game. So I just have some sound effect. Oh, yeah, let me make this full screen. Just give it a second. I can see that you do not see that at the moment. There we go. So four-player game. I'm not going to worry about controllers, but as we know, the controllers do exist, and the controllers are controllable. Actually, uh, let me hook one up because... It has been a while since I've tested it, and I have changed a few things. So let's see what happens with one controller in, in the play here, four-player mode here. Let's see, different, okay, different sounds. A different, a different sound effect for the gameplay versus that. And I didn't add too much. I did add a quick game button. Nothing special here. Just something that you could mouse over, and I actually added a gesture to it. I'll show you that in a minute here. I added it so you have to double tap it. You click it, nothing happens, but if you double click it, you'll, you'll quit the game and go back to the main menu. So you do have the game playing there, and I made this very soft, 
e maybe you can't even hear it in the video here, but but I made it soft even at full volume just because you shouldn't have to have this. You do not need to have the crowd bla you know, blasting your ears out when you're just trying to enjoy a game. And of course, you could have a menu option, uh, an option menu, a menu option. Um, an options a menu, you know, an options menu, so you can just turn off the sound effects altogether if you don't want them, or the set because this is technically a, this is technically music. But I have all this games play. How do I? You know, I just want to let's see. Let's lose the game and let's see what happens. Let, let me hear that whistle sound that I put in here. Oops. Oops. Oh no! I got a bug. No. Oh, I don't have a bug. I forgot. I got the controller. <laughs> Oh boy, <laughs> oh boy, it's been a long couple, couple, of, it's been a long time making this game, so just all the little stupid things that you forget along the way. Okay, so here we go, I can press A, and there we go. And that's all I have, I didn't add a boo, because I, I only spent a couple, I only spent 10 minutes or so trying to find sound effects. I found enough, but I didn't, I didn't find as many as I was thinking, and especially on the free end. Uh, I could steal them, quote unquote, but I didn't feel like that was uh, worthy of anything, so I just used free sound effects that I found. So the game ends that way, and you can see, and let me see if I can play a three player game. Let me get rid of the controller. We proved it kind of worked, right? So let's see if I can win this game. Don't hold me to it. It's, it's all based on the, you know, the luck of the draw here, some of this. But we have different sound effects, and that, that was the sound effects and the quick game button are what I added to finish up the deal here today. Let's see, so I need to get that one number, that uh, yellow one to me over there, and I can make it happen now. Whoops! <laughs> I said I could do it! Oh man, I'm, yep, yeah, that's what I get. Okay, I lost the game. Go back to the main menu. Let's try this again. I can make this work. Or I could just do this forever and make you guys watch this video. But no, just um, like and subscribe, like and subscribe, right? That's all it's about, right? It's not what it's all about. So let's see. Okay, let's come on, come on. Let's deal these cards out faster. All right, here we go. So what do we got? I got to get that green one. That should be easy. Okay, pay attention, Brad. The green one to this guy. Okay. That should do it. All right. Now we got to get the seven to you and the three to you. Oh, boy, that's going to... That might be a little tricky. Well, let's get the seven over to this guy first. Oh no, maybe it won't be so bad. Let's see. Wait, what? Oh no, I'm an idiot. <laughs> we, I totally could have won this one. Oh well. Pay it. It's really hard playing mul for multiple players at the same time. It really is. Well, okay, we'll try this one more time, and then <laughs> if it doesn't work. There is a, it, it does have a crowd that goes crazy when it scores a goal, but uh, maybe I won't be able to play that. I'm not going to be playing this game nonstop. Because look how look look how I play this game here. So I want to get the five to this guy. Okay, can I get the? Nope, I can't get the, the blue five to you just yet. Can I get the three to you? Nope. Oh, this isn't going to work. But here, let me just. I can tap this. Double tap. Click doesn't work, but double click sends me back to the main menu. Let's see if I can play this one more time. We'll do this one more time. Just I just want, yeah, why not show you that the quick game button does work? Okay. And I was thinking, I, I thought there'd be sound effects, like Simpsons sound effects, because they made fun of soccer way back in the day. Like, pass to center, pass to this. I remember that very, very vividly, because I'm very, very old. And I just thought we'd have some other cool sound effects, but it just didn't work out. Let's see, i got to get the 7 to you. I can, nope, I can't make the 7 go to you just yet. But I can go. I can make the eight go to that guy. Oh my God! They're all yellow cards. Okay, I gotta pay attention here. I gotta get the six to. Okay, gotta get the six to you, which I can do. No, I meant. I didn't mean that. Okay, I'm done trying. <laughs> Maybe afterwards I'll play this and actually play one that works, and I won't hold you guys to just watch me in qu my my quote unquote real time here. Okay, so sound effects are relatively simple. The hard part for me was finding good ones, or at least decent ones that I could find. So I have main menu chanting sound, gameplay chanting sounds. That's basically the music for this game. I've got my cat purr, I've got my whistle, which you guys heard plenty of, and then I've got my goal scored sound, which does sound like this when you eventually get to do it here. Hooray for me. And, um, 
it's one of those things also I I don't have a do I have audacity on here I think I don't know if I have audacity on here or any kind of sound editing software uh, you definitely need that moving forward especially if you're the one creating the the you know the audio for your game if you're not relying on other people to do all your bidding for you um, because that goal as as cool as that sound is the first five or six seconds is just kind of that buildup but we already have the buildup if you're playing the game you know you scored the goal so let's let's make that you know let's get rid of those first couple seconds and cut that thing out but I am not doing that I'm, this is just a how-to video for today so the sound effects sound 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 and they're all basically wave files and all I did here was just basically set up up and here and and so some of this you want to make sure if I want to stop all the sound and again this is just the begin the bare bones minimum of getting something going is when I start the game, make sure I stop anything that's playing currently and start playing my cat purring sound. And then when I get to the main menu, when the main menu, and this will play through, this isn't like video, like other things, that, this will, actually, I don't know. Um, let me see what it says. Because I don't know what will, I actually don't know what would happen. I'm presuming something here. What would happen if you play a sound and then you go from room to room? I'm presuming that the the sound will play because I I I feel like it's independent of what room you're in. It's it's the sound the sound machine here. So uh, let's just go with that understanding here and not uh, not worry about that kind of stuff. And say over here, okay. So start the sound, and when I get to the main menu, when all is said and done, and I get to the main menu, main menu controller says, hey. Stop all the previous sounds. It, it doesn't hurt to be safe on this, just in case, and then start playing the chanting sound. And so, and, and with a true meaning loop, meaning this sound will play over and over and over and over and over again. I forget how long it is, but uh, generally speaking, it should, you shouldn't go that long. You shouldn't be sitting in the main menu for days, and it'll just keep playing the sound over and over and over again. And so that's that sound. And then I just added a few extra sounds, and when I get to the gameplay itself, in the deal card state, I say, okay, stop all the sound, because that this is this is only dealt with one time, literally dealt with one time, haha, <laughs> figuratively, and just start playing the gameplay chanting sound. So that keeps playing over and over and over again. But I'm, I, but remember again here, I, maybe I didn't show you, but I definitely set it up so it's up, no, not the goal scored sound, but the uh, the gameplay chanting sound is at a very very low level. This thing could be way louder. This thing came, that sound effect comes in way loud. And some of these I've definitely, like the goal scored should be loud. Uh, even the whistle sound, I brought it down. And, and again, you can play with this. This is what's uh, mastering. This is, you know, when they say that's like, a, a, like something's been remastered. That's what this is, Re, you know, re-tinkering with these kind of, these levels and all of the sound effects. And again, I know very little to nothing. I almost know, no, I almost know absolutely nothing about this. But if you've ever played, like, if, obviously you guys have, if you've ever played music on your, on a quote unquote stereo, your speakers, your phone, your whatever, you'll notice that music from 40 years ago, 30, 40 years ago, it's the sound comes out softer than the music of today. And that's just how they mastered it when they were producing the sound uh, the, the put to put onto an album. It's just softer. There's just that's just the way they mastered it. And so if they remaster it, then they bring it up to more modern standards. That was just the way they did it back then, and then they did it differently nowadays. So, and really when it comes down to it, it you know, when you want to play a sound effect, you just have to figure out where, and that's where things get a little tricky. Like, but for this this game, it's a little, it was pretty simple. When I hit the win state, then, then I want to say, okay, play that sound. Play the audio sound that says, okay, cool, I scored. Whee! Yep. Or in this case, the play the whistle. <laughs> The very easy stuff, and with this, you just you just say, okay, whistle sound, play one time, play for a couple seconds, and stop, and then never never loop again. So uh, the the music you generally want to loop, and then the gameplay itself, you generally want to say, nah, I don't want to loop that kind of stuff. Just play it one time and be done with it. And again, there's a lot more you could do with this. I don't think Game Maker allows you to change the pitches or to allow you to understand where you are in a, where uh, where you are. In a music file, because the one thing students ask me is, hey, can we make a game, like a music game, like the old Dance Dance Revolution is the one that I know away from, from way back, 
those kind of games. And they go, I don't think it can tell you where you are in a file or, or like in a music and go like, oh, cool. Like we're 1.2 seconds in, like, uh, like trigger something. Like to understand that if I press the up arrow key at 1.2 seconds, I'm expected to do that, and then and then I get some response because what there's a because I do again I do not think the audio matches with the gameplay uh, at all. And again, you can tinker if you know a way to do this. My goodness, you get my eternal my eternal uh, gratitude for this kind of stuff. I do not understand a lot of this audio stuff, and I do not have the time to. Tinker. But that was that's pretty much it for the sound effects. You, you know, sound effects sounds difficult, uh, but to get the basics going, it's very very simple. It's just you just use the couple lines of code over and over and over again to make this work. Uh, and then the final thing here, the the boring final thing is this quick game button. And again, this is just the double tap option that just says, okay, uh, create create the go back to main menu uh, room object and destroy yourself uh, when you click. So in this case, I say I have a create event. Oh, how do I close? Is there a way to close all this? Okay, create event. Yeah, basically it's like every other button. I have two images, a black image and a white image, and I'm just drawing out whichever one I need to with a quick game on top of it. Mouse enter image index is one. Mouse leave image in, in, index is zero. Double tap, uh, basically start the fade out so that you can go back and destroy itself. And I only have it destroy so you can't continually click on it. Uh, and I don't even know what would happen at that point, but I don't think it really matters, but just to stay on the safe side. And so that's pretty much the whole thing. Oh yeah, this extended, you might as well get to see this. There's just a lot of junk here. And there we go. So I say, okay, draw that black image or that white image, uh, draw it at X, Y, this, that, whatever. And I, this one is actually placed in the gameplay room. It's weird to see it because of everything else, right? The, whiz, the WYSIWYG editor is not as WYSIWYG as we expect. The whole game plays through three objects, right? And one of them, one of them doesn't even matter for anything. One is just a quick game button. The whole game runs through one object, at least starts through one object. Isn't that you know one of those crazy how that all works? But at the end of the day, you come back to this a month later, your your brain is going to fry figuring out what the hell we did since you can't see. Uh, you can only see one third of uh, what what you're doing here in the entire game itself. So that pretty much covers the entire game. And so at this point, if you're still here, you're still listening, say hi in the comments. I'd appreciate just to know how many people made it this far and care enough to go all the way through. But I also would love to know what's wrong with this game. Like what are the bugs? And I would love, I absolutely would love to know how you guys maybe take this and change it around and, and just, you know, this is just the bare bones minimum. How do I get a game going? I would love to know uh, how this game gave you guys maybe some inspiration to do something bigger, better, and everything that, that I can show you here in these series of videos. So thanks for sticking it out. I hope this is the last video. I hope, in a way I hope, and in a way I don't hope, that I can make a 14th video for this just to fix up a couple of the bugs that were, th that were basically thrown in that I have not noticed yet through my playing of our game. So... Uh, I have a ton of other video series for you guys if you want to check out, if, if you want to learn C++, if you want to learn Python, you can learn that through the uh, Advent of Code series that I have, uh, Assembly Language, obviously Game Maker Studio and Gaming, uh, and, I'm, and I'm going through a uh, data analytics program right now trying to learn R and trying to learn uh, Python and all that, basically just to learn how to apply data analytics in a data and then machine learning and that sort of stuff. And I'm excited for that. Uh, and But as I'm learning that, maybe I'll make some videos along the way as well. Uh, the future, what does the future behold at this moment as I make this video? Who knows? But in the future, you'll probably know. But anyway, thanks for sticking it out with me as always, guys. Thanks for, for listening through all of this and working through all of this. And I hope you learned quite a bit. And I hope this makes you better programmers, make you better developers, make you better designers, make you better people. Maybe not better people, but I try. But anyway, have a great day. Have a great video time. I'm just mumbling at this point, rambling. But I just want to keep on going. But I don't. Have a good one, everybody. Take care. See you next time.